The race to reach the final trophy of 2023 continues as the quarterfinals have landed here at the Etihad Arena. For two teams yesterday, flying high, straight on through to those semis. For another two, unfortunately, their tank's a little out of gas. Myself, Raya Spears, Maui Snake, and of course, Maniac are going to be guiding you through the action here at the Blast Premier World Finals. Guys, we had some banging games going down yesterday. Of course, we saw Vitality and FaZe prevailing on through, but great Counter-Strike going down on day number two, Maui. That phase G2 one was catching everybody's attention. It's all anybody could even talk about for the next 10 hours, it felt like. Yeah. That was a game that probably deserved an arena in a lot of ways. Yeah, I think the, the Counter-Strike has gotten one notch higher than the first day. We, we got the two O's out of the way. We kind of skimmed a little bit. And then yesterday we had the bangers, we had the three maps, we had the overtimes, all that you want to have. Let's dive into what's been classed of the highlights of yesterday and our CS Money Play of the Day, as voted by you over on the Blast Premier Instagram. Uh, Maniac, what have we got coming up as play number three? Well, we have Nico with very heroic round. Unfortunately, the end won't be able to convert, but this itself right there, that's illegal, by the way. I'm sure there are some <laughs> rules out there that preclude that kind of action. And of course, the last four kills. And then we've got Perfecto, the stable force on Cloud9. This was just fantastic. 1v4 situation. And look at the last kill. The last kill he gets on Zaiwu just clotheslines him. Ooh. Boom, out of the server right there. That's cross placement in essence. And finally, our play of the day for yesterday will be Manasi with the AWP. A whole lot of movements as well in that clip, starting into Secret, then into Window Room, blowing up the door with the AWP. There's a bit of a clever brain onto that one. The flick from Manasi, beautiful work. Force shot as well. He is definitely lights out in this scene. He's just so damn fast. Every single highlight we see of him, it's like, bam, you see him? You're dead. <laughs> oh, actually, you didn't see him because <laughs> you're just so fast. Only Monacy sees them. Yeah, literally. We're just witness to his greatness, actually. <laughs> Let's uh, recap exactly what went down yesterday. We're going to be starting off with the Group A side of things. As the groups have, of course, concluded, we see the top and, unfortunately, uh, the bottom team eliminated in that with Vitality managing to go straight on through to the semis. They've only missed out on one playoffs event this year, of course, back at IM Sydney. Apex very happy about that one. And Mezzi flying high to the Brit looking absolutely elite in the server. Unfortunately for Ents, yeah, it was uh, a game that made Na'Vi sweat, surprisingly, but they are eliminated from the tournament. Of course, alongside Na'Vi, Cloud9 are going to be competing today for that final semi-final spot. For Cloud9, there's a chance to do the double and make it to two playoffs in a row. For Na'Vi, uh, it might be a bit more unlikely on that side of things because uh, they didn't look super stable in that game yesterday, Maui. We still got some question marks about them, right? It was weird to see how badly Navi looked on their own T sides mm. when you would imagine that Alexi B should be able to put something together. They just felt sometimes like a little too static, a little too clumped up. Like it almost felt kind of blocky the way that they played. It was not really the smooth flowing Navi that we've been used to with some of the past rosters when Blade's been uh, coaching Boomage, for example. Yeah, you would wonder where they're at in this kind of collaboration between Alexi B and Blade. I don't think it really has come through. And then some of the individual brilliance we were hoping to see, I think is fading away a little bit. Wonderful is putting numbers without the oomph factor bit is kind of hit or miss. Emma is still chasing this Paris dream that we, maybe we just completely made that up. So it, there's still a lot to desire when it comes to Nav. Matthew, did you ever have it on your 2023 bingo card that a British player would be the highest rated player <laughs> at a tier one <laughs> event? Because obviously I did. I always believed that Brits would come back and prevail. But Mezzi, the highest rated player so far, it's crazy to see his impact. Yeah, I mean, the improvement from Copenhagen to Abu Dhabi is out of this world. Let's be real. And, and in Copenhagen, rather, um, very timid, fragile in some of his positions, but they talked about it in interviews as well, that he was working on it. They were giving him the time and the support to do so. I'm going to be a little bit tame. We're talking about four maps here, but the four maps that we've seen, holy hell, it's to the point where you, you would be remiss to forget about Majesk. Like, M Messi's coming in, he's having a very similar impact. Some of the positions he's got, he's he's the one that gets the least resources in some of the positions he's got. He's not being set up for multi-kills, and still he was delivering absolutely beautiful counter-strikes. If this goes on, nobody beats Vitality. Yeah, it's been incredible to witness kind of how fast he's been integrating to this Vitality squad. But moving on to the Group B side of things, of course, that was rounding out the day yesterday, where we had two more best of three games. It's where we saw FaZe prevailing, they'll be the ones going straight through to the semi-finals and a chance for them to potentially be lifting another trophy in CS2 as we move on into the weekend's action. And for Frozen, man, this has been a great integration so far into the squad. Heroic 
kind of makes sense that they were the ones to be finishing last in this group because they were coming in looking wounded, not exactly sure how that roster is going to be going moving on forward. Of course, Maus, they're going to have an opportunity today versus Cloud9 to make it through to the semis and prove, okay, the loss to Frozen, yeah, on paper, it looks really damaging, but maybe they can prevail and make it to top four. But I want to talk about the game that ended out yesterday. You already talked about it, Maui. FaZe taking on G2. What an incredible game. I'm so glad that we went to overtime in the third map because that was a banger of a series. If we didn't go to overtime, we wouldn't have had Kerrigan's first ace since 2021. So That's pretty sick. Exactly. That's crazy. What a way to kick off that overtime. And for FaZe and how they are looking going into this event, it really was just a slight question for me. How, how is Frozen going to integrate into some of these positions? I'd say day one, he looked incredibly cohesive. He looked like he was playing off his teammates exactly how he should have been, like he was been on this team for, for mm. years. Yesterday, a little bit more questionable in some moments. He didn't have the same sort of performance, but that's what you would expect against stiffer opposition like G2. Yeah, I agree with you. And I, and I really think that the qualities that were true to the phase with Twist still remain here. And we got some glimpses of that versus G2. Sure, it's not perfect. It's not polished. There are always moments that are a little bit in flux, but when it comes down to the clutchers, when it comes down to these mini comebacks of three or four rounds, where you really have to hit it right on the health, this is where phase shine. And let's be real, G2 had multiple opportunities to win this entire series. It could have been on Nuke already and on Ancient Anubis right at the end. Of course, they were poised. But if you allow FaZe to come back to that 12th position, that's just it. The, the lack or the differential of level and quality of calls and perfection of communication from that moment on, it was night and day between FaZe and G2. Yeah, of course, G2 have another opportunity to be fighting today in our second game of the day. But unfortunately for two teams yesterday, uh, the end of the line, we're going to start off by talking a little bit about Heroic because I don't think it's a surprise to see them eliminated, but it's kind of crazy, Maniac, when you look at the trajectory of this team just over this year, let alone last year, how the mighty fall. I know. Right? Counter-Strike moves very fast. Time is a relative concept for us in this game. You're talking about a, a name, a brand that were champions in Washington. We're talking about the champions of the spring season here in Blast. And now in Abu Dhabi, six months later, barely, this is a, a project that will completely explode. That is what is going to happen, the trajectory of that. And that in itself is a very interesting topic in Counter-Strike, the survival, the tolerance to losses and how you deal with it as a group, the decisions you made. This is a completely different heroic. And oh, that graph is actually, this is that is that the graph of Bitcoin? Oh is that what's happening? <laughs> <laughs> it does look like a cryptocurrency's fall. <laughs> I want to just give a light shout out though to Zyphon and his performance at this yeah. event. I really felt like when he was just left on his own, he was a guy that was very dependable. He ended the tournament with a 1.06 rating, about 84 ADR, and every time he was just kind of lurking around the map, he was actually finding kills on teams that were pretty well structured. Yeah, I mean, to look at some of the members that, you know, were already existing in the old heroic roster, um, Tezos, what's going to be the deal with him going forward? Right? Well, I, honestly, I think he put himself in a bit of a... Spe particular special position with this whole, hey, I want to be an IGL from now on. Like, you know what Tezis was bringing to the table. Not that he was a perfect or a finished product. There were always some areas where there could be improvement. But now he's operating this kind of 90 degree turn where I'm not just going to be a strong player or that entry fragger revenge player on the T side. I want to be a leader. And from the, the noise we're hearing, it doesn't feel like he's going to be given a chance anyway whatsoever in the near future. So I don't exactly know where Tezis is going to land out. And I don't really know how to round out his kind of tenure because that turn happens here changes the whole narrative. Yeah, and of course for Exist as well, we know that it's confirmed his last game uh, in the Heroic jersey as a coach. So let's revisit a few words that he gave James Banks just yesterday. Yeah, it's, it's, it's been a roller coaster. Uh, we could have won a few more events, but uh, I'm still super proud of the boys. I mean... We basically went from onliners, if you may call us that, <laughs> before, right? And we, we managed to to play some really fucking, sorry about that, impressive oh. CS uh, on the big stage as well. And yes. yeah, I'm super proud of the boys for that. And you're staying with us. You want to continue coaching? Yeah, uh, definitely. I want to I wanna stay and uh, or I want to continue coaching, right? Mm -hmm. um, I think it's been a lot of fun. And uh, I think I think I've... Uh, I, de I developed pretty good uh, into it as well, and I, I feel comfortable, um, but I'm in uh, no rush into making a decision, so let's, uh, let's see what happens. Yeah, of course, we know Exist is quite a private guy, but I think he developed excellently into this role because just look at some of the accolades that Heroic were able to achieve over the past two years, right? We kept talking about the fact that they had the highest floor of any tier one team, and I would say that is due in part mm. to the system that him, Kadian, put together, the fact that they were always very well prepared going into every single opponent. Obviously, on the big stages, Exist probably wishes he could do a little bit more, but overall, Exist could easily slot onto a handful of top 15 teams. I mean, he, he's got the pedigree and the results to 
at the very least garner attention from, from teams out there. And this is sometimes uncomfortable for me to stand here because since he is a little bit more discreet in interviews and, and being open about the impact he's got on the game plan, I don't really know. We're just waffling about how much right. he would have helped Kadian yeah. get to that point. Kadian was a very out there kind of personality, he was taking uh, ownership of what was happening in Heroic a lot, which we like for a leader. But as a consequence, I don't really know how much Exist was involved. Like, he's been a successful player. He's won a bunch as a player, majors and whatnot, and now as a coach. But I hope he gets another platform mm -hmm. where he can showcase once again that he can work with a different system and be an efficient coach. Well, Maydak, you mentioned Kadian's names. Obviously, we get to uh, see some of the shots back at the full finals because there's quite a, a marked similarity when we're looking at both Heroic and Ents, right, in terms of how they're closing out 2023. There are, there are definite comparisons that can be made between the Ents and the Heroic trajectories. It's a about being very close to greatness, having extremely strong results, finals, even a trophy here and there, but then teams that feel like are not cannot survive the losses at some point, moments where it yeah. gets a little bit complicated and they make such a strong decision. Snappy, of course, on his own, going into a different horizon, a different project. And then for Heroic, it's just a listen, Katie, it's not going to work out. And this Maui is like the, the most profound change of direction you can make as a team. Yeah, the core of a team really and the beating heart of it is the in-game leader. And so when you lose that heart, it's really just a bunch of limbs and sure they might be powerful, but until you actually are able to tie them all together, you can see that these teams really were not up to snuff in any capacity without those those old leaders. Even Glaive slotting in for ends just mm. couldn't really actually stand up to what Snappy had built with this roster. The structure just didn't feel the same. The T sides were so much worse with Glaive instead of Snappy. And you think it's, some people might think it's just plug and play. It's really, no. really not at all. The, the way that you have a flow chart in your head of how you're calculating what needs to be the next play in the round. Glaive, yeah, sure, he has these, these vestiges mm -hmm. of what happened on Astralis and what he thinks might be the meta decision in a moment, but he hasn't actually attained all the reps that people like Snappy did that made Snappy or and Ents such a formidable right. mid-round team. I, I really like that you mentioned that because I agree with you. In that specific case of Ents and Heroic, the leaders were so singular. There was such a very specific relationship between the leaders and how they were playing Counter-Strike. Cadian played Heroic's Counter-Strike and nothing else. And Snappy was kind of this mastermind of always being able to plug in player, a little bit similar to Kerrigan, but with his own kind of paintbrush to it. So I'm going to, I'm just going to put it out there. I'm kind of sad for Glaive and how things are panning out right yeah. now. And I am not, I'm not saying that Glaive would have succeeded with that roster because that is a hypothesis that not, none of us can confirm right now. All I'm saying is it feels like he's not going to be given the chance to show that he could. That roster just did not believe in that. Because especially when we uh, look at the context outside the server as well, because there was some, uh, some rumours circulating Maui and uh, some pairs he didn't confirm nor deny those yesterday when he spoke to Banks. Right. The way that Sun Pius exited there, the way that Nerds exited as well, it, it does feel like there was a lot of weight on the shoulders of the Ents players in terms of what's just going on with them. They, they seem to be targeted by Heroic right now. They, that might be their next home. And so th they probably weren't putting their best foot forward in a lot of ways. And we had to see yesterday that when they were playing in that series versus Na'Vi, they had to play themselves into shape. It felt like they were just right. going to lose with, without even a single whimper. But a couple individuals started popping off, but it just wasn't enough to actually get the, the whole train going. And it's kind of a crazy thought because I have no idea about the financial implications of any of the moves for either organization. So I'm not going to dive into this. But if that's happening, if this core is really moving and going towards a greener pastures, it really means they said, we believe in this other project more than what we have currently. The tools that we're being given, the whole Kuban Glaive Association, that mm. you, we think somewhere else can be better, can lead us to a higher counter strike. And that, that's a very strong statement to make. It's made of unknown. We don't know how it's going to happen in this new project. Yeah, that's a very apt point that you were making yesterday, Maori, right? The fact that, you know, you have uh, potentially a Bingo leader around a coach to now be backing you, but you prefer to kind of uh, move to different pastures and maybe experiment a little bit. I don't know. It seems like it could be a handful of different factors that's influencing their potential move. It could be money. It could be that they know that somebody else is locked in for the new heroic IGL spot. Mm. It's kind of up for up for grabs in terms of what to make of that. But one thing's for certain that they clearly didn't completely believe in the project that they're on right now. Yeah, and for Glaive, I mean, aptly, as you said, Matthew, it's a difficult situation for him to find himself in, particularly when, you know, he's wanting to come back into CS2 and he's going to want to prove himself mm. that he can go, hey, obviously one of the greatest to ever touch CSGO, but this is a 
new iteration. I want right. a new team around me. And in spite of an incredible resume, right now, I wouldn't say his credit is too, too high. The last no. few months with Australia's were complicated, both as a team and individually. And now he might potentially have to rebuild something from the ground up. So if you actually have that new page in your book of Counter-Strike, it's going to have to go the hard way. Yeah, of course. Ents and Heroic, sadly, it's a passing the world finals here in Abu Dhabi in last place of their respective groups. But let's take a look at what's on the cards today because we have two very, very tasty quarterfinals indeed. We're going to be rounding out the day with G2 versus Navi to see who else is going to be taking that semi-final spot. But first, Cloud9 versus Mouse. Cloud9 versus Maus, our first quarterfinal of the day with a spot at the semis up for grabs. And for both of these squads, there's a semblance of instability, I think it's fair to say, in both camps. For Cloud9, it's the question of, you know, is the AWP really going to leave that much of a hole? Is it switching hands going to be that much of an issue for the team? For Maus, their issue is a little bit more obvious because a frozen, massive piece of the puzzle now departed and joining phase. So, Matthew, I want to get your initial thoughts on what we've seen of Maus so far. How evident are the holes? with Frozen's departure? I mean, definitely from an individual standpoint, Brolin isn't Frozen. And I'm not really bringing you any incredible statement on that one. It's just a fact. Maus have decided to do a position for position switch, which means Brolin is also in positions where he needs to deliver. Take an example, a overpass at the very tip of the defense uh, with the rifle. That's somewhere where you have to have the output. But I will say, 
looking at the Mouse roster right now, you could definitely see against Heroic that we had a mix versus a team. And the qualities of Mouse as a team still remain. They are very, very well oiled and prepared in their executes, how they transition from map control to actually pouncing. You can see the players still have these sort of plans and they know how to do that. So Brol Brolan is in a... I mean, he's got responsibility and expectations, but he's pretty comfortable because what's around him still makes sense. The structure is here, and he might just have to focus on his crosshair. Exactly. The bones of Maus are still strong enough that it's going to hold the pieces together regardless if you swap one of them out. And the Korin, Shuhei, Torzi, Yimpat, I mean, they have been a sight to behold. They're still performing incredibly well as all individuals. And then with Brolin, even though we're seeing that he's getting a lot of responsibility in these positions, thankfully a lot of them are sort of lurker spots, so he doesn't actually have to always be a guy in the pack that has to make sure, oh, cover my six, make sure that I'm what you're watching this, I'm watching that. He probably doesn't even have to communicate for most of these rounds, so he can focus on what he's doing, which gives him a puncher's chance to actually have some nice impact. Yeah, and I also feel, I don't know if you agree, but I think because of these positions, we can we can scrutinize him and how he plays. Because I don't think he's being thrown away as cannon fodder or whatever. He's being put in positions where even though he doesn't really know the playbook of Mouse 2 too well, I'm sure they spend time talking about it, but a whole lot of it is based on live analysis and live intuition of what's happening. If I'm learning on a overpass in the apps. I can just look at my radar. Here it comes. I know what's yep. happening in the team, and this is the moment where I strike. So we will judge him on how he's performing because of the roles and position he's got. Well, let's speak to one of the youngest guns on the side of Mao's. It's Yimfat, courtesy of Banks. Yimfat, you're coming into the event right now as the second highest rated player, but I wanted to see, because obviously Frozen's come out of the team, do you feel like there's a need for you to step up more and perform better? I mean, I think it's for everybody to step up individually now that um, David left because, of course, he's a really good player, insane player, I would say, and there is no, really nobody that can replace him. So I would think that everybody now needs to step up individually. And we look at your games. It was a tough opening game. You lose out, don't win a map. Then you dominate heroic, but we kind of expect it. Where do you feel Maus is at right now? Where do you feel this team is at? What can you do? I mean, I think we are kind of like the underdogs, I would say, okay. in a way that um, we are playing with standing. Yeah. Um, so we didn't have that much of a practice before we came to the event. So we are playing pretty loose, I would say, and just play with confidence and have fun. Yeah. It's really important. But yeah, I mean, I would say that many, many of the teams here, they also have standing, so that they yeah. have new players. So it's a bit weird the situation, I would say. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it's new for everybody, I would say. So it's interesting. Now, I like the fact that you said you still want to have fun, right? One thing I see that has not changed, I look at the team, and even though Breland's here, you guys still so happy. You come in and you're like dancing, playing music, having fun. Is the energy still the same? Has it changed at all? No, I, I would say it, it, it didn't change at all. Like it's, it's just, we have a lot of fun and I think it's really important that um, we have fun, then we will play good CS. Now, going up against Cloud9, you've not faced this Cloud9. We know about their war pro, we know about their style and where they play, but do you feel like you have enough right now with the practice you've had with Brolin coming in that you can take down them because they've been constantly getting to playoffs and looking very strong? I would say that it's a really good uh, team against us. Like we didn't, never played them, at least I don't remember playing against them. So um, it will be interesting match for sure. But I also know that it's a bit messy for them, like with the roles, they don't have like op and stuff like this. So yeah, I'm really excited, but I think it's a really good matchup for us. Because of that, do you, will you take more risks against them with them not having an AWPA? Mm, maybe a little bit. <laughs> do you think that's how Mouse should be approaching it? Going, eh, might as well throw some more risks out there. Definitely. If you don't have a, a strong AWP presence against you, yeah. it's time to go for some Jiggle Pete's. It's time to actually go for some dry duels, rifle v rifle. And there's some great riflers on Mouse. Oh, yeah, definitely. I and mean, Exertion probably is finally going to survive more than 10 seconds in a round. <laughs> I just wanted to quickly touch on, on the impact out there. We had him for interview. One of the best signings this last year. Undoubtedly. Easily. And if it weren't for the, the extraordinary rops of the Magisk of the world, this guy would blow our mind. Yeah. Because anchors used to be discreet. Anchors used to have low numbers. It just used to be a one kill, stay alive. But the new generation now does way more than that. Impact can be aggressive. He's got incredible mechanical skill. His decision making feels like he's 32 years old. He's got his life. He's got a 401k already planned out. He knows exactly how to do all of it. He's been playing so well in mouse and this signing is pure diamond. 
if you even compare them to just what they had before in JDC, JDC was kind of that old style. It's a mean comparison. Where, where it's just, you know, he's trying to do everything right. He's trying to just make sure he doesn't mess up or anything like that. But Yimpad has just gone so above and beyond. When you watch him anchor a bomb site like B, it just feels like he's the most overqualified person yes. to do it. Yes. Always comes up with ridiculous multi frags, like a 3K without any support flashes whatsoever. His mechanics are brilliant. His his positioning is just so top notch, and he has great decision making on T sides too. And when we're talking about you know these comparisons of uh, of star and because none more apt than when we're looking on the other side of the server, right? Because, oh boy, it's Perfecto are waiting for you. And that's a strong comparison to make because if I take you back to 2021 and Navi winning in Stockholm, Perfecto is a guy you look towards when it comes to anchor roles and being able to clutch and have very serious moments. We had this whole comparison. Is that Shush? Is it Perfecto? And now Yimpat is kind of skating outside. He's like, move away, old man. This is how we do it. And it's true. The numbers right now, they paint a relatively bleak picture if you're a Cloud9 fan. There's no real battle here. Yimpat has got his number figured out in terms of output a lot. And Perfecto Perfecto has been more quiet than what we like from him because I, I've always had very high respect for what he can do. It's been a bit more timid here in uh, Abu Dhabi. I was going to say Copenhagen. That was two weeks ago. It does feel like Perfecto's fall off has kind of been just sort of an individual uh, failure on his end in terms of the fact that when he's on bomb sites or when he used to be on bomb sites, he used to be so good at dropping the right piece of utility to counter whatever exec is coming towards him. And then he's able to either pick up a multi frag or just stay alive forever. But sometimes I'm just catching him dying. He just he just sometimes loses that first fight immediately. And I'm not really sure if there's something that's going on with him or the system of the team that's made him a little bit more uncomfortable. But I will say one thing is that on Ancient, he's the opper for them too. So I think the That's role rough. swaps yeah. has made Perfecto a little bit weaker on that end too. And, and I mean, you're right when it comes to like the utilities and how we we used to look at Perfecto because I feel like it's symptomatic of Cloud9. It almost feels like because they've had to deal with so many structural issues and like deal with snipers and no snipers and all, I don't really see the same kind of inventivity or creativity from the utilities and finding new stuff, new ways mm -hmm. to react. They're a bit more stuck in the past, relying on quality, which they have within the team. But still, sometimes they're a bit behind the meta. Well, we have quite a lot of questions about the AWPing situation in Cloud9. Unfortunately, Perfectos has some answers for us, courtesy of Banks. I want to look at Ancient, where we're seeing you pick up the AWP a bit here. And I want to see, do you feel like this is something that can just be good CS, like you can play and win like this? And how do you feel like it affects your personal level? You know, if I play AWP on all maps, I can just practice AWP. But yeah. now I play only Ancient, so it's hard to... I know trains uh, only AWP on only M4 because I need to train all the guns. So we just do basic things in the, on the ancient. I mean, AWP looking K, AWP looking mid, it's, it's enough for, for us and we try to play like that. But overall, we're still seeing you go deep in tournaments, make playoff runs, right? But to go further, do you think you can keep going like this? No, I think we can, but I don't know. We need, <laughs> we need something special, I don't know. But we try, we, we look our demos, we play good, but we not have the, I don't know, the special things, just one thing for a win, so, yeah. The little details that needed, right, in moments like that. For you, though, you guys have not faced this Mouse, and it's a Mouse with Broland, not Frozen coming in. Do you see them as a, a weaker opponent in this sense? Uh, Frozen is a good player, and he have uh, much... Um, he shows a very strong counter-strike, so when uh, he le left Mouse, Mouse, of course, uh, weaker, like before, but he have good captain, he have good system, so it's going to be a good match. I love that Banks posed that question about the opening situation, because Perfecto's reaction kind of just said it all. He's like, I yeah, I, I, I guess I've got to do this. Listen, I mean, he's, he's part of that team, and he's got to respect whatever they're doing, and of course, he's going to make what he's got. But let me be clear, he's pissed about it. Like, oh, he yeah. does not like the counter strike that's <laughs> been played. He's been referred to by many, many teammates as a genius of the game, very cerebral, and you can almost see within his eyes. It's like the meme of someone smiling and behind his crying. It's like, <laughs> yeah, I mean, we do the best we can. Yeah, it's just how it is. They have a limited way of approaching the game, and it is not optimal, which puts a bit more pressure on individuals. If we want to get into the map veto, though, really quick, because yes. we've got Mirage coming up here, this is boomage opping. Oh, Cloud yeah. Oh, Against boy. Vitality. Yeah, so <laughs> I think this is going to be a bit curious for them. I'm I'm really interested in the fact that Cloud9 definitely have some footage to go off of here. Maus have played this one in at this event already, and they probably should have known that this pick was coming. And so I want to see if they just have any real answers for what Brolin's doing lurking towards that A side. 
Hmm. I'm just I'm just thinking you you mentioned Boomish with the AWP and I have some of these moments printed in my mind against Vitality where he made life really hard. But I also feel like it's it's hiding a harsh truth behind, which is if he doesn't have an AWP, I feel like there is a lack of stability on the defense. Like that whole B mm. side, B crunches from short and to mid. When Boomish has been forced to play with the rifle, it has been complicated at times. So might be a little bit relevant or rather reliant on the economic cycle. Can he bring the AWP? Can he be a bit more aggressive? And we're gonna have a couple of duels maybe towards with Torji or if he comes from Catwalk, we'll have to see if they can hold on. As Maui Apley said, of course, we've seen uh, Maus playing this very map of this tournament with this roster. So, Machu, any kind of key takes from how they've, I guess, not been switching it up because Brooklyn has switched in position for position for Frozen, right. but any differences in approach? No, I wouldn't say difference in approach, but I will say that if you're Cloud9, what you cannot allow to happen is a regular map control to pounce and then for Maus to execute the second part of the round because this is where they have, they probably play better Counter Strike than Cloud9. Their protocols are tighter and much more oiled. If you let Mouse take connector control, this sort of ladder room control, and then they can just move on to the next step in the round, they do it very, very well. So Cloud9 can and have to be disruptive. Electronic has to be out there. It has to be the bulldozer he's been this entire event. If you let Shuhei go through the, the, the motions, through the steps, I think they have a shot. Well, we are ready to get this quarterfinal underway. Mirage, the pick of Mouse coming into this series, and we've got Henry G and Anders to guide you on through it. Yes, indeed. Welcome to the quarterfinals. It is going to be Mouse taking on Cloud9. We haven't got to see Mouse yet, Anders. Brolan in the roster, Frozen removed. Um, but going up, they said they have a loose play style today. Yes. Like they, they, they don't have much to work with, but they're having fun. They look like they've got a, a good vibe with the team. Go up against Cloud9, who are certainly the favorites here, but by, mo by no means a lock-in. Definitely not a lock-in, right? It's it's also a roster that, you know, I think famously now we've been talking about, you know, lacking that main AWPs. There's, there's, there's some unknowns in this lineup still. Um, well, on this map at least, we do know Boomich is going to be the main AWP player. But uh, whether it works out for them, uh, I'm not sure. Torji is looking so good right now. Yimfat, the second highest rated player in the tournament. Uh, so they're going to have their work cut out for them as uh, I have no idea which way this one's going. It will be Cloud9 starting on this T side here as we set up for a five-man execution on the A bomb site. Two smokes, two flashes, a P250 in the hands of Hobbit, but the jewelies of the aforementioned Torji ready and waiting. This is quick, Anders, in we go. Yeah, he's set up for it already. They're going to be close, and he will get the first shot. Take it oh. down. Hobbit keeps going. Boom, which has been blown up, and it's just going to be two people left fighting. Now, Axile on his own up in the palace looking for something. It's taking a sweet time that Horshi with the last one. is very clinical on that one and just absolutely shut down the defense. It couldn't have worked any better. I'm not sure you call you can call it uh, an execution when they don't get past the A round. Yeah, you know, that's they, did, they didn't even get on the <laughs> steps. Um, that is wild. Uh, it's Torji absolutely mowing them down with the dual elites. Four kills in total. And look how much time he's got. He doesn't even need to go for this kill, but he wants that. He wants that quad kill. And there's nothing but headshots as well. Absolutely brutal from Torji. It's firing the boys up. Uh, it's got me excited as well. And we're going to have to have the full eco. And as we send five players once again to the opposite side of the map. Uh, this time towards B and maybe even the underpass. So uh, we'll have a look at the buy. You can see they're focusing on the rifles right now. Mouse, no. Uh, there's a nice opportunity here to get the rifles out early and have nice utility going over to get AKs going forward. Uh, it'd be interesting to see if uh, Torji took the full eco and actually went for the AWP. We saw that a couple of times this tournament. Uh, but, uh, oh, God, what's happening here? They've got the first couple of kills, Anders. I, I don't even know. They knew they were down there. They absolutely knew. That is the bomb on Axile, so a little bit unfortunate, but... And Mao's showing, is it going to be the burst fire finally? <laughs> I don't think Jimpat knows. Now he's going to finally check okay. it out. My God, that was scary. A safe pair of hands at the B-bomb site. That's what Jim Fat's known to be. And he brings it back to a three versus three. Bear in mind, two players tantalizingly low as well. Nice grenade. Should do some damage towards Perfecto. And that great star they had is slowly but surely dwindling. Opening kills found for Cloud9. They've recovered a FAMAS and an M4. But bear in mind, 24 and 13 HP on Hobbit and Boomich respectively. And perfect. So he's got 81 points of help and no Kevlar. So massive advantage to kick things off. But losing the bomb towards the apartment certainly slows things down. 30 seconds here. And I don't think there's much chance of them winning the round. If they can find one more kill, I think that would be great going forward, considering there's a nice strong buy in the next round. Yeah, that would be frustrating for uh, for the CT side. No question about it. It's so confusing because Suhei and, and Exertion knew that there was somebody in the underpass. Like they were, they were sort of looking at each other, gearing each other up to go for it. And then it just didn't work out at all. It was very weird. Oh. There's the kill you were talking about. It's Boomich. 
Leading in, if they get the bomb plant as well, that is wild. Five seconds left here. Perfecto gets a headshot. The spray's in for Toshi, but this is so crazy. They will lose the round ultimately because the time just running out. They sort of came off the bomb plant, but still, that is such an expensive round coming out there for Mouse. Yeah, that's kind of crazy, actually. Like... They're smiling on the mouse side, but they should be worried. The fact they've given up four frags then, it comes down to the the clock that saves them, essentially. Uh, bear in mind, sure, boomer has got no extra money, but he did save an M4. He can afford armor himself. This was wild. Uh, I thought in Counter-Strike, we, we weren't supposed to have clipping of the barrel anymore through walls, but uh, that started, so was peeking through and uh, almost cost him his life. But uh, here come those rifles. As mentioned, you can see it's quite a weak buy now for the likes of Mouse, and it's going to be Shui to try and crack things open bravely. Venturing through the underpass, and we've got Torchy applying pressure towards the B apartments as well. Good flashes being exchanged. Axel can feel the presence on the other side of that smoke. Yeah, oh, and he's getting pressured on the other side too, but he was aware of it. Good read from Axel. Able to pick up the kill on Torchy. Exertion here on the bomb site. Quick to get rid of him, and Axel goes down on the other side of Jim Fat. So it's just perfecto left here. Do you think he can do a little bit more damage? There's the headshot. Brings oh. down Sui, and he catches Exertion. Jumping out of the smoke. What a wild kill that was. One versus one, and plenty of time. A minute on the clock, even if the bomb is far away right now. This is going to be a hard game for both players to play. Perfecto had one of the best clutches of the tournament against Vitality on Inferno yesterday. The one versus four, similar scenes to this sort of situation. Now up against Jim Fab, one of the best players of the tournament right now, and he's got plenty of time to work with. The problem, Anders, where's that bomb? It's all the way back at T-Spawn. He is a country mile away. Time is ticking, and, and we've got Jim Fat top and middle, but he, of course, has zero intel as well. This, this doesn't really look clear who's coming out on top, but the fight will be going down in middle. Oh, he's out in the middle of everything. He's, I thought he was behind the car, but it's Jimmy to pick up the headshot and shuts down the potential clutch there before Perfecto. But I got to say, those kills were wild. And again, they really matter, right? That was about oh, to yeah. be three people living for Mouse, which would have helped their economy a little bit at least. But um, right. instead, it's just a one. The fact they had little to no utility after suffering so many casualties in the previous round, it's a really nice play there for Mouse. They're, they're up they're up close there. They're personal. Playing on the front lines there. And good trades coming through as they win yet another round on the CT side of Mirage here. Very good effort there from Perfecto. I was going to say that there's an argument to me they could force by again, but I don't mind this. A nice little partial buy. Looks likely to be another execute play with some basic utility. And Brolan, he's got that basic gun, the SMG, up and towards the palace here. It's going to be a difficult fight. He's not handling it well. He does get one kill, but uh, it's still a four and four. It's traded out by Electronic and uh, give them a chance to reset the round as they've picked up the SMG now. You know what the first sign that you're in for a good game is when you see the player cams and you can hear the other team on the... On right. the <laughs> like you could hear Mal's yelling in the background as you were watching Cloud9. Like That's always a good sign. Like, all right, we're in for something here. They're fired up. Bro, yeah. definitely, you know, probably could have had a double kill there, but you're right. It was a bit awkward, like, once you're dancing around those pillars, it's just weird. Yeah, he, he wanted to try and get some information early. If no one's there, he can push him towards t Sport. Unfortunately, he's up against Kevlar Tech 9s. And so it was a difficult fight. Like I said, did well to even get one, considering he missed the, the first few shots. As Cloud9 reposition, re-coordinate, uh, making their way back towards B. We said there was some execution potential here, and that still remains true. We've got a couple of smokes here, a couple of mollies, Anders, and some flashbangs as well. Axel waiting for his teammates to arrive. Nice smoke from Jim Vat here. Uh, Maui mentioned on the desk, he's one of the best B anchors. Almost wasted in this position because he's so good. Um, it's very difficult to catch him out, but they can hear the MP9 on the other side, so they'll probably be fancying their chances here. 25 seconds, and here comes that execution and the commitment. Yeah, some grenades thrown in. They're trying to get the jump down, but Jim Fat will get the double kill. Both of them headshots. I think one of them was in electronic mid-air. He caught him while he was still trying to get his feet on the ground. And that is a shutdown. It's such a luxury having a good B anchor on this map. It allows right. you to, to like defend the middle much more. It, it's just a, what a great player. I feel like he's got such a reputation over there as well. You just want to give him a miss. You don't even yeah. want to like, bother looking on that side of the map. And it's uh, a valuable asset. You're dead on. Uh, this is the initial stages of the round. Brolan, as mentioned, I ate a bit of a meal of it, but it was absolutely fine. They don't give up the round. It's another costly one. Uh, just bear in mind that the rounds have been so close. And there's Miles Shaw of a 4-0 start. But they lose one of these. Yes. They'll be reset completely. CS2 yes. economy is very harsh. A uh, discussion online about it actually going on right now. And uh, you can see the money's brittle. They uh, need to keep posting these rounds. They want to carry on with the momentum. If they just give one away and save nothing, they'll be down to the pistols themselves. It's going to be Shui aggressive once more. This time not working out as Boomage will take him down for the first frag of the round. 
Now, what's the response from the CTs here? Mouse know it as well. They know they just have to, or sorry, Cloud9 know it. They just have to win the one round and then they're, they're right back on track. So I'm sure that's why they're keeping up the pressure the way that they are at the moment. Looks like they might want to go check out the A ramp. Answer to your question about the response was going to be it's Brolin to get the headshot onto Electronic. And back into a four on four we go. Still leaving Jim Fat alone at the B bomb site. Exertion is slowly gravitating in that direction, and it could end up a really good choice. It looks like they're going to be splitting it from the catwalk position, so he's going to maybe have a long-range battle here by the bench. We'll see if he's up for it. Oh, I'm sure he is. CTs. Playing proactively. Boomage, though, catching them off guard. It's still Yimfat. We said he's so good in this deep bomb site, but running out of bullets. Switches to the USP. That could be the perfect weapon, though. It's Perfecto. He's got low health, and they maintain the man advantage here. Mouse remain undefeated on Mirage as Torji continues to find frag after frag. One more to go. Axel in an interesting position, but smoked off. They seem to be aware of this possibility, and regardless, he still finds the headshot. Oh, that Molotov. Is it going to be quite deep enough to burn him out in the corner? No, it won't. Oh, wow. It takes a fair bit of damage. Still a nice find for Axel. You've got to give him credit for that one. Double kill so far, and he's in a one versus one. Oh, Brolan finds Whoa. the perfect angle. I thought he was going to make his way around to get the bomb plant at the very least, but... Once again, Jim Fats the, is the, the anchor man. He's the one that's really making the difference here. He's the X Factor. He, he's so good. Uh, as mentioned, he's the second highest rated player in the entire tournament. Beneath Mezzi, of course, and as we all expected. Well, you course. want to see British counters flag at the top at most tournaments. At least in my book. But uh, opening frags once again for Cloud9. They're the five on four. They cannot convert a single advantage so far. They're tantalizingly close handed. Every round seems to be a one versus one. There is an argument to be made. They could force by again. At least a partial buy will be coming forward. Uh, but it's another clutch. It slips by the wayside on the pick of Mouse here. Looks to be a tactical timeout for Cloud9 as they can't find their first round yet. You know, just to glaze Jim Fat some more here. Go on. They, he got that double kill in spite of the fact that I think they were going to boost someone up on the box. They got caught in the middle of the boost. Like, that's where players will normally completely panic, right? Like, you've been caught. You have to adjust suddenly. He takes the fight down towards Catboy. He still hits the headshot, no problem. He falls back, gets another. It's, it's just like, I don't know what it takes to put him out of his comfort zone. Like, that's supposed to be the point in time where you, you do screw up a little bit because you're panicking. You've got caught trying to boost. Like, he just doesn't seem to be affected by any of it. That's so sick. Not. Uh, I'm a big fan. I'm sure most of the Counter-Strike community is. Uh, for, in my book, Rookie of the Year. Like, Must hand, hands down. Like, Must I know everyone wants it to be Donk, but like, Jim Fats won a pro league. He's been to arenas. I was going to say, if, I mean, Donk looked like a few potential future candidate, obviously, but yeah. it's just that, yeah, Jim Fats got a little bit more under his belt at the moment. So. And he's playing Probably big tournaments ev every, every month, you know. It's uh, I don't think there's any debate to be had, although Donk is more exciting and fun to talk about, I suppose. It's got a funny name. Flavor of the month, right? Now, <laughs> yeah. um, so execution, all five players towards A. They have not posted a round yet up against the Torji AWP, which has been performing very well this tournament. And in this year in general, Brolan, though, he is going to be tested once again. I think he goes down, but somehow sneaking away. A lot of pressure being applied here. Chewy isolated by the flames, but Torji certainly not mowing them down. That's more like it. Mouseball looking for a clean round here. They might just find it. Axel in the back lines. Even if he gets this frag, the orb will be recovered. But sitting in the smoke for now, waiting for his moment to pounce, he maybe gets one or two kills. If he gets a clean one on Torji, he's going to get the AWP. It might be worth the knife, and indeed it is. And now he gets the orb shot as well. Needs to be very careful on the CT side here. They do get the clean round, Anders. Uh, but that's a nice injection of cash. We'll probably see a T-sided orb now, uh, considering they've got excess uh, resources. It's a really pivotal round for Mouse in terms of building a little bit of an economy, finally. <laughs> yeah, like it's a convincing <laughs> round, you know. Like, you wouldn't realize if you just uh, saw the outcome of these rounds. They're up six to zero, but nice work from Shui. Didn't panic, and uh, even did Axel. Just uh, securing the bag there. Securing the bag. <laughs> no orb. And uh, Torji's going to have a field day against this T-side of Cloud9. It's, it's a map they do play. In the last three months, they've got six appearances, but only won it twice. And it's a bit of a mainstay for Mouse there. They always seem to do their best work, mainly off the back of Jimmy and Torchy, to be honest with you, as uh, the latter, this time not at the A bomb site, pushed off towards Short. Good effort. Very close there on the first encounter. I don't like the fact that there's three of them behind the carts up there. That's just... That's you're just so grouped up. One good grenade. I mean, how it's been used to blow up when smokes instead, but doesn't have to be a big mistake here for everyone to get bombarded down. So kind of glad they've fallen away from that position just a tiny bit. Still have plenty of time, but yeah, they're leaving 
one player to take a look at it, while the rest look like they're regrouping towards the A bomb site. Could be a more traditional A split coming up. The fact still remains, Victus, when one of these rounds, the money's still not that established. Like, uh, cost yeah, buying back right. all that utility, it costs a lot. And uh, for now, they're averaging around $2,000 per player. Oh, Broline could screw up this round for, for Cloud9 so badly. If he wins this fight in Palace, he doesn't. Perfecto with a headshot. That's huge. Otherwise, how do they keep going knowing that there's someone in Palace? They almost have to sort of change their minds, but they would never have time to. Nice little shot from Sui, and he's going to be picking off Boomich as well. A whole arm of the attack now, just gone. They know that's going to be a player in Palace, and he's low already, so Perfecto, he can't be the main entry. It has to be someone down on the low ground here. Electronic called up to try and get the job wow. done, but Exertion making sure they're not allowed on the bomb site. 15 seconds on the clock here. Even a bomb plant right now, it's going to be real difficult. Difficult. Yeah, well, he's got 10 points of health, and there's 10 seconds, all the 10s, really, and it's another two versus one, and Shuey instrumental. 10 feet on under, you might say. 10 feet under, yeah, the old saying, and uh, we are going to see the win streak continue. Another five on four, though. How many advantages do they need before they can close one out? Uh, they can't <laughs> shut down Shuey, it seems. He gets a double kill pretty much every time they come towards, say, bombsite, overlooking position, Zershin, two kills as well, and there's nothing Perfecto could do. He's a clutch Fucking master, on, but he only had 10 points of health in no baby. time. You know, there's this weird psychology that happens. Like, you almost get, like, clutch fatigue at one point where, you know, if you're close for the first five or six rounds, it's almost motivating. You're like, uh, we, we are so close to doing it. But after a while, that stops being true. And you think, what do we need to do to win? Like, we can't do anything. Uh, like, we're that, so close and it's never working. They're, like, they're in the swamps right now. <laughs> it's like, gotta be. They've gone for these weird, for this, like, a half force fight. I don't even know what to call this. You've got two players pretty much all in. That's Boomich and Perfecto. A MAC-10, a Deagle, barely any utility here. Trying to save a bit of residual cash. They need at least a bomb plan here to justify this sort of investment. And we'll see if they can... Get anything done. They're looking a bit desperate out there right now. The rounds haven't necessarily been bad. They're finding the openers. They're getting space and control. It's just closing these rounds out. Another opening kill available, but Brawlan this time finding some Borg. Torji, a rare miss, as they do find some access now towards the A bomb site. Perfecto towards Tetris. That is one <laughs> hell of a grenade. Lands on top of Hobbit and Perfecto both. They're not really enjoying it. Four versus five. Shot rings over the smoke, but no connection on that side. Look at us pushing the middle, though. Exertion hunting for Exile. I don't know if he's hearing the footsteps, but either way, he's going to be there a lot sooner than Cloud9 really are even expecting. And they might not even make it through. That flank might not even be a factor yeah. at all. It's it doesn't need, oh it doesn't need to God. arrive. Everyone's getting wrecked as Exile will be left in a five versus one. This will do for Mouse. That's the money they needed. Injected directly into the veins, I would say. That's a very nice round. Once again, a weird buy from Cloud9. Like I said, if they don't get the buy and uh, they get the bomb down and the buy going forward is still going to be compromised. Uh, sure, you can probably get rifles and be a mixture of Galils and AKs, but uh, this is getting really rough out there right now. Shui is just putting on a clinic at the A bomb site. Round after round, kill after kill. He is dominating them as he finds two more towards the sandwich area there, taking a bite out of Cloud9. My god, a timeout been used. They absolutely needed it at this stage. Yeah, what because... are you going to say, boys? I don't know what to tell you. Um, <laughs> we're going to have to start posting a few rounds here because this one is spiraling. It's not a map they're well versed in. They haven't got great results in it. They haven't bought an AWP once on Mirage. And it's not like that's been a huge problem. It's not like Torji's dominating them. It's the rifles. Yeah. Um, they just don't seem to have the, the trade potential right now. They, even with the opening frags, the, the five on fours that they've had in their favor, I think three times now, as you can see, the scoreline eight and zero is not working out for them. And you can see uh, the kind of sentiments we mentioned before. So the money's going to be compromised. Two Galils now in the hands of Perfecto and Boomich and uh, bare bones in terms of utility. Nice move from Torji. Yeah, that'll get you warmed up a little bit. Okay, this here, shot here. I don't know where the bullet went, but exertion lining them up. It doesn't even matter. Electronics gonna be going down. Bruh. Hobbit and boom, which are left. Oh, this is a nightmare unfolding in front of our eyes here. Cloud9, they've been so great throughout this tournament. They, they, I mean, their game yesterday, they put a lot of pressure. But uh, onto their opponents, but this is just, they're getting slaughtered here. Boomich going down, Hobbit on his own. He's one versus five, Henry's good. He's one and eight in terms of the scoreline. It, it would have been better if they had taken him to Isengard at this point, Henry. <laughs> <laughs> For anyone watching at home, that's a Lord of the Rings reference, I believe. We try to get one in at least every broadcast day of every tournament we ever attend, which is expected, I suppose, at this point. But it's appropriate because his name is Hobbit. I think that's, that's the angle you're going with, right? Yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's, to me, it's personally it's funnier because <laughs> you haven't watched the movies. <laughs> just... It's always good to get one in. At least you got it on the first map. Uh, 
Speaking of the first map, we've got an 8-0 scoreline here. This is the pick of mouse. At the end of the day, if your opponent picks up their pick, it doesn't really matter what the score is. But you'd like to get a, a round or two. Hobbit. Okay, might be able to cause some damage here. There's a low HP Torji. I thought it would do it, but wow, that confidence as he completely dominates the round once again. It was that nice movement. He's moving around pretty much sure. A, B, Torji's just got... Um, the kind of pep in his step right now. He's feeling confident, landing his shots, and even after all this pressure towards the ladder room, it's a swing around from exertion. He makes himself known on the server. Hasn't had to do too much uh, thus far, but uh, Georgie closing things out with the reposition and the tech nine, the bravery to come and challenge once again. The money just won't be an issue at this point. They've recovered their finances. Cloud9 certainly haven't. These weird buys, like we saw them going all in with AKs and Deagles, and now it uh, has to be the partial. I think they realize he's got to pick up the pace, hope for the best here, and it's going from bad to worse. You see Brolan finding the opening frag towards Boomer. The in-game lead is being removed here. The good grenades towards Connector. They've got mid-control at the very least, and they're doing significant damage towards the Swede. And unfortunately, though, the bomb has gone down at short. Axel dropped and rocked by Zershin as he gets a double. Brolan spotted, I think, three of them in the middle early on, so he knew exactly what was coming, that rush towards the catwalk. Normally one of my favorite strategies, to be honest, but um, this just got completely blown out of the water. Mouse, they're not even yelling in celebration anymore. They're like, it's too, it's too one-sided. Like, we can't even, you know, we're going to look bad if we celebrate. Yeah, now, I don't want to see my bad sportsman. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> Let's just let him have a couple of rounds, guys. Like, let's make it competitive, shall we? I haven't seen a blowout like this in years. Remember, and as we always say, no one can really ever close out a Counter-Strike game. It's never this simple, surely. Yeah, I mean, we, we had the 10 to return just exactly. the other day on Ancient. Exactly. So we're like, we know that even with two rounds, you could do something, but... What, what a game that was. Bloody hell. Na'Vi versus Ents. If you haven't watched that best of three after the tournament today, make sure you check that out. That's right, one of the games of the year. Just, as, so just not in terms of the level of Counter Strike that was played, just the drama, the emotion, the yeah. roller coaster that it was. The the switch from it being such a such an embarrassing loss for Ens into being such a competitive game was, it was wild. So a roller and, coaster. Had they have had they won the series, God, I think the internet would have had a meltdown. Like, yeah, I was going pretty hard on them. And <laughs> I thought, I Yo, well, we, for good reason. Like they did look, it was it was miserable to watch for a good long while there, but um, but it turned around. So yeah, definitely go check it out. Well, Hobbit gets a grenade. They have two chances here to try and do really anything. It's it's unfortunate because for the for the first five or six rounds, they were really competitive, right? It was really close down to 1v1s, 2v2s. Like they looked like they could have punched through the wall, but now <laughs> no. might be punching the desk in a minute. <laughs> yeah, that's what it feels like. Never really works, but still, you know. No. Okay, the B execution, like we said. Keep it simple at this point. Try and get a clutch scenario. Oh, Jim, that's such a sick position for this sort of round. How does he always know? He's got his teammate baiting him in. Oh, the Molotov, though. Maybe not as sick as you would like. He's got to try and mow them down here. And finally, it's been cracked open the B-bomb side. But still, there's going to be a couple of kills here. Oh, make it four before I can really build a storyline and get things going here for Cloud9. Everyone's dropped in the blink of an eye. They find the opener once again. That's another... Opening advantage. I'm going to go see, in terms of the opening kills, what the stats say, because it feels like it's getting out of hand uh, with the advantages they're finding and it's unable to close them out. So in terms of opening duels, they found four of them now. They've had four rounds with the opening frag going in their favor. That's a big problem. Like, there's a strong correlation between getting those openings and no! winning the round. Um, it's... Oh, yeah, it's like a bit it's, of an issue right now. <laughs> yeah, you could say that. That's totally fair. 11-0 down. Last <laughs> round. Ladies and gentlemen, we're just going to rush the A-bombs out at this point. Can we fight a single round for Cloud9 here? It's looking pretty good, actually. 11-1 could be possible. Yeah, I think Torchy was hyped up. He's like, he's re-peeking into the fights over and over again. Probably not necessary. You don't really need to do it. The bomb is a bit exposed here, actually. You've got to win this, boys. Yeah, you have to. It's a huge double opening for them. Sui's going to get one, but Exertion goes down. Here comes Jimmy. Trying to get the job done. Gets one there, and he's ready for the repeak if one was going to happen. Axel's a bit low on health, but it doesn't even matter. Strong headshot, but the Gilly will take one down. Holy. Jim Fat's on his own here. No. Takes one. A great oh, follow-up here. Electronic in the back line trying to hold on to the round, and he's nearly swung up on, but he gets the headshot. Unbelievable scenes here, ladies and gentlemen. It's the pick of Mouse, and they have dominated the first half. It's 11-1. Who, in your eyes, was the CSGO greatest of all time? I mean, your I always eyes. Had one. What did you say? Device. Device? I, I like that. Here we go with. 
simple. God, I like this. There's actually some considered answers here. Yeah, I mean, if there's a f little bit longer in CSGO, I'll go for Zarya, of course. Yeah, it's a bit no, it's fair enough. Time, I like that. It's, it's some good, honest answers there. You considered them. For me, I would say uh, Saibu. Okay, fair enough. I just think he's really great at everything. Yeah, the best all rounder. Yeah. Of all time? Oh, here we go. Of yeah. all time, the last yeah, three like, years? Yeah, like peak, like peak, peak. <laughs> like if you go back and all of three last years, you have him, have him in every single team. Why is he wrong? Except, but if you say, except I didn't play the first yeah, years but, of the game. But if you say like CS at I think, overall, it's I think I know who he's going to say. He's number two for me. Oh, really? Oh, really? Same as number three for you? Yeah. Damn. Well, for me, the vice, the goat. That's my number one too. Because that, I, think that's that's, I think that, I think that, I also agree that Saibu is insane though. Yeah, but I would course. say that the way that the device plays is like he's, he's not trying to be the best player in the world. I think that's it for me. Like, I think that if he wanted to, prove himself more individually, he could have done that. From what I've played with him, I think he could easily play more selfish if he wanted to, so but a, he doesn't want to do that. He's a humble goat. I would probably say uh, a symbol. Yeah? I think he's okay. both great individually, also... I mean, he, he, he won a major as well, so... It's fair enough, he, you don't he have fought, to justify he, he too fought much. Hard for that one. I think it's a totally fair, yeah. <laughs> fair name to throw into the, the ring. Um, but what about you? Yeah, I would say <clears throat> I would say the same. Uh, simple for me as well. I sure. think you know he. The other one is obviously Saivu. I, I would say, but simple. I think takes the cake because yeah, he started quite early as well in CSGO. Sure. He was he was there from the beginning. Short, 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 short and B, B apps. Nice. Coming B, back side B, B, B apps. B. B. Low HP. I'm beating you, Dori. I'm beating one you. Low HP. Yeah, one low. That's a bit then. Carry. Quite a lot. One B, one B apps. Dori, I'm beating you. Yeah. I have bug. That. Nice. Bomb. Nice. Bomb. 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 Nice! What's up, gamers? I hope you're enjoying the carnage of the quarterfinals here. Unbelievable scoreline. 11 to 1 in favor of Mouse Sports there. We heard the comms and how hyped they were to win clutch after clutch as uh, Cloud9 just couldn't get any footing into the game. At least they posted one round in the very last possible moment, Anders. I like that. I'm baiting you as a uh, Yanko. He's just letting you know. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just but... I'm just reminding you, you've got no backup here. I am baiting yeah. you. Well, there's a fine line between, you know, baiting and teamwork. I think Yanko once true. said it's true. Here we go. Second half oh, is already man. live. The Duelies put under some pressure here. Cloud9, needless Yikes. to say, they must win this round. But Roland's already kicking off with a good kill. Taking down Electronic. Create some space on the bomb site here. Axal with a strong headshot, and he wants to keep it going, firing off more shots, but that smoke is keeping them safe from CT spawn, at least for the minute. Hobbit can't see a thing. Bomb plan not happening right now. I don't think they're even thinking about it. They're just trying to clear space. Yeah, it doesn't look comfortable out there. They got CT surrounding them at this point. They just want to make sure they isolate these fights, and it's going to be working out. Chewie will take down Hobbit, and there's lots of damage being dished down either side. Perfecto down to 17 points of health. It's a three versus two. Axel holds towards the steps. He's already hit an impressive headshot, but that bomb will finally be planted here. He won't be able to stop them. Uh, so that's already a bit of a victory in its own right. A leap of faith from Axel leads to his demise as we get map points in the first round of the first, uh, second half, Anders. That is wild. What a round it was, though. That's probably the most exciting round we've had. Uh, it wasn't clear which way it was going, but Mouse Sports stay calm, cool, and collected as they plant that bomb and close things out. I think 
Because they don't have any any smokes or flashbangs or anything to retake with. Axel's like, I, I have to just to try and be a human flashbang and just jump in there and see if I can shock and surprise everybody. It's not going to be working out, but... <laughs> Gotta buy, boys. To one. <laughs> yeah, no <laughs> choice. Gotta <laughs> bring out the shotgun. Oh, dear. It's Ancient up next. Uh, just to know that, the pick of Cloud9, I think it's safe to say this one is done. We are going to see the opening frag for Torchy, probably a couple of them. As yes, indeed, he will convert both kills. Should we? Playing with the new shotgun animations? No, we're on the old patch. Oh. You would have loved to have seen that shell fly out of the shotgun, wouldn't you? I think it made all the difference here, like that. <laughs> no, I asked that very important question. I was like, guys, I need to know. Will I be seeing the shotgun shell fly? It will change my commentary. I know it will change Anders, is for sure. <laughs> yeah, it suddenly feels like a huge letdown. Like, you know, I, just, I was double, looking forward to it. Double, double scouts and double tags. Should we insertion down low? Like this round, okay, I was about to say not a foregone conclusion, on, but uh, I don't know, I'm running out of things to say <laughs> for Cloud9 here. I think we all can agree this one's done. Another scout shot land, but still, okay. Keep that up, I might st stick around, Axel. Here we go. He wouldn't, would he? He wouldn't win it like this. Three on one, perfecto, with the Max 7 to clutch it out. And do you believe him? <laughs> not without the shells, Henry. That's sure. If they had the okay, shells, it would be enough. different, like. Yeah, he's throwing it away. He's realized it. So he's like, you know what? Why even use it at this point? It's not worth it. <laughs> what can you even do? <laughs> Absolutely. I'm Try, gonna, I'm gonna honestly, go for another no scope headshot. Like, that at least is like newsworthy. You know, if you get a couple of them here, maybe somebody will put it on Reddit and you can sort of smile about that later. You're not going to be smiling about the game at all. <laughs> he's, he's got no kit and he's walking through CT spawn. Like, there's absolutely nothing that he could do to win this round. It's all it's already, already done. done. What a map it's been for Mouse. We'll give him a chance. Maybe, <laughs> yeah. there's maybe the server crashes. I don't know. Maybe That's something good. crazy goes down. But ladies and gentlemen, as you might expect, Mouse closed things out after posting an 11-1 score. They post 13 rounds in round number two of the second half. A dominating performance for Al Shui. Looked like an absolute beast with 17 kills. Cloud9 need to wake up if they want to stand a chance here in the quarterfinals. I am absolutely stunned. One solitary round from the side of Cloud9 throughout that entire map because Mouse looked like there was nothing that they couldn't do. Talk about absolute domination. I was not expecting that one, Matthew. I I'm kind of pissed off. I I'm going to be real with you. I'm kind of frustrated with the counter spread we've seen. I, I was hoping for a game. That game hasn't started quite yet because for a game, you need two teams playing counter strike and there was only one right there. I think we should start at the very, very beginning and the first decision for Cloud9 to start on the T side mm. versus the CT side, which in itself, can be a bit of a questionable choice, but if this is what you're gonna put first, like, is that is that an admission of guilt for how weak the CT side might be and you wanna avoid that? Because I think Cloud9 have looked better on T sides overall, but holy hell was this terrible and weak. That decision obviously blew up in their face. I don't know if it would have they would have fared that much better on CT side, but that that actually does make me think about the, the fall finals when they played Vitality, how they did look better on Mirage actually, mm. on the CT side, even with Boomich opping. We never really got to see that come into play, but that was just an entire, just, just a, an obliteration by Maus. They played so much better. They knew every answer for what Cloud9 were throwing at them. That being said, Cloud9 looked incredibly disjointed. They did not That's look true. like yeah. the roster that I'm used to. They have, I've liked their T sides a little bit more now that Boomich is coming to the fray. That was a testament against everything I stood for in terms of Boomich <laughs> being the Riz Lord. I mean, listen, we're not going to take anything away from, from Maus. No. Like, anytime someone was tested, it was multi kills galore. You could almost single handedly take every player of that roster, and I would point and multi kill to you. Jim on the B side, Brawler on the A side, Exertion, of course, Shuhi had crazy moments. But I don't think they did anything out of this world or extraordinary on their CT side and how they were playing, being super aggressive. They were ba they were going through the motion. They were playing basic Counter Strike. They were very good at relaying information, rotating what was needed. But it also means that at no point in time did Cloud9 surprise them. Mouse were never caught with their pants down, mm. ever. Any, it's basically the playing Counter Strike in the most fanciest comfort. It was like being in a nice restaurant. You know the menu. Like the menu is coming your way. It's a five course. You know what's going to happen. You can get ready for it. Get in position. That was a 
little too easy for my liking. It didn't even look like Cloud9 woke up on an individual level. We saw no. the highlight package there from Shuhei, and he's presented with some 50-50 duels there, and yet they're just not even shooting him back. I, it's not even the, just the strat calls that were bad for Cloud9. It's that even when they were presented opportunities to try to get back into rounds, it just did not feel like the firepower was there whatsoever. But Shuhei himself, I mean, I, I do want to give him some credit because 100%. that connector, his timings were so strong in terms of catching Cloud9 out when they were trying to take map control. He was such a little disruptor there when, he, when they were trying to take that space away from him or they were executing onto the A-bomb site. Always just had such a great sense for when's the right time to swing. Yeah, he was very clearly feeling the rhythm of this game, which for Cloud9, uh, not at all. Uh, just going back to the T-side discussion of why they chose to start on it. Obviously, we don't know the reason, but do you suspect it's because of the orping situation? Is that kind of the only reasoning you could see of, hey, maybe we should be starting off on the aggressive side? Well, Cloud9 actually have picked the T side on a couple maps. They, they like doing it on Inferno also, for example. Mm. And so I know that Groove has kind of thrown this in as a curveball to teams in the past. And given that, for whatever reason, they probably saw themselves as an underdog, at least on Mirage, they probably wanted to just flip the script to try to see if they can be the tempo setters as opposed to letting Maus dictate the pace because Maus, we, we never really had to even see it there, but they're very you know. good at taking mid on Mirage. Yeah. No, no, I, I'm right there with you. I, some There is a theory out there as well if you're starting the first game in the morning being on the T side as well lets you dictate the pace just a little bit more, but we just haven't seen that. Like it's not like they actually did. It's not they they didn't take the game two miles. It was just it was very, very flat. You know who was taking full advantage of this situation as well? Young Jimmy. Boy, oh Again. boy, did he have a great start. <laughs> he, he's just been looking so fire. And it's so great to see because we talked about it, you know, the context of him coming in uh, back at EPL, Mouse lifting the trophy. At no point has he ever even looked like a liability for the side of Mouse, anything but. I mean, he keeps on delivering, and, and I'm glad we got a, a couple of these team speak moments as well that we had during the break at halftime as well, just to kind of put in context and in perspective how much they're talking with each other in these moments, because mm. there were a few moments that were a little bit on a knife's edge, like a, just a contextual 3v3 on the B side, but it feels like they were very activated in relaying information, like I'm baiting for you, I'm behind you, one, one could be behind you, Brolin said, yeah, one is behind me. They were just on top of any possibility that could happen that could turn a situation around, and Yimpa, of course, as that B anchor, has to be able to give that information to his teammate. Whoever's backing up needs to know what's happening on the side. Yimpa reminds me a lot of when Bit just hit the ground running for Navi, where you put him yes. onto some kind of anchor position. Like I think of ramp on nuke, especially for how these two players are so similar, where the old era of those kinds of anchors was just, you know, you, you play for information, you jiggle it out, you see if they're there, throw a smoke behind you, make sure that you cover your tracks, don't dive for no reason. But Yimpat just takes fights. Bit took tight fights too when he was on Navi. Mm. And when you can impose your abilities on your opponents like that, it's such a luxury for your team because they don't actually even really have to rotate because he kills everybody. Yeah, I was going to pose the question <laughs> of, um, I, I mean, with Frozen departing, I don't even think it's worth posing the question because there was just clearly no holes in this, right? There were no holes even prodded by the side of, side of Cloud9. Yeah, listen, this is a bad example for us to dive into what's yeah. missing when Frozen yeah. isn't here. Yeah. Oh, no, 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 we're not, we're not going to manufacture like a debate about this map. They just no. were not tested at all. Let's be a little bit more patient on that. Cloud9 never reached a point where you could possibly feel uh, the absence of Frozen. Yeah, well, their map pick is on the horizon and we will be moving on to Ancient, but not before a quick break. When we're back, Cloud9 are going to have to wake up and shake off the rust. Their map pick awaits. We're diving into Ancient very shortly.
Ancient, the pick of Cloud9 coming up very shortly indeed. And Redemption, a necessity if they even want to dream of making it through to the semi-finals here at the Blast Premier World Finals. Ancient coming through as Cloud9's pick. Um, give us some logic for that. Why do you think they've picked into this, Maui? It's a map that the T side actually looks pretty solid. I think we just saw the opposite side of that where Cloud9 sometimes have difficulty staging on certain maps. Sometimes taking map control be can be a little bit hard. I think Ancient and Overpass have been the bright spots for me in terms of sometimes you can just simplify the playbook. They love a good yeah. A exec. They love a good B exec. They don't even have to go through too many stages of mid control to do those kinds of plays. I agree with you. And on top of that, it's a, it's a map they've played a lot, which means they've gone through the motions of trying a structure and then kind of reshuffling on the CD side. We've seen it on two different iterations now where they swap around positions a little bit. So it feels like they've sort of figured out, okay, these are the pieces that we have, and this is probably the most optimized way we can approach the map, at least on the CDs. Yeah, it was a, you know, a shake-up that we saw earlier on in the tournament, right? They were coming in with some new ideas, which uh, means Perfecto, unfortunately for him, um, we're going to see him on the op. I'm sure he's pal. grimacing at that thought. I can't, I can't believe you're getting the best gun in the game, and, and yet... Yeah, and you're not Perfecto. happy about it. <laughs> he definitely didn't like that. But I don't want this. <laughs> yeah. But I didn't order it, this. It was Hobbit. It, yeah, something to note for people, if they've been watching Cloud9 at previous tournaments, maybe they missed the game here for Ancient. It was Hobbit that was opping on this map before. He was playing that mid kind of A rotator position with it mostly, and now Perfecto is doing that. So Hobbit has actually taken over Cave from him, and him and Boomich have looked disgusting as a unit together. They do pretty good, huh? Yeah, they That's look, a fact. They, they're so active. They're, they're always willing to test their opponents, and I mean, they're, they're going to start on the T seat the T side, but when Maos actually have to play an offense, mm. it's going to be tough to deal with yeah, that. Yeah, that, I think it's something that we have to keep an eye on, because if I just give you the context of Maos versus G2 on Ancient, we've we have seen rather here in Abu Dhabi, they got pressured a whole lot towards B lane. So this kind of duo you're talking about, the Boomich and the Hobbit that can be applying pressure on the B lane, will be something to keep an eye on, which Maos struggled as well. And on the CT side, Torji got caught off guard a couple of times. Like, Hooksy had a very pa a fast pace, first degree counter-strike. We're talking a 6-1 to one scoreline at the very beginning where two of these are immediate A-pop with a bunch of flashes. They had better money, they just went at Maus, and they Maus kind of struggled back to come back into the game, but mm -hmm. the first seven rounds, it was just a, a grave that was already dug up. Yeah, the CT side is where Maus will be finding themselves to be starting off this particular map. So to kind of update people's databases, uh, where are we going to be seeing Brolin slotting in? Is it exactly the same position position for where Frozen was? Pretty sure Brolin is just taking all of his spots, and so since Frozen played B before for Maus, I would expect Brolin does that. Um, I, I think that one thing that is going to be really worrying, though, if we're going to continue on CT spots here, is that Cloud9 love A execs, and Yimpat is on fire right now, <laughs> defending that A bomb site. I'm terrified for them if they really want to go for that, because it seems like this guy just gets three kills every single time anybody is in a 50 meter radius of him. I agree, he definitely is the multi-kill machine. What we're gonna have to see if uh, how many gambles Shui comes with, because he, he has a tendency sometimes to be very aggressive with the calls, and we're talking about just leaving the A side on retake, playing maybe from Temple, being a bit more stronger towards the middle map, uh, in the side of the map, and this is where Maui is right with the simplicity of what Clown is going to put forth. Maybe just don't overthink it. Whatever it is you just did on the CD side of Mirage, it's not like you were ahead of the meteorite. You just you listened to what was happening, you made the right assumption on what was going on, and you adjusted your setup. I, I feel like this is going to be enough. Basically, everything is left to be desired if we're just looking at that Mirage performance from Cloud9. But please? I want to see Electronic back in form because it was so damn good so far this tournament. He has looked incredibly consistent, and it's great, obviously, with the wider context of him now just freed up. He doesn't have to worry about leading, calling anymore. Great to see him previously back in the form we know and love from him. Right, and when we talk about his T-side positioning on this map, he's been frequently lurking a little bit more towards B, trying to take lane. Sometimes he'll fight towards Cave as well. And I actually think that's a position that he could abuse. If Brolin's not up to snuff, if he's not actually going to be a great defender on that bomb site, that could be the clash that we're looking for if Cloud9 want to tip the scales in their favor. Yeah, and that was one of the adjustments that Electronic is really benefiting from. Uh, when he had that kind of IGL mental, he had a ridiculous amount of first duel or entry attempt, which I thought was completely ridiculous. When you have someone of his quality, you want him to be at the end of the round. You want him to be in these like mid-round sort of crucial kills that you need. And now on the T side as Maui is putting out there, he's only got the second lowest entry attempt. He's not the guy that's trying to get the kills. Mm. It's Boomich, it's Axile. Basically, only Perfecto takes less duel than Electronic. So he stays alive and he has impact mid-round. Well, a potentially a chance for Cloud9 to be redeeming themselves and that is going to be a must if they want any hope of making it closer to the semi-final. So Henry G, Anders, uh, do you see that written in the stars for Cloud9? Please. I think, I think there's a chance. 
I, I, like I said at the start of that one, it doesn't matter what the scoreline is. It's your opponent's pick. Sure, it, it was a, a shit show. Let's be honest. It didn't sure. really go in their favor, but there were plenty of opportunities. They had five opening frags in that first half. They couldn't convert the clutches. And yeah, if one of those went in their favor, we said the money would have been reset. It would have been a very different game. Maybe there was just uh, a bit of a unlucky circumstances there. I'm not sure, but it is Ancient up next, and this is their pick. This is where we've seen Boomage and Hobbit do some great work towards those B lanes time and time again. They've looked unstoppable. Uh, I haven't watched many mouse games on Ancient, to be honest with you, so uh, I'm interested to see whether Cloud9 can bounce back after such a devastating loss. Um, from what they've put down today, all signs point to no, but uh, I think they can probably bounce back and work this yeah. one out. At least give us a good game. I want to give them the benefit of the doubt as well, although it does concern me that it really looked like it was only Axile that was sort of doing a lot of work there. Perfecto had a moment where he was doing something, yeah, but... Uh, close to a clutch. That was yeah. Much it, right? Do you want to see the individuals get put into play a little bit of a Cloud9? We are going to head into the second map. It is Cloud9 versus Mouse, and it will be Mouse starting on the CT side, so... Yeah. A little bit of an advantage maybe early on here. They've got a smoke already thrown out from the T side and a Molotov left on Boomage. Bear in mind, Mouse with the underdogs coming into this one, or the under mice, I suppose, as uh, we will see them fend off this B attack. It's double jewelies ready and waiting. Oh, nice attempt at the plant, though. It's a fake one, though. And Jim Fat's absolutely destroying everyone. And as what's going on here, they're losing every single player, but there is a response. Lots of damage inflicted, and those jewelies not quite connecting. Rollan. He's had a few issues this game. He gets one. He hasn't had his big moment so far on the server, but there's Torji. That is the penultimate frag that might seal the deal. Perfecto. Another clutch scenario here. More than capable of winning it. He's got 100 HP. Glock, Kevlar, and Shui and Torji to deal with. He'll make his way forward. Oh, if he gets that first kill quickly, you never know. And there it is. Okay, now he has got a fighting chance. And he's got the bomb as well. So... Playing a game, he knows that there's someone in the middle because he gets shot in the back, so he's, he's already realizing that much. Just not sure what to do with it yet. Bomb planted a very good position. He can fall back here towards the CT spawn. So for Sue, this will not be necessarily that easy. Obviously no kit, no smoke or anything else. They have to tap the bomb a couple of times, try and force Perfecto into the fight. He knows where he is now, but again, 10 seconds. My God, Perfecto has gone far away. He's playing it so well at the moment. We did call him a genius earlier, and this is maybe partially why. Just buying time, and I think time is almost up for Sue. He's going to be able to get the headshot there, yeah, yeah, but got he's realized, yeah, he's out of time. Oh, that's a that's great rush. Yeah, you can see that's frustrating for them. They had that one locked in, and uh, I feel like they were just... Sure, you want to patrol the bomb and make sure it's safe, but they they, they, they allow Perfect to have two 1v1s, and that yes. suggests you played it like incorrectly, unfortunately. And that's the first bit of success Cloud9 have had this entire series. Uh, only getting one round in the previous map. And yeah, a wry smile comes through because they know that that's a bit of a heist. Um, Mouse shouldn't be losing that one. Like, let him have the bomb. It, it's fine. You don't have yes. to take those jewels, especially when it's a five on three in your favor. Should have been converted. And that's unfortunate, but uh, there it is. Perfecto, like we said, a bit of a clutch master. He couldn't have played it any better in the one versus one. It looked like actually such a sick plan as well for Mouse. Like, I think there are two people in the middle who always got murdered by, by Jim Fat. But other than that, they were faking the bomb on B. I think they were always going to fall back from that. And then they were going to move up, up in the middle. Like, what an insane idea. I, I wish I could see that play out all the way. This is another slaughter, <laughs> including two eight. You know, wrong place, wrong time. Well, there we go. Mouse will have their work cut out for them now. That was the, the full eco. Cloud9 needed this start here in the second map. Their pick. Uh, stealing the pistol away. And now having pretty much the clean sweep. Uh, they had to just give Mouse something, a consolation prize there, a team frag coming through, not a big deal, as uh, they keep it relatively clean. M4 is being brought out here, the first gun round, real test for Cloud9. They've got a Mac 10 in hands of Boomage, uh, a specialist of the SMGs if you're not aware at home. And it can see the initial utility mid will be a big talking point here. Massive grenade towards exertion, down to 69 points of health already. He'll be working towards the elbow position, it's Brolan. Haven't been massively impressed with his performance, but it hasn't been bad by any stretch of the imagination. So replacing a player like Frozen can be a difficult challenge, and he's gone down quickly once again. This is looking much better for Cloud9 here. That's a locked in 3-0. I, I think that was based on the, the timing. The CT score throwing in wall bangs, and then right. as they were reloading, Cloud9 just said, all right, we're just running up, and they just gained all the ground that they could have needed there. That's, um... It's not that there's anything wrong with wall banging, but when you have no Molotov or smoke down on the ramp, there's there's gonna be a world in which they're just there waiting, and that's the only what happened. So 
Yeah, strong start. You're right. 3-0 and in their favor. It's a bit of a bonus round, isn't it, for Cloud9? So yeah, you're going to expect something a little bit quicker, a little bit looser. And that's exactly what we get here. It is going to be 3-0 for Cloud9 on the start of Engineer, the second map. And no choice but to save the three weapons they've got. Miles will have M4s at least across the board. But Boomich, he can definitely justify a hunt as he starts to explore the options in towards A main. Spotted, but uh, probably going to go down here. It's not a big deal. He'll be absolutely fine for cash. He's got $6,400 residual. Whether he wants to bring out that T-side orb, I don't think it's really required. It's not like they rely on him to have the AWP, but uh, this is exactly what Cloud9 needed. Brolan, of course. <laughs> of course. That's what, exact, that's what I always say when I die. And it's like, of course he's done that. All right, yeah, nice one. Right. Great, well done. You've got me. It's always a good way to sort of make it seem like the people that actually beat you are idiots, you know? Yeah, that, that's, that's kind of the tone I see. Yeah. And it's like, <laughs> you've decided to do that, have you? Great. You win. <laughs> You're so beneath my level that I couldn't predict it. Yeah, it's, it's, I'm super toxic. Like, people are with me now. This <laughs> is the best though, isn't it? Yeah. All right, then. Round four, and it's quick again, Anders. They, they, they've found their, their mojo again. You know, that these are quick rounds. And they're going to plant super early here. Like, there's no defense towards A. Like, this is a perfectly cool game for Boomich so far. But Yimfab fighting back admirably. I don't know how he does it. I, I yeah. just have no idea how a human being can just make all the right choices all the time. It's absolutely insane to watch. But you're right. Good call coming up from Cloud9. They've got the bomb planted. And the alpha plant is looking pretty terrific at the moment. Still a 2 on 3 in spite of a little bit of resistance being thrown in here from Mouse. Smoke on top and everything else. They do have a kit on Jim Fats. There is a way to do this. He's trying to find the bomb inside and go straight for the defuse. But Perfecto's got the lineup ready. That was probably the only way that they could have tried to win it again. Jimmy technically, I think, making all the right choices. But it wasn't enough. Well, there we go. It's Mouse getting a taste of their own medicine. <coughs> I have to say, it looks like it tastes quite bitter, Anders. It goes down. Four and zero here. They don't like it. No, they don't like it whatsoever. And even at the opening frat from Yim Fat, it felt like the round was sort of done because the bomb was planted so cleanly with those smokes down. So difficult to break through. I like that, boobs. Keep that coming. That's so strong, isn't it? That's the mojo I was referencing earlier. They need him to lift their spirits. They were down in the dumps. Forget about the first map, boys. Move on. And move on they shall as they continue their perfect game here in the second map. At 4-0, and zero, and it looks to be another eco here. As uh, with the maximum loss bonus, it's not quite enough on the CT side as they save nothing. Oh, Oh, we've got a, no. I like this from Yimfa, though. Get, a, get the hero M4 out. If there's a player that could ever carry them through a round like this, it would be him. That's true. That's a good point. And they got two C set 75s. This is a rare occurrence nowadays. It's actually pretty sick in CS2. I think it's got like a okay. bit of a return to form, honestly. Like a lot of players, uh, especially like to like twist, to showing us oh. how powerful it can be. There's a killer range. Here comes Yimfa looking for the double kill, delivering on all fronts, but good trades still coming through from Cloud9. A very winnable round for them as we do have an M4 recover for Brolan. He has to get the reload in though as well, so he doesn't feel comfortable to do so. Might want to just peel off this one and get the M4 to save ground. He's holding that 5-7. Scary position to be yeah. in because mid is uncontrolled, so if someone comes at him from middle at range there, he's just going to have a really bad fight. Exactly, and he needs a bit of intel here. Can he get the M4 out? I think he's had time to do so now. Sticking around. Toshi's way on the other side with the pistol. So finally there's Broland checking it out. Confirming for himself that nobody's at least immediately on the other side. He's got an AK-47 now as well. So we know he's got a bit of stopping power to him. Toshi waiting in towards the temple. They have Bang. Molotov. They could get rid of this position if, and just kind of get the bomb I out would say it. they probably... Molotov of the default boxes, but you're right. There's definitely an option. Let's we'll see what they go with here. They might just go for the full-on contact play and not use any utility, knowing they've got the advantage. It's unlikely both CTs are together here. Nice little boost up. They'll start to make their presence known. Molotov goes down towards CT spawn. And Torji has got a chance now. He could deny this plant. He's played it so well. 
the fact he doesn't go for the, the plant says he knows their money is already strong. It doesn't matter if you deny that plant, uh, but you take down the, the danger man first. It takes three and a half seconds to plant that bomb, of course. He can't come off. He won't be a threat, so take down the defending player. And that's really well played from Torshi. They needed that, and we said, if ever there was a player to find you some damage with a hero M4, it might be Jimmy. And he manages to get the double kill here. Sure, it was frantic. It was scary for them, but lots of damage. No one looking towards that uh, cave position when the swing comes through. Great little pincer maneuver here and applying just enough pressure to set up Torji. And it's two versus one, essentially, as his teammate was rotating in. Big. Yeah, that's more like it. They needed that. The streak comes to an end. Hell of a start for Cloud9. Uh, but this is where things get a little bit more problematic. That's going to be a huge injection of cash for the CT side. Brolin also with an assisted flash on both those last two kills right. there. So, you know, somewhere along the way he threw a, a must have been an interesting flashbang. Yeah. Let's see a bit more from Brolin. Well, here we go. Four to one. And in the middle, he should have spray through Hobbit. Trying to see if he's coming in. Revenge. There was so much conviction behind that spray. Just yeah. in the second kill, he goes, I know you're there. I'm yeah. going to find you, kid. And uh, there it is, two clean frags from Zershan. And uh, that might be the round in of itself, as uh, we've got five on three. And in terms of the players remaining, Electronic Axile, Perfecto, sure, quite the trio, but uh, not really much to work with now. They don't have any positional control of the map. Hopefully you can see that they've lost all information. They don't know if the CTs have pushed down this B ramp. Have they got control of the B lanes in general? Uh, probably you have to just take an educated guess and walk through and hope for the best. Don't even know. I mean, best case scenario, they get exertion with a Molotov before anything really starts here. Like he's in a position low on health. You could land a grenade that you sort of you know trapped in the corner. So maybe that's a way to get things rolling. But it's it's a stretch at the moment to imagine that they can really get onto the bomb site here. Three versus five. Forty seconds left. Spotted out, flashed out, and killed by Siway there. That's enough. That confirms they see the bombs know. there as well. And there's, I'm not sure it is enough. I like the look of this for Cloud9. Something about it looks deadly. If they can get this bomb planted and set up Perfecto and Axile in a two versus four, they, they can win these rounds. Don't you worry about that. It is so. Finding one in the corner. This exertion now. Who's the one that was low from earlier? So it's not a disaster just yet. Where do they exit? They're going to go in towards the cave. Smartly, they don't fall back on the ramp. There was an orb waiting for them. That probably would have ended if, badly. If they can throw the incendiary in the cave entrance, it's a defuse, it's done. That's all they have to do here, but of course, they don't have the intel that both these T-side players are over there. There's, oh, it's a missed incendiary, and now they might have actually ruined this round for themselves. You can't even access the bomb site. They've locked themselves out. So no kids. Fuse the Jimmy has one, but he's on the other side. He can't cross. The kid is on the ground, and Torshi's run away. A three versus five. They converted into a victory that's massive. I told you. As soon as like they, they gave up too much of the B bomb side there, in my opinion. Like, they, they should have been challenging and denying the bomb a little bit more. They had two wow. low HP players in the same position towards long. As soon as those smokes are dropped, uh, you're allowing Cloud9 to get that bomb planted, reposition. There wasn't enough pressure being applied. And after this fantastic start as well, that, that's really quite disappointing. You could argue as well that Shui, after getting the, the kind of fourth, uh, third frag there, that would be enough. Doesn't need to take the re-peak. Um, but it was the incendiary. Whoever threw that, no! uh, absolute nightmare uh, of a bit of utility there. If you throw it directly yeah. at the cave entrance, job done. He actually ended up molotoving outside the cave, blocking offshore, meaning they couldn't swing around and actually do anything with it. Um, so yeah, a pretty disastrous sequence of events there for Mouse, I'm afraid. Yeah, they maybe realized that themselves. They're going to go for a timeout. Just Oof. to talk things over, but that... That's the one that really tilts you. Like, you, you realize, okay, they had a good start, whatever, but now... We, we've, we've thrown that round. Like, sure, very well played from Cloud9. Like like I said, Axel and Perfecto, that sort of scenario, 100 HP, two smokes to them. They, they can make that work, but it was almost gifted over with the misutility and the kind of fumbled efforts on the retake. But there's still money in the bank. It's going to be a very simple execution, Anders. We've got one smoke yes. in CT spawn, four players making their way through. The flash is being deployed. Nice nade from Jimmy, though. Does a ton of damage towards Electronic, and he's got a chance to mow them down here. He's already softened the first one up, but still the kills can't be found. Trading out the frags is perfecto as he gets another double. Nothing left to be said. Torshi in towards that temple. It's another four on two, but this time in favor of Cloud9. Well, the flash timing for Cloud9 there was expertly played. They just had the right grenade to the right time, and I don't know what Torshi and Sue could do here, especially with that AWP in the back pocket. It's such an expensive weapon to throw away, trying to retake in a two-on-four that it just probably doesn't make a lot of sense here. Be careful, because Boom is already, yeah, he's hard hunting. He's out there. 
Looking, I don't think they'll expect this whatsoever. It's really quite smart from Boomich. Huge frag. All he has to do is patrol the AWP now. Probably fancies it for himself. He's definitely going to get this kill as well. Yeah, I love that, Boomich. Give him hell. Electronic. <laughs> he can't believe it, how they've bounced back. If you're just joining us, you probably think this is a par for the course. Cloud9, the favorites going into this one. Uh, you might be surprised to learn the mouse actually won the first map 13 to 1 of Mirage. Cloud9 looked broken and disjointed. They couldn't get anything over the line. Calling with conviction right now is Electronic with low HP. This somehow gets the opening frag on Yimfa. Effect of a beautiful double. And Boomage with that killer instinct is hunting and sniffing out his prey as he finds the last couple of frags there. Leads Mouse Sports to, yeah, five sevens, Deagles, and MP9. Doesn't look great for them. This one has Spire out of control already. First frag for Axel will be no problem. Seems to be very aware of the prospect of Yimmy behind the corner as well. He knows the, the jig is up and he'll have to swing. They're doing everything right. It's such a contrast. What a change from the first map. 6-1 to one in favor of Cloud9. Could be 7-1 to one the way that this is playing out. Just some pistols left. And I mean, the one round that Mouse actually did win was a bit of a... A gamble on itself with the two CCs and the one forced M4A1. That's how they got the single round that they have on the board here. Axal still holding on to it. He's aware there could be more. A quad kill for Axal right here. He's he's cleaned it up. I think there was a, was a graph floating around of sort of the, the performance change from Axal early on and then into like the last couple of events. Like okay. how it's just been leveling up. Um, really, really impressed. I think it might have been uh, right. Jacob that well, was putting that out. He's on for an A, Sanders. He's getting there. Maybe not the most impactful. They don't have pistols, but still, we'll count it nonetheless. Goes in the history books somewhere. One of the history books. Probably the history. somewhere at the back of the library. Back of the library. <laughs> oh my god, he hunted it down. There we go. Okay. I respect that. You know, they give him the opportunity. Ace for Axel. Probably not his first in three years or whatever, like it was with Carrigan. I feel like that's. He's probably had a couple. He probably had a couple, yeah. Probably had a couple. I don't have the stats with me. I don't know what stats I'd have to look at to find out how many aces Axel's got. But uh, That's this we're not going to look into it. It's not that interesting. It's your job. Yeah, what are you exactly. doing? What are you doing? <laughs> Why am I even casting? I don't know how many aces Axel's got. Well, like you said, not the most exciting se sequence of events. But still, if you're loving this for your Cloud9, you, you've shaken off all those bad vibes from the first map. As we get into it, Zershan, another double kill. What more can this guy do? Five on two. You can't get this one up, lads. That looked so identical. I thought it was a replay from the yeah, other round. I was trying. I was like, Henry, don't cast a replay again. You've done, exactly. you've done that twice this year. <laughs> but uh, no, that was that was a real round. We are live. And uh, Zerchen looking hella strong over towards middle. Hobbit and Perfecto remain. But uh, bear in mind, any damage they inflict here, Anders, will have a knock-on effect. There's every reason to slow it down. And it's going to be brought on. Finally showing some form here. That's his second kill of this first half. And it will be sure to clean it up. Clean it up. It's going to be uh, five players surviving as well. So that's just what they needed. I, I don't think they'll go towards middle anymore. I think they've learned the lesson now. Every time they've gone in that area, Zershin gets a double kill. Yeah, he's he's on point in spite of the grenades and everything else. Just absolutely he's ready. So, well. so he's got Yimpa setting up with the flash. And he's just running backwards, dodging the T-flashes. Yeah. Um, and he's timed it to perfection. So he's got a real understanding of and how he to shut that, down the offense. Throws that flashbang behind the boxes there. Yeah, so sure. Just CTs are just aren't affected by it at all. Yeah, it's very nice. All right, then. Seven to two. A few moments remaining. And uh, we'll see what... They've had great success toward day, but towards you this time, taking matters into his own hands. He'll the AWP on this side of the map. Three kills to him. And holding behind Big Box for now. Will the Big Boss be coming after him? Boomich setting up the utility. Roland. Active at the B ramp. Should we confirm the B lanes are clear? But the bomb's outside the double doors. So, could be information that uh, needs some an incorrect rotation. We'll see. Smokes and a bit of a fake in towards A. This is a, a, a full fake here. Will the CTs take the bait? I kind of doubt it because the smoke is up on the CT side. So, they don't have a reason to super rotate at the moment. Ooh, almost caught off guard there, but. Roland's going to be ready. Bit of a crossfire setup. It's a good spray down. Oh, Make Suey. it a quick double for him and Sue. Okay. He almost screwed it up, you're right, but he's back in action. Exertion, he can't be beat in the middle, it seems. He's just always going to get a couple of kills there. Yeah, I don't mind that call from Cloud9. Um, they've had great success towards A. As we mentioned, go for a fake. You can do these like one-man executions. They send a couple of players in. Uh, unfortunately, it's mouse that don't take the bait whatsoever. Well, if you notice... 
they almost started to move out of position. So that was there. You know. that, was, that was like, if they waited maybe a few more seconds, yeah, that's actually a significant frag. Um, if Axel's smart right now, you throw the orb out of the map and uh, make sure they can't recover it. 20 seconds remaining. Yep, there's the orb. And, oh, and he is a smart boy, isn't he? Not great at throwing, but yeah. He's been to the same <laughs> school of Counter-Strike that I graduated from. As, uh, yeah, you got to get rid of those orbs. And, uh, yeah, I told you that. Guys, oh, oh, it's gone. And it's unfortunate. That's actually a pretty important player. I don't, I'm not sure they can afford the orb going forward. They might be able to. I'll have a look if there's uh, an option. I, I don't think there is, though. Still, that is a lot of money to sink into something that... Otherwise, a one round. Yeah, it's getting under his skin. What do you say? <laughs> Fucking joke. Okay. <laughs> uh, he's got the orb. It's fine. Oh. It's all under control. Yeah, there's no reason to be mad. Yeah. Nice grenade in the middle. That is huge. That's a, that's a cool... Because they've been playing it the same way, right? It's been that same double duo in the middle, so... Why not just grenade them? Why not just say, instead of fighting them straight up, we're losing that fight every time, we'll just throw a grenade your way. What is that smoke doing? Don't think that's meant to land that deep. No. It landed outside of the map. Did it? Oh, yeah, you're right. Look at it on the radar. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you very much. I'll call it now. It's a, it's a failed smoke. I don't know. Maybe there's something to it. A strategy you couldn't comprehend, Andrews. Yeah, I won't rule it out. I'll give you the benefit <laughs> of the doubt, Henry. That could be the case. Chewie playing on the front lines here, boys. Get in the smoke. They didn't get this is like a CSGO play. It, so. like, this is what you used to do. Like, you get the advantage in CSGO. Remember the old style smokes? Once it fades, the person residing with the smoke oh, will yeah. have like, maybe a quarter of a second advantage. But Hobbit's ready for it. But his cross has not. Still gets the kill, though. It's an ambitious play from Shui. Doesn't work out for him. You see the way it dissipates the smoke there. He, he, it didn't look great from, from his point of view, did it? Nice little grenade. Roland gets softened up. He is point blank range with the orb, which I don't know. It can still work, but a lot of the times you'll prefer to try and play it at range. Not just even with the scope, just in general. Four on five, and they are making a quick call to rotate through. Are they going to be powering through the smoke? It's a lot of problems here for exertion. Torshi, though, in the back. The fact that he could afford that AWP suddenly a big difference maker. Two shots landed. Deep grenade as well. Electronic and Hobbit in trouble right here, but oh, I say that. It's Torshi again. All a right. triple kill for him. He's absolutely locked this down. No time on the clock anyway here for Harbour to do much. Slight recovery there after losing Shui in towards the cave. Felt like uh, they could have fallen apart once again. You have to say, like, it was a rough start for Mouse, but they've arguably played, like, pretty good Counter-Strike. It's just, like, a couple of fumbled rounds, most notably towards that B-bomb side, like, when they threw the incendiary, essentially blocking themselves out of the round and allowed too much space for Perfecto. An exile, but uh, Torji stepping up and he looked frustrated in the previous round. I think he said it was a bloody joke. But uh, <laughs> we got the final round here as we see Mac 10s and a couple, or just one AK actually. Four rounds is actually, it's, it could be done, right? It's serviceable, bro. Oh, Molotov oh, down as damage. well. <laughs> Trying to run through, but Jim Pat's on the other side. He will get hunted. That's a nice kill for Axile. Well done. Make sure he can't escape that one. They don't have a lot to work with on that T side, but at least they get the bomb plant to try and do something here in the last round of the half. And Axile is going to go down. Boom, it sprayed through. Sue, get that one. Perfecto on his own. He can't even get out of the smoke. It's a fifth round for Mouse. It absolutely is, Anders. It was looking like they were down and out. 7-1 deficit, but Mouse are back on their feet. It's 7-5 and a half as they try and book themselves a place in the semifinals. This message is brought to you by Blast. London, the jewel of England. At Blast, we're bringing a distinctly London feel to Counter-Strike. The sights. The sounds. Bingo, bango, bongo, bish, bash, bosh. And the pageantry. Nah.
give me one. 20 yeah. seconds. Yeah. Return to the I'm not shooting. Out there. Both sides. I'll flash him on side. Do it, do it. Flash him on close door now. Boom. Don't. Man, he's full fetching. Nice! Nice, man! Nice, nice cock, come here! Nice, 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 bro. Nice, nice Jimmy, man. Yeah. Jimmy, you see the 5 7, <laughs> the winning 5 7, bro. Yeah, man. Yeah, why why are you doubting the five seven Anders? Why do you, why are you a hater? I feel like I'm the I'm the five seven hipster. I feel like I've been I've been here all along. I was using the five seven to one point six, you know. Just, oh god. I'm claiming that. Myself. May the Lord have mercy on your soul. Welcome back to the quarterfinals, ladies and gentlemen. We've got a this one's starting to heat up, actually. It's a 7-5 scoreline as Cloud9 switch over to the CT forces. It ain't slowing down, though. You'd think they're on the God. T side here as they're rushing down the B ramp, and it's going to be the first frag. Prolan dropped again. And Torji, nice reply with that P250. Rounds that back on. Sick, but now he's about to walk into an entire army. The bomb is on the other side. The bomb's been planted. Torshi, if you stay alive, you're gonna be a huge thorn in their side here. He's trying to escape with the smoke, giggling as he runs away. The bomb is planted at the A bomb site. It's a disaster for Cloud9. They can't spend time on this. Yeah, they're gonna kill him right now, because they need to run all the way across the map. Can this even be done, Henry? Could they even get there? If they get every kill as soon as they arrive, then yes. Boomich is there to cause some chaos, but it's uh, lovely work. You're right. He might not have got many kills, but he did certainly slow them down. The bomb is ticking at some pace and no kits are available. They're finding those frags, but they don't have time to check every nook and cranny of the bomb site here. They'd have to be defusing right here, right now, and find the kill. Someone needs to settle that defuse, and there it is. It's on. They could actually still do this, Anders. And I think they have. No way. No way. They didn't run across the entire map to try and get oh! the other one. 0.01 seconds. Did you see that? <laughs> no way. Oh my goodness. I don't think I've seen that before. It literally said 0 0.01. A hundredth of a second. Oh God. There's no way. So yeah. He did enough there. We need the data nerds to get on it. Like, they can check the server logs to figure out okay. exactly how much time. You're right, because, like, they get the cues in game, right? They get yep. the in game music uh, when it's possible. So, presumably, they wouldn't stick it unless they thought there was a real uh, fighting chance there. This is exactly what they had to do to sprint, get on the bomb, and just hope they could find the frags. Everything was going so well. And as I was going to say, there's a chance they, they force by here, but they go with a more conservative approach. And we've got a Zeus for Boomage. You're probably being towards that cave, I'd imagine, but. Yeah, we're seeing more of these slightly deeper Molotovs being deployed these days. The now you just sit in that tight corner, but oh, here comes the Zeus. He's going to get it. You yes. know he's going to get it. Brolan's been going down the start of every round, and this would just be a thorn in his side. I've seen so many Zeus kills from this position in CS2, and it's been upgraded. Like, the animation's way better. The sound is much worse, unfortunately. Oh, oh Jesus. Well, okay, Brolan saved. He doesn't have to live with the shame of the Zeus. All right, round's done. Yeah, but if you go to Blaster TV, you can vote for uh, for a player you'd like to see in the show match. And I think there's some highs is is winning for now. I I can't really blame everyone. Like you said, he was one of your favorite players to watch. So he um, must be happy. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think he is my favorite. Like he he's Damn. The, the, the Spanish device they're calling him. The Spanish device. Yeah. What a sick. What a what an honorable title to have. Yeah. So. Looking for some exits here. They're in position to get a couple, to be honest with you, but uh, it doesn't look like they'll be converted. Maybe one, as Brolan is low. Yep, he'll give it up. Wanted to, it's fine. He wanted to farm some cash with the Mac 10. Forgey should make light work of him. No one goes down to the bomb blast, which can be an issue on Ancient. It's uh, ridiculous how far away you have to be from the C4, but uh, so far, so good. It's been touch and go for Mouse there. They were down uh, seven to one, Anders. So the fact they brought it right back. It's been even keel. It's impressive. They're looking for that 2-0 here to knock Cloud9 out of the tournament, out of the quarterfinals, and make their way forward. Tied up you know, on this second map here. Cloud9 at such a hot start for them at the beginning of the second map. It really looked like they were going to get the revenge that I'm sure they were dreaming of from the humiliation that was happening on Mirage. But now it's all up in the air. Anyone can win this at the moment. Fight in the middle is broken out. Exertion, he was good on the CT side. Oh and pretty good opening it up on the T side as well. Torshi beating the smoke and the round is done. The bomb is far away, but they've got the bomb side. What are they supposed to do here? Two versus four. I don't know. <laughs> Hold on a second. There's always a chance. When there's a will, there's a way. Perfecto, when he's alive in his scenario, Anders, you've got to give him a, an opportunity to see what's available because if he gets his kill cleanly, there we go. Oh. Boomage finds it. Okay. The round is back on. They haven't planted yet. Sure, it's looking unlikely. But they do have utility available to them. They're not completely removed. 
Torji spots out, perfected. That Don't might be it at this point. Yeah, I think we are just going to be saving the two weapons. But nice work to at least get one kill in the scenario. But that's going to be it for them. But Mouse taking the lead, like I said, 7-1 deficit. And now Cloud9 have given up the advantage to Mouse. They go 8-7. and seven. Uh, Just to bear in mind as well, this quarterfinal, the winner will be playing FaZe on uh, Saturday in the semis. Which is looking likely to be Mouse right now, but uh, this one's still wide open. Well, that could be quite exciting, given uh, who just moved to, to their oh, phase roster. Yes, indeed. <laughs> they get a little bit of drama going on there. Actually, probably is quite significant in, in the sense that, you know, I mean, it's possible that Frozen's going to be able to, uh, to you know, sort of have a bit of a conversation about what they like to, old teammates like to do, you know, what are they thinking I mean, about? yeah, they haven't had a ton of time to, like, rejig everything, have yeah. they? Yeah. Um, this is kind of plug and play with Brolan right now. Uh, you can see I, it, it's kind of evident this series. Like, sure, they've, they've been playing very well, but he, he is often the, the player to go down first. Hasn't really had a moment. It's like, wow, Brolan's back. He's just he's just doing enough right now. Yeah. You know? Which, again, is fine for the minute, but you want to see much more out of him in the future. Boomich hoping for a headshot there, but not going to be allowed. They obviously saved the two and force on the previous round, so... I don't mind that they're a little bit aggressive, trying to look for those opening kills, just to do, do something, really. Yeah, that Swing. boost is going to be very obvious. Oh, that's... Torsi's looking sharp. He is. He missed some shots with the AWP, but with the, with the rifle, man. On point with it. See your axe out. I had no idea that Zershin had donuts under his remits as they find a very clean round here. It was the eco. They had two saved M4s, and you think... They'd find a couple of kills with that setup, but no, absolutely not. Battered and bruised as they try and defend the A bomb site. Some damage inflicted, sure, but no kills found. Hobbit, he's sticking around. It's a promising position. You'd think they pick this together. Shui often taking matters into his own hands, and rightly so, as he keeps it clean, finds Hobbit, and uh, indeed continues to lead the way, lead the charge. As Mouse are getting closer and closer to that 2 0 scoreline. All started here. What a shot. An absolute slobber knocker. Boomich can't believe it. And uh, Exertion giving a bit of a freebie here from Donut as well. Nice round. Good A split. Tactical timeout. Groove being brought in. Trying to pick up the pieces here. The elation of the 7 1 has completely diminished now. You can see the body language has shifted. No more smiles here. They can feel another tournament slipping out of their grasps. Which, honestly, I'm a bit surprised. I think we said at the beginning, I certainly would have said Cloud9 looked like they were going to be the favorites going into this one. They, I oh, just they think they've been well. playing really well all throughout, even if, uh, even if you know, maybe they haven't obviously won any tournaments yet. But still, just the idea that they are, uh, you they're know, just, competitive just, early on. They just look better. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, I don't think that's good enough. If you, are, if, you, if you ask me, no one is. But everyone was saying <laughs> this is the best lineup on paper when, ever when Shiro was in it. They, they've done really like they've won a single well, tournament in Dallas, right? That, that was it. Yeah. Yeah, I, th I mean, I definitely agree. Like, they, they should have been doing better. But um, yeah, the improvement has been exciting to follow. Oh, Just didn't expect well, for Mouse to be the ones to stop them, but they are. This Three kills to begin with. An aggressive attempt from Cloud9 to take control outside of the B-bomb site. And it is shut down. Axile and Perfecto are left here. And there's not much they could do. Even even running away right now seems to be a difficult uh, maneuver. Axile trapped in that corner. More smokes thrown just to try and get rid of Toshi. Looked like he wanted to try and knife him inside of here. But he's going to go find him with the AK instead. The thing is about this sort of round is this is, this is what Cloud9 are known to do now in these gun rounds. So the analyst pointed out that very maneuver multiple times. Like they're going to be pushing those B lanes. Like that's what Boomich likes to do. It's kind of similar to what he does in Inferno, I suppose. But hold on a second. Perfecto. He's going to win this round, but maybe he can keep things interesting if he saves the AWP. Uh, but no, it is going to be brought A nice shot to close things out there. And a rough round for Cloud9. Through the kitchen sink towards the B lanes. But nothing in return. And Shiri, like I said, is ready and waiting. Uh, the analysts are calling this maneuver out. You, you can rest assured that Mouse are aware of this possibility as well. Yeah. And uh, it's going to be brought out. That's a really important kill. There'll be no AWP saved here as uh, it's starting to get out of control. I think if Mouse are on fire. Yeah, five rounds in a row. Ten to seven and a week by. Uh, they need a bit of a miracle here. These rounds can work, but 
It's unlikely. Fast pacing in towards middle. No utility received, suggesting no one's here, Andy. So they can actually maybe take an educated guess and walk through that red room smoke. Protecting presence towards the cave. Molotov is actually pretty nice. Oh, it's close. It's uncomfortable on both sides here. I'm unsure who will be coming out on top. But Brolan tucking himself in. Good for the double kill here. That's probably his best sequence thus far. And it's an important round. Like These rounds can be dangerous. Up against SMGs and scouts. Yeah. He secures that B bomb site, no problem whatsoever. Takes damage on route, but that's <laughs> bomb site wide open. And Did another 100 damage. Out. Yeah, I just saw that. That's kind of nuts. Here we go again. Another nade. This time, not as successful, but yeah, you're right. Not to be underestimated. It's important that Roland got those two kills. Yep. They, they can be tricky rounds. An assertive play by him. Uh, someone who's having a uh, rough performance might not want to take those sort of risks, like you're alone, but using the information, checking the radar, and you could see the CTs were occupied elsewhere. He gets some good space there, gets a nice double kill, and yeah, that's that's the round, an important one. Six in a row here. Bear in mind, it was like that 7-1 star, but it, more importantly, the 4-0. Um, the rounds, like, arguably should have been going in favor of Mouse. I think they've looked better most of the time. Like, this time, the clutch is just going in favor of Cloud9, but certainly not in the second half. Speaking of, uh, speaking of Brolin, go what, what do we do to fix the Swedish scene, Henry? I know you've had, you've kept the secret for a while. Like, what's your... I'm just solution? some good Swedish players out there. Like, North is there probably are. my favorite, right? I think but the scene he, as a whole I think a he mess. could be a world-class player in the future. Um, he arguably already is. But, um, yeah, I, I don't think, I don't think we'll see many, um, national-based teams anymore. I just don't think it's viable. The talent pool is too small. The competition's too fierce. Uh, these international teams are leading the way in the top 10. Um, okay, so but now with Heroic stepping down as well, the, with the rumors that are flying around, they're going international. So which regional teams, or national teams, I should say, will you have left? You have Astralis, right? That, that's it. That's it. That is it. The, the sole standing one. French scene is dead. Swedish scene is dead. Maybe British the scene, Brazilian Maybe rebuilding. We don't know about the British scene. No one can confirm or deny. Maybe it's coming back. Yeah, where's Thomas going? He's, uh, I think he's, he was like... Took a break. No, I think he's gone back to into the breach. I think I saw he's back in. He's back out. I think he's just standing in. Okay. Not sure, but uh, Thomas, you're watching. Love you. Anyway. Yeah, he uh, is another high-riz player that we really oh, enjoy. Absolutely. One of the masters. Here we go. We are in the middle, and it's uh, it's building to a real lead here for Mouse. The two rounds away from winning the game, winning the quarterfinals. Yeah, it hasn't really felt like the quarterfinals. No. This would be like the, the way they're getting wrecked right now. Oh my god, Torshi. <laughs> Combative AWP to say the, the very bomb. least. It's so far away, but they have the bomb side again. If they smoke CDs for now, like it's done, the round can't really be recovered. But Molotov will have to do for now. There's no smoke available. It's not a lock-in right now. Nice Molotovs, though, will give them some space towards the bomb site itself. Flashbang comes in and Boomage actually fighting back. 4G, uh, he can't find a shot towards CT spawn. And actually, this one's up for debate. Like, they're so far removed from each other. I think they might have to reassess their options. And he's hoping to pull everyone over to this side of the map. But as it's got quieter, looks like Cloud9 might have an advantage, but not for long. Torji, a hat trick has been found. A demon. Yeah, he's just fired up, isn't he? 16 and 9. He didn't know that Boomage was up close until Boomage made a step. And as soon as he knew, you could just tell his There's mental adjusted. He's like, okay, I'm ready. We've been waiting for that smoke for about 15 minutes, but it finally gets delivered. And you can see the AI prediction. We are going to listen to our machine overlords here, Anders. It looks like they they think this one's it locked in. I'm not so sure, but... Yeah, I was going to say Perfecto with the orb. He's close yeah. by, but... You know, maybe the machine does know best. It doesn't look like he's going to go for it. So it we've been be outdone once again here. Uh, right? It's always right. Just replace me. <laughs> Just build the, 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 AI the voice yeah. model and give him a headset. Let's see how he handles himself there. <laughs> Get the Henry G voice board out. Like I said, I think that's going to be the future one day. Just, instead of actually having to commentate the events, we just license out our voice, and they just they just let it run for a yeah. group stage or something online. I can see that happening. Yeah, we're not far off. Like I don't. I think within three years, it would be like okay, sure, we can tell it's not perfect, but it does the job for these smaller games. Maybe and we can go jet skiing instead. Yeah. <laughs> I, I I might give. I saw the boys went jet skiing this morning. Uh, the other 
commentators and stuff like that and they went to the same place same jet skis and i'm sure <laughs> they weren't going as hard as i was and they said to me oh would you like to come they went super early this morning i was like i don't think i'd be welcomed back i think they would have probably banned me from the establishment <laughs> they were so mad it's one of those situations i was like the vibes are so good they were loving me we were kind of high-fiving before and like saying oh you have a great time don't worry about the rules you got this so you seem like you know what you're doing and then they just hated me when i came back like they couldn't believe i'd scratch their precious machine but uh that is funny. I, I hope still, those guys had a good time with no incidents, of course. Yeah, hopefully, if, if people keep working at jet skis, maybe there's going to be a, you know a, just a, a blast wide ban at some point. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Sorry, you're affiliated with Henry G at all. Uh, <laughs> right, happen. here we go. Possibly the last round, ladies and gents. Five in a row from Cloud Nine. They, they Where have they really... gone? They've disappeared. I don't know, bro. This is. They stopped After... playing on this map. It was. After the 13 1, we're like, okay, it's whatever. That scoreline, it happens. They lost a lot of clutches, but you were 7 1 up here. And if, is that, that's, okay, that's 12 rounds in a row. They're yeah. 7 1 up. There was All mouse. rounds in a row, sorry. Yeah, the, yeah, but you're right. Like, mouse have just run it back in the most disgusting fashion. It's rolling to get the kill. A swing from exertion. And you want to get the spray down on Axile as well. He will fall, but things are still looking good. Bit of a wall bang coming out here with the USP. Perfecto. Hoping to get that one, but he's not going to be quite able to. Oh, the They're on the bomb side again. Wide this has happened a couple of times before where they get the bomb side. They got a bomb with them, but this is almost over already. A shot from Jim Fats taken down Hobbit, and they can feel this slipping out of their hands. The quarterfinals diminishing for Cloud9. Perfecto not checking. He's going to get it. No, don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. Yeah, he's going okay, for it. it. Oh, he's yep, slow it, it. as well. <laughs> it is done, Henry. Oh, and with humiliation oh, on top. God. Oh, that's. Uh... Rubbing salt in the wounds there. It's done, ladies and gentlemen. The semi finalist. We'll be playing against the phase. It's going to be Mouse tomorrow. Um, what a game. What a performance. What a recovery. 7 1 down and the reverse sweep to 13 7. Mouse have done it. Axel, good luck, my friend. We'll give you a chance here, I suppose. He's got the kip. Maybe there's something to be said, but what a recovery, what a performance. Even after losing Frozen, this team are looking deadly across the board. Torji with an MVP-style performance there, absolutely epic. Cloud9 dropping off the edge of a cliff, suffering a 13-1 deficit, and then they were up 7-1, and they lose 13-7. That is just not good enough. We'll see Mouse in the semi-finals tomorrow. Yeah, a thoroughly well-deserved spot in the semi-finals from Mouse because after a first half where Cloud9 arguably looked a little bit more awake, uh, Mouse swiftly put them straight back to sleep. We're talking a 7-1 advantage for Cloud9 to start this one off. 12 rounds on the trot from Mouse. That was pure domination, Maui. And a flawless T side at that. The preparation for Mouse in this game caught me by surprise. They clearly knew how Cloud9 wanted to play this map. They knew it was coming in the veto, and you could see on some of their rounds that the writing was on the wall. They were just so ready for every kind of play that Cloud9 wanted to throw at them. And so when it comes to this game, Cloud9 surely had a great start. The individuals were popping off. It looked, I, look, I was ready to actually go to map three in yeah. some ways, up 7-1, but no, by the end of it, the game plan, what they stuck to, what they they, what they actually had worked on in the meantime, Psycho and Shuhei, we see the brains working together once again. Yeah, I agree with you. I think the, the ability to handle the aggression that was coming out of Cloud9 was so key for Mouse. They were always ready. They were very patient with when they had to fight, what kind of utility did they have to let go through, when they would actually fight as well. You have to, I, I would like to give a mention to Exertion as well, because I don't think his numbers are too much up there, but he had a couple of very ungrateful situations where he was fighting out mid and he was capable of trading more than one for one while CTs are coming his way and these kills are worth their way of gold. So Mao's very much outclassing Cloud9 and the look of dejection we're seeing, I, I can understand, like, it, it wasn't outclassing. Yeah, 100%. Loads of different looks from Mao's throughout the duration of this series, but there was one particular moment where they were just hella fast, Maui. Let's go into round 17, because uh, this was obviously one of the plethora of great T-side looks coming out from Mao's. Right, we're going to see in this round, I was talking about the preparation, we're talking about what it is in terms of counters. This Cloud9 looked like they changed up their formula quite a bit from the last tournament that they played at, and this is one of those aggressive plays that I was talking about that that worked so well earlier in this event, but Mao's knew Correct. exactly what was coming. Exertion, Torzi, everybody chiming in exactly when they were supposed mm. to, swinging off the contact of their other teammates, dodging the flashes outright. All of that stuff, when you're Cloud9 there, when you run that aggressive CT play, you are taking a risk, but it's a calculated risk. You, you ironed out that play so many times, it worked in the last match that you played, and yet they were stuffed on it. I, I do wonder to what extent the fact that Mao's lost to G2 to a similar playstyle kind of 
it's kind of cemented the fate of Cloud9 right here. Because yeah. if you're Mouse, the way you're looking at that G2 game on Enchant is, okay, how do we have to deal with this? Like, this aggression is going to come our way again. Cloud9 like to do it. We put it as a condition before the beginning of the game, and they were 100% ready for it. They knew how to react. Probably the comes on a lower level, because everything is kind of planned out. Shout out Torzi, not just for the AWPing, for mostly the rifling uh, yeah. in this map. He was on fire. Torzi's rifling in this series was fantastic. It was uh, really, really such a, a pleasure to watch. I wish I wish we could have highlighted some more offset. I mean, he did have a couple a few top times. rounds, but like his rifling is what really caught me off guard. He was destroying people. The, this this shot right here is so quick. Like Ooh. that's really hard in CS2 to do. Okay, the, the peaks are very strong, and yet he was able to lock down angles with the rifle. He was getting the better of people because of his mobility when he was on the rifle, and of course he did chime in with the op. I'm not gonna say it was all rifle. No, you're right. And I just wanted to mention that he he. Was was very much involved in a few first rounds that Maus won. And I think it was very important to stop Clown9 in their tracks. He put the AWP a couple of times on the A side on display. He could play behind the bomb side, rather the bomb box, being ready to peek onto Donut when he had to, aim in when he had to. And these are not that comfortable a position. So shout out to Torji, a strong map for him. Yeah, and great kind of uh, re-cementing kind of Maus in my head, because I, you know what? If I'm fully going to put myself on the table and say, I was expecting Maus to come in here with the loss of Frozen. I was expecting them to be walking wounded. And oh. the mental force attitude here looked so good for Maus. Uh, Maui, you feel free to step in and tell me I'm wrong. I think both of us had C9 win this series. I thought C9 At the beginning win. of the day. Yeah. Yeah. I had C9 winning this series, and I didn't even think it would be that close. So maybe I was blinded by a couple of the very tight games at C9 and against the likes of Vitality, where like all of the members are kicking off and Boomich is having a kind of good game. Maybe I was just completely blindsided, but I had no idea that Maus would actually destroy them this way. None. Would you echo that same thought, Maui? I mean, I didn't think that Maus would be able to keep up their mid-rounding as mm. well as they have. I think that's another thing. They didn't really have to go to too many mid-rounds, say, on Ancient, but at the other in the other series they played at this tournament, I really have liked just the cohesion is still there for this roster. Yes. And when they need to actually just make a quick, quick decision of where they want to go next, they still have all of those protocols drilled. Yeah, a great performance coming out of Maus, which nets them their third playoffs appearance in CS2. So let's get a few winning words courtesy of Shui. Mouse have made it to an arena with a stand-in and they dominated in style. Shuhei, I want to start by looking at this Mirage. You must have been gunning for the 13-0 because this looked crazy. What the hell happened? Because it seems like you made them run out of ideas really quick and they were just kind of starting to rush you at the end with no real game plan. I mean, I really wanted to finish it 13-0. <laughs> Unfortunately, last round on CD side, uh, we lost the clutch. Uh, they had a 5v3 advantage, but still we could have won the 1v1 clutch. Overall, Mirage, I think it's a map that we struggled on at the beginning of CS2, um, but we worked on a lot of it and we feel really comfortable on it now. So that's good to see from the team's perspective and the captain is happy. Do you remember what you said to me though, after the vetoes had gone down? You were saying like, oh, you think they, they might've been a bit bamboozled by the veto and what, what, explain it to me, what happened? Yeah, so basically um, we picked Mirage and they picked T-side mm -hmm. uh, to start on. And I think they may be expected to, that they will pick Mirage and that's why they prepared to start T-side and uh, that's what happened there. What do you think they thought you were picking? Uh, I'm not sure actually, <laughs> that's that a good question, you never know. You never know, but this was a solid fight and even going into the, the second half, right? Okay, Cloud9 are in the lead, but we're thinking, okay, there's going to be a bit more battle in there. What did you say to the team at this point? Uh, on Ancient? Yeah. Uh, on Ancient, I mean, we, it was like a slow start for us again. Mm -hmm. It's something that we are used to in a, <laughs> in a way. Uh, we need to fix that for sure. Uh, but we knew that we have a lot of good stuff on T-side and we were just waiting for that to come up. Uh, on CD-side, we just made sure to get as most rounds as possible. Uh, and on T-side, we just felt really comfortable in control of the game since round one, so yeah. And I've got to look at this, the fact that IGLs right now, there's a big talk around them having more impact. You were always someone who wasn't like a low impact IGL, but are you feeling the benefit of CS2 and being able to take some more risks to, to peak a bit more to fight in it? Yeah, for sure. It's definitely a fresh game and uh, it's nice that uh, I'm able to keep up my performance. Also, I went back to my really old mouse, so, so that's giving me a lot of confidence and a lot of good memories. So I feel really good right now and I'm happy that I can help the team in, in statistics as well.
Yeah, great performance coming out of Miles and Shue obviously leading the charge. Um, incredible in the fragging department as well during this series. It was a testament to kind of how well drilled Miles are as a team, where on the flip side, um, Cloud9 looking anything but that, Matthew. Yeah, I think it's time for us to do a postmortem on this Cloud9 situation as well. Um, I was never a fan of the whole, we won't have an AWP and let's make it work anyway. But I thought that on short term, there was a window through which they could surprise people because mm -hmm. they would kind of divert from the very traditional Counter-Strike. I could Imagine a world where with Electronic uh, being on fire, with Axel playing a little bit better, with the space that Boomich was creating, maybe this could work. I think now that window has closed. I think teams have had enough time to prepare for some of the shenanigans that Cloud9 can put forth, and they don't have the basis that all teams need to compete at a very, very, very high level. So as, as frustrated as I am about it, I think this is it. This is it for the roster. There's a glass ceiling. I don't see any more success for that, and I really hope we get a, a bit of a change moving into 2024. And I think it was kind of, you know, a lesson that needed to be learned because we were referring back to it just yesterday, Maui, obviously Boomage saying coming out of, um, of Dubai, the event just preceding this, um, he doesn't feel like, you know, them not having a stable orb is really an issue. Everything's good now, he said. I'm glad that they've learned that actually oh, that's definitely that's, not the case. No, that's forward. definitely not the case. Their T sides have actually been fine, generally speaking. This Mirage was an aberration in my eyes of how yeah. bad it went for them, but... I will say that they've changed a couple of things that seem to have not really benefited all of their players. We see Electronic at the bottom of the scoreboard there. It seems like now his role has slightly shifted on Ancient, mm. and he's now kind of lurking a little bit more towards B. Other tournaments, I remember he was playing towards mid. He was much more in the action, in the flow of things. And it feels like when Electronic has to be kind of more of a mid, late round player, that's just not his forte. In one of those five kills, it's just when he was sent on entry. A couple of those were just entry routes. So you want to see him just mm. be explosive in the early round, be a space taker, and it feels like there's kind of just jumble of who's playing what position, whether that has to do with the op or whether that has to do with just matching people's skill sets. It's not finding the right success or even close to it. I know, he has to be activated. I think this is where Electronic had some of the most historical performances when he can actually get stuck into the action. It could be alone. It could be on, on Yard on Nuke, for example. If you've been watching Counter-Strike for a while, we've seen some of these games. But I don't really think he relies on patience and waiting for the last 30 seconds to strike. It's someone that needs to create, that needs to be involved in the trading as well. And whatever they try to put forth on, on Ancient didn't work out. Yeah, and sadly, for Cloud9. That does mark the end of the line here in Abu Dhabi and for 2023 at that. So let's get a few closing thoughts courtesy of Groove. Cloud9 won't be making it any further here at the World Finals. And Groove, I guess I just want to start off with we can have losses, we can have hard losses, but a team like you have, we definitely expect to be able to fight better on Mirage. So can you explain to me from your side what you felt went wrong? So uh, we expected this peak from Mouse Sports, but anyway, we played for 20 percent or something like that sometimes you have such games in the early morning but it wasn't the early no. game it wasn't so it's totally our fault uh, we did everything wrong we made a lot of mistakes uh, we just tried to play fast that is why we didn't hear each other so mm -hmm. it was like snowball uh, from my view and what did you say to them going into the second map, like during the break? Was this trying to wake them back up? Because you started so strong on Ancient, at least. Yes, uh, we did, and uh, we were pretty, you know, we just were pretty confident even on the first map. But anyway, uh, we played uh, with a lot of mistakes. On the second map, uh, everything was pretty good. Uh, at T side, uh, we know that uh, sometimes we have uh, problems on CD side and in CS2. Uh, it's easy to play on T side. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but to be honest, I don't know uh, what's happened uh, when we didn't win any rounds. So, yeah. yeah. And it, it got rough from there. I've got to just finally ask the fact that we, we talked so much around you guys not having an AWPA. Now it's the end of the season. Is this where you either try find an AWPA? Is this where you put someone else to have an AWPA role consistently? Because it doesn't make sense to, to us right when we're looking at it of just not having this and having it swap around. So what do you want? So we're trying to play uh, without Sniper. Uh, we will continue. Let's see how it will looks like at this tournament. Uh, uh, we have one big problem because we came uh, to the event in uh, in Dubai. Yeah. That is why we didn't practice for, I guess, 10 or 11 days in a row. Because in Emirates, uh, you can play face it, you can play any mix, you can play prox. Maybe uh, this reason 
uh, effect to our results okay. because 10 days in a row it's a lot yeah, yeah. and in the future we'll keep it in mind but now uh, we have what we have and yeah we know that uh, to play without main AWP it's a problem but anyway you still can be on the top level but here we even didn't show our really level of uh, the game yeah yeah, Groove understandably feeling dejected after being eliminated from the World Finals. Um, I don't love to hear that he's happy with, mm -hmm. you know, looking forward into the future, into the next year without having an opera on the squad. I mean, listen, uh, the major is, is right around the corner. I, I could understand that you would think twice before making such profound changes. Also, something I just wanted to note as well, he is correct when he says it's not the only reason we lost here. That, that's a yeah. fact. It's not just because there isn't an all. But the problem is, while they are spending time and effort and kind of brain power on how to fix some of these structures and finding solutions, they're also kind of losing track of the meta and like the new utilities being put forth in this moment where players are being shifted around in roles. You are losing working time while working on problems that is already solved for most teams. You are spending that time kind of fixing that situation. And the rest is, is working on their own kind of strike. They're coming up with their own so this is where I feel like they are a little bit behind and, and I don't really know how they're going to bridge that gap. I, I, I can't see it happening. It's the way that they've played at this tournament for their CT sides especially, it just looks so desperate. They have to push early on. They have to get early map control. They have to try to find an opening pick because they don't have a reliable opera to find opening picks for them. It's such a simple solution as just picking up an opera. Maybe sure, like it's hard on the market to pick or find the right person for the job right now, but you're changing your style to be so much more easily countered, which is what Mao showed us today is completely possible. If you're going to throw all these aggressive plays on CT side to mitigate the fact that you don't have an op presence, well, the, the teams are just going to hold back a little bit and just go for the counter plays every single time. Yeah, and of course, sadly for Cloud9, that does mark the end of the road here in Abu Dhabi. Conversely, we're going to be seeing Mouse progressing on towards the semifinals. And one more spot up for grabs today. That will either fall to the hands of Na'Vi or the organization that lifted the trophy this time last year. It's G2 versus Na'Vi going down after this.
Our first quarterfinal going down at lightning fast speed and now one more opportunity to make it towards the playoffs. That will either fall to the hands of Na'Vi or G2. G2 obviously looking or hoping to replicate what went down this time last year, but it's been a story of adapting and overcoming coming into CS2. For Na'Vi, um, it's been a bit of a tumultuous time for them to be absorbing because obviously with the departure of Simple for the time being, Alexi has got to be working with some different tools in his arsenal. So of course, we welcome Jacob down here here on the show floor. You got up to some uh, antics this morning, I hear, in Abu Dhabi? Yeah, I was uh, playing my best version of Jet Pimp, you know, uh, cruising around on the on the water and having a good time with the Conor Lars. The well-known Jet Pimp. Jet Pimp. Yep, my Jet Pimp one time. Oh, that too. Uh, moving on, uh, Na'Vi, let's talk about them. We've obviously been covering their games down in uh, the Group A side of things. Temperature check so far. Where are you placing Na'Vi at the moment? Navi right now feel like a team that is still trying to find their identity, despite the fact that they are the longest standing roster that entered this tournament, which is a bit concerning because I will say that if I'm looking at the pieces here for Navi, I would say that actually in terms of firepower and individuals, they're probably on the more underpowered side, which is where usually Alexi B does some of his best work. When he works with rosters that don't necessarily have all of the superstar potential or power, then usually he can work his micro, work his macro to try to make them greater than the sum of their parts but I don't think he's seeing the same vision that Blade has for the team just yet. I agree. You know, I'm a bit lukewarm when it comes to, to Na'Vi. I, I see the team as a, a team that lacks that clear star, you know, lacks that player that can step up, like the symbol used to be, of course, for Na'Vi, or like the Nico is in G2 and the opponents today. If you don't have that star player, you, you kind of strive to be a, a heroic ISK team, right? You have a very homogenous team where everyone can step up at the same time, and you have this fantastic synergy in between the players. I don't see that happening right now within Na'Vi, right? So you have a team with decent players, good players, but you don't have that clear star player, and you also have a team with decent synergy, but not that perfection, you know? So so they're kind of in the middle water right now where we don't really know where to place them. I think we need to talk a little bit about Ime because obviously back at the Paris Major, he was the next best thing since sliced bread. Everybody was jumping on Ime saying, hey, who's going to be picking up this guy? How well do you think he's done so far, Jacob? In his entire time in Navi, not well enough. Let's be completely honest. He, he's been underperforming a little bit, been underwhelming. I expected more from Ime. I think he was doing fantastically well, obviously, at the Paris Major. But even leading into it, I think there's a certain amount of people out there who'd be like, yeah, he had one good event. That was it. He was doing fine in Gamer Legion for a long, long time on a losing team a team yeah. that wouldn't make it far in tournaments, a team that would struggle a lot. Now, coming into Navi, you know, the, the first period would simple on the lineup. Maybe he was feeling uncomfortable. We heard himself say that he wasn't as outspoken as he would have been. Then after Simple going out of the lineup, he felt he had a bit more space, he had a bit more voice within the team. He's slowly been getting better and better, but not to the level that we would like him to be at. He definitely looked pretty good back at ESL Pro League, back on CSGO, but when it comes to CS2, this is the first event where I've actually said to myself, wow, Ima looks like he could be a contributing member to a winning team, and that's really disappointing and concerning because actually going into this tournament, in terms of just CS2 rating overall, Alexi B had a higher rating <laughs> than Ima, and so that has changed because he's been doing so well at the World Finals, yeah. but it's taken until now for him to finally feel out the game. And just looking at kind of what Ime was initially having to come into, right, obviously as you mentioned, Simple was previously on the lineup with him, and I think that's where I was kind of scratching my head a little bit and going, okay, obviously you've got Simple who's just going to be dominating as we would expect mm -hmm. on the server, then you've got Bit who's kind of touted as a second star. I was initially kind of worried of like, how is Ime actually going to fit in with this so right now I feel like this surely this is his runway to be taking full advantage of maybe gaining a little bit more space right? I think that's a fair point to make if he's not making this one successful if he can't make this you know stint in Navi work out with, with the space he has and, and with the responsibility he's given then he'll not make it work anywhere else you know so I think Ima has said it himself as well a couple of times and I think we can see it on the server he's a comfort player he needs the players around him to give him confidence he needs to feel comfortable around the player he's playing with and I don't think he did that in the beginning of Navi it's starting to get better slowly but surely, but we're still not at the level where he's worth the money he was bought for, worth, you know, the expectations coming into it. And I would like to see more from him. Well, let's go ahead and check in with Ime ahead of this series, courtesy of James Banks. Yesterday, going up against Ents, it didn't look like Na'Vi were at their best, but it did at the beginning. So I want you to explain to me what went wrong and why it got the way it did. I mean, we started pretty confident, I think, on the first two maps. Because on the third map they started uh, with the lead, mm. but on the first two maps we started very confidently. Like on Anubis, we we basically ran them over. We we won everything, every duel, every clutch. We it goes uh, on our way, so it felt good. On Ancient again, we started 8-0 or 7-0. I don't remember, but we started very very good. Yep. And then now it is that this I didn't work how we expected. We did a, some mistakes as well. 
but it, it happens. Like uh, we knew that we are a bit stronger than them because yes, they have like uh, glaive rumors as well, and then uh, and then yeah, it just happened. They, they just our Chita didn't work. Their Chita has worked like like our Chita worked as well, and then they got the map as well. You say it just happened, but I'm sure Blade wasn't too happy with that. Was there a discussion you guys needed to have afterwards? Because if you were going up against a stronger team, it probably would have not looked so so good for you guys. I mean, that's true. It didn't look nice, but what can you do? You just play, you learn from mistakes, and then obviously, uh, like this is our second tournament with uh, with uh, Wonderful with Igor. So we cannot prepare like all of the maps. And then if, for example, Ancient, uh, we prepare it. But for example, like, like I said before, if something happens in, that not happen in official, it's going to be a bit random. And then if you don't click heads, then it's going to be something like that. Okay. Now, when it looks at you personally, I spoke to you last event as well when it's full finals, we're seeing you start to improve again. But I remember obviously the heights of the Paris Major. And I want to see for you personally, do you feel like you want to get back to that level? You're, you're working towards that? Or, or what is it with you right now? I mean, obviously I'm working towards that. Like, uh, I know myself that it was like, uh, like I saw a lot of people saying like over, over performance or something like this. I mean, they can say so. I will say probably it's a, it was a performance, but it doesn't come from anything, you know. It's, it that doesn't happen randomly. I still think like I can do even better than what I do now or in the last two, two tournaments. I'm still working on this. I'm still trying to do my best in this new environment, uh, play style. Uh, also, we have now Igor that uh, we, we have a new guy basically, and then we have to learn again and again new stuff, new new reactions. And I'm just trying my best to do whatever we can to win. You just touched upon this point, Jacob. I want to steal it. I want to hear more confidence coming out of Ime. I think, I think. No, dude, you can. I mean, it's cool that he thinks he can be a greater player. I, I know he can be. We saw that in, in CSGO. We saw that at the Major in Paris. So the potential for Ima is definitely there. We just haven't seen it yet. It was the same with Brolin yesterday in that HLTV interview. I, I still think I can be a great player. No, yeah. no, you can be a great player. You've shown it before. So go there and, and get it done. This whole thinking, you know, that's kind of cool, but it doesn't work. <laughs> Let's think about Alexi B for a minute. Uh, because yet again, he's going up against one of his former organizations. Obviously quite frequent for Alexi B because he's been kind of around the block in terms of some of these teams. quite a few. Yeah, he does have quite a few, but there's a, an interesting trend that you notice, Jacob, with the person that's always coming after him. Yeah, I mean, Alexi B, you see his team history right here. In a couple of moments, we're probably going to see Nexus and you can see the similarities. It always feels like Alexi B is getting, you know, kicked from a team or moving on from a team and the Nexus is coming in to replace him. Saw it in OG, saw it in NIP, sorry, saw it in, in G2 and, you know, Guess what? In, in a couple of a months, maybe a half year. <laughs> oh, you can have <laughs> The bold pred for okay, 2024. Sure, sure. Next to leading Navi. Why not? <laughs> I've been close before. I don't know if James Banks will be okay with that, but um, yeah. I, it's kind of a fun trend to point that out. I don't know if I actually right now, actually, Pimp. Who do you think is a better caller? Who do you think is a better caller? Alexi B 100%. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I don't think it's much surely. of a contest. No. So even though Nexus has been coming in after, I think Alexi B has, generally speaking, done more and risen those teams to greater heights than Nexus has. Yeah, because we just saw some of the numbers on that graph. Like, that's no joke. He got some of the yeah. teams, you know, not with even, you know, the most amazing cast around him up to a pretty reasonably high level, right? I mean, the, the, it started with that Ents roster where it was just like, what, what, who are these people other than Alu? And then all of a sudden it's like, wow, they're stars. I, X7 look good. Ariel look good. Sergey look good. He makes, he makes people on his team look better than they sometimes Times even are. Yeah, I would agree. Uh, I think the, the only stint that wasn't successful was G2. I think that's the one where you think, okay, you had all the tools, you had Nico, you had, yeah. you know, yeah. everything you needed in order to be a great team and he couldn't make that work. But again, it's, it's one off for me and I still think Alexi B is getting more criticism than, than sometimes he deserves. Yeah, let's round out the Navi conversation by touching upon Wonderful. Obviously, massive shoes to fill, completely different size and a completely different style than Wonderful would probably want to be wearing. How do you feel he's been fitting in so far, particularly, you know, with the context of it being in CS2? Wonderful to me has been growing tournament by tournament in such a positive fashion that I only can look forward fondly to what he's going to be able to accomplish into the upcoming year and maybe even at this tournament. Wonderful has such impressive mechanical ability, but the thing that I've always cited for a way that he could improve his game is just move a little bit more around the map, rotate more, yes. try to take over a round, try to get into the action as much as possible. And at this tournament, I'm starting to see him be a little bit more active. He's going for more clutches in the late round. He's 
actually trying to find where the next fight is. I feel like he's calling his own number in a way that I just haven't seen on previous teams or even previous tournaments. And so this is such a welcome sight for me. I agree. I think uh, I think Wonderful is playing better than we could expect for him coming into Navi. It's a, a big task to replace Symbol, a, a big team to come into. However, as you said, you know, a 1.28 rating for Wonderful is not the same as a 1.28 rating for Symbol. There's a little bit of a lack of impact sometimes where he's saving a lot, he's getting a lot of free kills. So as you said, be out there, be proactive, take charge of the game and see if you can dictate it a bit more with AWP. Okay, so Jacob, how is uh, Wonderful comparing to man like Manasi? On the other side of the side. Well, I think Manasi is everything wonderful would like to be at, at some point in his career. And it's it's fun to say because Manasi is, of course, still young. But this man right here, he's adopted so well into CS2. We spoke about it, right, coming into this game, that the Orbus would struggle. And oh, no, the Orb is not as great anymore. This kid doesn't care. He's grinding the game. He's playing the game. He's finding new ways of being impactful. And we saw it yesterday against Face Clan as well. Despite his rating being 1.18, which is good, I think he had way more impact than he showed in that regard. He's very good at putting himself into close quarter combats and actually win those tools. We saw some of the clutches on day one as well. I only have praise for this young guard and he's only gonna be better. Monacy is a person that will push the limits of not only the op, but the game. He's going to always be looking for that next little nerdy trick where mm. if someone else wants to just right click a nade into a smoke, Monacy has a way to throw that nade without damaging himself. He always has that little crevice that he can toss the nade into, the little lineup that makes it just 5% more efficient. And those numbers pay off in the course of a series. Sometimes that damage taken, sometimes that that better window you're going to get through the smoke, all of that stuff matters. So he maximizes his opportunities. And on top of that, it's impossible to ignore the fact that in terms of just putting Crosshair onto player, Monacy is the fastest one out there. Yeah, he's so fast, you sometimes blink and you miss it. But make sure you tune in for this one because James had a chance to catch up with Monacy ahead of this series. Monacy, I don't normally allow this, but you asked me to ask you about your dream team. So what's your dream team? What I asked you. Uh, <laughs> I mean, people usually are asking like uh, players about my dream team, but uh, I mean, if I would make maybe dream team, it would be, uh, my own language team, like, uh, oh, okay. yeah. So maybe it I would put Bit in my team, I would put uh, Boomuch, mm -hmm. I would put Electronic Perfecto and myself. Ooh, that would be very interesting. Okay, we'll have to wait and see if that can ever be a possibility. Now, you were telling me you're loving CS2, right? We've been seeing you grinding a lot in and out of the server. Why do you feel that you are not struggling as much as other AWPers, though? I mean, uh, usually I have also like some problems with the easy shots, I mean, in CS, <laughs> but like, it's just my thing, it's just because of people like white peaking and like, they actually like just white peaking you and it's sometimes it's tough to, to hit uh, normal shots in CS2 than it was in CSGO. Uh, and uh, I mean, like, Oprah's just getting used to it. Uh, maybe I got used to it by people like 85%, 80%, and uh, I hit some shots, but still, you know, like, it's a bit tough. And people usually like, they prefer to buy rifle than op, Oprah's, I mean. I'm talking about Oppers. Yeah. So they prefer to buy steel rifle sometimes as ST and as CT, but uh, it's also depending on the map. For example, on Mirage, like on CT, you have to buy Op. Uh, and like, for example, on Nuke, like a CT, you have to buy Op as well. So like, uh, depending on the map, on maps. Now we know you are the Orper, you're, you're really solid at it as well, but I want to see, do you feel like you sticking with the AWP and saying, okay, I want to just push and do this where some AWPers are choosing the rifle, is why we might see you have more success and maybe dominate this game really hard in the future? Uh, I mean, like, I also like a bit smart with it. I don't really like to buy AWP on every map. I try to, like, uh, balance it, for example, like, on uh, ancient on CT, I, pref I prefer to buy rifle and fight mid. Maybe not on, in all official games, but uh, I usually try to buy rifle and fight with the hunter on mid. Mm -hmm. uh, also, like for example, on nuke ST. I, before I was playing a lot, a lot with rifle, and I wanna still like do it, but uh, sometimes I'm buying op as well. So I'm trying to balance it up and buy and open rifle because, like, usually, I mean, before when I was playing in academy, I, I was second op, you know, and I like to I like to play with rifle, and uh, yeah, so like trying to balance. So I'm not like fully committed to the op. I'm still playing a lot with rifle, but sometimes you have to buy op for some specific round, you know, and some stuff. Round by round, map by map, and see how it goes. Now, today you're going up against Na'Vi. I want to see how much more confident you feel as a team today because of how well you played against FaZe yesterday. We are always confident and we have been always confident when we play official games. We, I don't think like we lack confidence or something. Or usually like we lack confidence because of individual game. Mm -hmm. Like for example, when we played this online CCT, for example, you know, like we just came from a, like kind of vacation, you know, and we started playing and we, we were lacking confidence because of our individual game. We didn't play really good. And, but here like in, in Abu Dhabi, we, 
uh, really confident. And uh, for example, as for me, I always feel feel uh, confident to play against Navi. Mm -hmm. I'm excited to play against Navi and Valera. So <laughs> I want to smash them. You like to smash on your friend? I mean, <laughs> on the server, maybe outside of the server, friends, but on the server, you need to show some good team play. You can keep your friends close, but your enemies closer, okay. my man, man. Team play. <laughs> That was such a hard-hitting interview until he ended it with a good team play. Everything else was fire, though. Yeah. yeah, we should just listen to the first portion of that yeah, interview. Exactly. That was crazy. Um, Anubis, Inferno, Nuke, if we do so need it. Does this make sense in your eyes in terms of maps? This is exactly how I thought it would go at the beginning, but I love that actually G2 flexed into the fact that they're kind of showing a seven-map pool, the fact they're playing Overpass, that it came as their second veto. But I think that, Pimp, this is very, very strong for G2. They looked fantastic on Anubis yesterday versus FaZe. Obviously, they didn't win, but Inferno's always been their home map, and Nuke is just, I, I think, they're very good at it too. Yeah, that new game against FaZe as well when Nico popped off, you know. Uh, if I'm looking at that video, I'm a G2 fan right now, I'd be very, very happy. It also does show the limitations of Navi. There was not anywhere else they could have gone with this video. I think they did mm. well in picking Anubis. That's their home map. But apart from that, I see all three maps slightly favored towards G2 to be completely honest. Should we talk about Nico for a hot second? Yeah. Because obviously people jumped the gun uh, during those online results. Rightfully. Yeah, <laughs> rightfully so. He was obviously one of the best rifles to ever touch the game. Um, how did he adapt in your eyes uh, versus FaZe? <laughs> yesterday in that game. The game he had against FaZe yesterday was the best performance we've seen Nico have in CS2, whether that being LAN or yes, online. Obviously, yes. he's only played Sydney and now this LAN, so there's not a big sample size, but it has been roaring to see him struggle so much. Even the first game at this event, he wasn't playing well at all. He was killing himself in Vertigo and, and just not having a good time, to be completely honest. However, the best to ever do it in CSGO with a rifle, if he can find some of that confidence again for this G2 lineup, then we have a very scary prospect at our hands. And I said it yesterday, I'll happily say it again. You know, in terms of watching Nico could play Counter-Strike, there's no one who's as aesthetically pleasing to witness the greatness he can show on the server, especially that new game was just hands down some of the best CS I've seen. One of the most culturally impactful riflers, oh, there we go. bar none. <laughs> <laughs> no, just so flashy in his play, and I think that he probably, he just had a lot, little bit of difficulty adjusting to CS2. The mechanics at the very beginning of the game felt a little bit, I would say, gummier. It just felt a little sticky sometimes, and I think that Nico has put in the effort necessary in order to now succeed at CS2, on top of the fact that actually the updates over time have just made rifling in general feel a little better. Yeah, for sure. I'm just weighing up these kind of two rosters now, going head to head. Uh, now we know the maps as well. Who do you think has the edge in this match, Maui? I would go as far to say this is a G2-2-0. I, I think that they are comprehensively the better team. I Even with kind of, we haven't really even talked about it, the woes of the Nexa or JKS thing. I still think that they're, in terms of class, just a level above of Navi right now. I would agree, you know, I would agree. The veto looks good for G2 as well. I think the only chance for Navi is to win Anubis, you know, and then, then see if you can steal one of the following two maps. However, I will also say that if Navi play the way they did yesterday and G2 do the same, then there's no way G2 won't win this game. I think they're gonna smack Navi out of the server, to be completely honest. Navi barely beating Ens, who's uh, effectively a dead team with all that yeah. stuff going on, and they came so, yes. so close losing. Whereas for G2, played some of the best Counter-Strike I've seen in CS2, almost taking down face playing well, so it shouldn't be a match, honestly. One really short point before we head into Anubis is the fact that Ima has actually really upped his level at this tournament on this map. His B side anchor hold and his B lurks have both been very effective in helping Navi win rounds that they otherwise had no business in. And one more, even shorter thing before we do dive into Anubis, uh, you guys can have your say over on Blast.tv for our show match, which will be going down before the grand Vertigo final on, on Sunday. Please ban Vertigo and please leave Anubis. You heard it here. If you like Vertigo us. Vertigo could be fun in a show match. Do, Maui. I think you should leave. Get off. Yeah. Yeah. Get off. Get off. Please, 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 please get off. Please get off, get off. Uh, and we're going to dive into Anubis, but not before a quick break. When we're back, Navi taking on a G2 final spot in the semifinals up for grabs.
Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome back. It's hey. Scrawny and Launderst. Not talking to you. Take you through the second half of the day. We're here in Abu Dhabi. The Counter Strike is flowing. The sun is not so shining. It is today. a little cloudy. A little cloudy. Which is almost more fun because it's never like that here. Right. Yes. Never like that. Previously, before yesterday, last episode, Nico sucked at CS2. I said it. I said it. We had no real map to point at that would indicate that he even had the potential to become the greatest rifler of CSGO history. That is the accolade we attribute to Nico coming into this new version of the game. But after yesterday on Nuke versus FaZe, I can say with certainty, the star is shining bright. He's back. One map, all it took to know that Nico can go God mode. Ooh, it's a good day. So can he do it back to back days? That's the big question. Can Navi show us that resilience that got them into the match versus Ents that moved them forward through this event? Well, they have to tap into that in the face of G2. Questions to be answered tonight on the road to the semifinals. That was a very early move for Wonderful. He got out of there already into the B site and uh, G2 narrowly missed the timing, but it, it works so well for them. It's wonderful is about to walk back into middle after they see there is no explode. And he's got a passive line. Wonderful. We're needing a lot. We're going to need a lot from him today. A couple missed shots and suddenly they're staring down the barrel of camera. Bit's going to use the pillar to block off line of sight, but he hears him coming. Ooh, nice headshot to drop Nico. Looks he's got the bomb. Looking for a heaven push, but you're right. Hooksy needs to get into the site itself. Oh, but he still takes Ema with him. And he's got teammates to work with, but the pressure's here from the CT, so not prioritizing the bomb plant. Looking to allow doing? for Alexi to put it down. They're so worried they're going to get swarmed. And honestly, the threat is real. Bomb can be picked back up as Nexa looks to lock in heaven. There's all three CTs confirmed. Now, just hit the headshots. JL, here's the call to action. Nexa's looking for a clutch already. He got three 1v2s yesterday. Well, put a fourth on the tally then. He's got 20 seconds to figure this one out. The challenge is given to him. And Wonderful peaks again, but doesn't full swing. Bomb's going to get grabbed. 15 on the clock. He has oh. to take the duel, and he's just not going to hit it. So it's Navi with the CT side of pistol. And Wonderful could have peeled back at that point. He was just over 10 seconds on the clock, but he wanted to take the fight. Works out well for him. Nice clutch here from Wonderful. I don't think Hooksy knew he had the bomb. I mean, the way he was playing this, first of all, he's nope. way out of position to get that bomb planted. Then he sticks around, doesn't fight, and look, bomb goes flying forward. I agree with you entirely. I think I think he just lost track of the bomb and didn't think it was Very, his responsibility. I'm like an IGL to make a mistake like that, but yeah. Oh, okay, they're excited. Yeah. Good. Yeah, good. very good. They should be, right? Good. 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 No easy feat to deny bomb plant versus G2. Anubis, of course, Navi's map pick. Would have had a good sample size of it, of course. Such a great game yesterday between G2 and FaZe. Mm -hmm. Here on Anubis, G2 leveled up a lot to be able to bring it as close as they did. But in the end, the Nico Masterclass was wasted, countered by the Rops Masterclass. Bits looking to make some money. Of course, you know, G2's shortcomings on Anubis was really in the face of Reigns, just pure entry fragging. And uh, Kerrigan's overtime impact. Oh my god. Right? See what they can put forward tonight. But for now, the Glocks get nothing. No bomb plant, no kill. All is good for Navi in the 2-0 start. Faye's got to be the most exciting overtime team in history. Even Boston, even though they didn't win. Right. Yes. Thank you for your service. <laughs> Entertainment. Name of the game. Looks lots of Pokemons on the desk. Yeah, Pokemon or two. What is that thing? A, a, balloon, a balloon bore? I think it's called a Bulbasaur. Oh, of course it is. So... Not to be confused with Ivysaur or Venusaur, of course. Both of them grass type. Yes. Eventually, you get into the grass poison subcategories. And at that point, you need to look out for fire type Pokemon because it's a hard counter. Yeah, like Chirpizard. How many years of Pokemon now? Like at least 20, right? 20, 25 years. I think it 
Probably They're running I out was... of ideas, man. They're running out of ideas over there. I see ice cream Pokemon, typewriter Pokemon. <laughs> oh, like, what the hell is going on? Chandelier Whoa. Pokemon. I was happy with people Pokemon like Machop. <laughs> yeah, sure, right. Yeah. Back in my day, there was just floating rocks with two arms. Where are my Geodudes at? Maui. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that's funny. But... I can't talk shit. I look like a bean sprout. There's a Pokemon for that, right? Yep. Molly's into middle. And there's no present. CT's leaning back. Ooh, Nico. Ouch. The fire spreads out and forces him down. He didn't want to drop, but he had to. Yeah, he didn't. Luckily, yeah, not but... for Navi, just playing passive here. Yeah, imagine Wonderful's just there to scoop it up. Scoop him up. He's going to walk into this one. Goes for the wide swing. Wonderful ready for the kill. That was wild. Did you swing like that? Hooksy's on a different tip right now. Well, Hooksy absolutely pieced up Maus in their opening game in Abu Dhabi. And Is that their whole attack? Because, you know, sort of a boring way to go out. Hooksy got really good as a caller towards the end of the game last night. Trying to keep up with face who are great at Anubis. They're going to just... Do it again. Again, eh? You, you need some more nades. Um, and again. Easy for Wonderful. Pressure from the other side, though. Lexi's got his back covered. We said we need a lot from Wonderful tonight. Nexa, good headshot, but no time here, unfortunately, for him. If he tries to get plant, Lexi's right here for it. And that is going to be an easy pickup for Wonderful. Four kills on the round. Op in the pocket. Looks good. What's the deal? If they have one person swing, why don't they just swing with two if they're going to dry swing and they, there's an off or something crazy like that? Space right there to potentially punish him, but uh, not even a, 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 a flashbang here. It's not the place you always find the off. It's like when we saw Twist Topic for Phase. He's the second off he'll play there sometimes. Yep. So maybe it's not the starting position G2 expected, but that was a very stringy attack. Certainly not ideal. Are the other ones actually Pokemon or no? No, the other ones are not. Oh, okay. I think one of them is just a rainbow. One's like a snail. Oh, it's a rainbow. Got a Bulbasaur, a chicken, and a something or other. What about Digimon? Did you play that? Didn't play Digimon. Nope. I was, uh... Just watch the show, right? I was... Nope, not even. Oh, okay. I was a Pokemon, Yu-Gi-Oh, Magic Monster the Rancher. Gathering. And then Magic the Gathering, all the way to university, like the coolest of cats. I mean, magic is cool, so I get it. There were just too many words on the cards. That's why I didn't play. Mm. Yeah, reading, huh? It's, it could be challenging for some. I didn't know how to play Pokemon when I was 11, so I used to play it like war. You know, okay. where you put one card, if it has a higher damage, just you just put it on top of the other. Yeah, sure. And the energy cards, we just throw them out. <laughs> <laughs> What's this stupid thing? <laughs> but Yu-Gi-Oh. Yeah. That's when I really, that's when I really... At my elementary school, Yu-Gi-Oh cards got banned. Because kids keep... Kids Pulling about in class. Them. They kept stealing them. No, oh. not even allowed anywhere on the premises. We used to try to duel yeah. at lunch, and there was this guy, Gerald Lafon. Mm -hmm. He was... Man, he had a good deck, right? Mm -hmm. And then he was in the other other classes from me, so we didn't cross paths too often. And okay. then there was a hyped lunchtime duel set up between me and Gerald, and it never happened because the day we were going to do it, the cards got banned. banned. So nobody really knows. God damn. Do Gerald. We, one. we still don't know to this day. I won't forget. What's he doing these days? Um, You checked his Facebook? That's usually how you found I out. I think he works in landscaping last I knew. fell off or not. Yeah, nice guy. Cool. I had a Jinzo and a Magic Cylinder. That's all I remember. That's good. Joey Wheeler type beat. Yugi boy. Yugi. <laughs> Kaiba. <laughs> I've stolen your grandfather's soul, Yugi. <laughs> that is priceless. Well, they get into dark for free this time. No wonderful op to piece him up, and they just slide the pistols behind the smoke. So they've gotten close enough. Careful now. He met. Nice headshots. Wary of Monacy following forward here, but he just had the Glock. Nade should... He's oh. also on burst. Nope. Not going to clean him up. 
gets stuck in the doorway. So he'll he'll take the tech nine. See where he can go with it. Ooh, finding him on the nade timing. Not bad. Considering how little they had to work with, you take a kill, you almost got Ima. We'll see if Nico can deagle anybody out of the server. Man, his deagles yesterday on nuke. I mean, that map of nuke versus phase. If you have any doubts of Nico and CS2, just just go watch that. Watch they, it back. Yeah, if they if you won that map, it would be forever yes. looked at as a reference game in CS2 for Nico's abilities on 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 nuke. That was the peak. That was peak form. Peak form. The best we've seen of him yet in this game, and unfortunately, it's a slow start for him here on Anubis. I believe zero and four out of the gate. So G2, they just, they got to get this ball rolling. Yeah, sooner and than later. Calling looks a little sketchy right now. So see what the idea is next time. Feels like. Maybe so, sometimes when calls look bad, it's because someone used a nade they weren't supposed to use, or they had to, you know, smoke themselves out of a molly that they were supposed to avoid, or someone died and lost the kit that they needed. So hard to see sometimes when things go wrong, why exactly that's the case. But here's a second chance for G2. Damn, wonderful! Didn't stick long, stick around long at all. It eh? just gone. He's quite risk averse. Like he'll he'll take a peek and stuff, but he. Most of the time, he, he doesn't really... Oh! oh! Oh, 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 That's a nice find from JT. Yes, sir. Lady Luck graces JL. But you know what I mean? Wonderful is like, he's got the same sense as symbol, but he doesn't have the same grit. He's not going to stick around, fight through fire, nades, and stuff like that. He'll, he'll take an attempt and fall back, but he's quite passive sometimes. Damn, Nico doesn't give a damn about your grenade. We got pressure on the B sites, and that pressure opens... A possibility for G2. Smoke grenade for Alexis rotate in. Ooh, they tagged him with that, so they should be on high alert, but he does have a chance to slide through. Monacy of two mines. Hunter just gets clipped on the side of it. We're back to the 3v3. But that op towards long could get problematic for Navi on the retake, so a smoke grenade will solve this. Monacy now out of the fight for the time being. Nexa has a frag if he wants to open that smoke. Could be a great way to catch somebody on the cross. Yeah, true. But Nexa keeps his gun out in dark. It's instead Nico to take contact. They've lost track of Nexa. Alexi, he's got this covered. And his teammates give him the cover needed as the desperate Monacy push comes through for Navi's fifth. I think you had something there. It's sort of hard to maybe notice if you don't notice. But if Nexa had naded that out for Monacy, it would have been perfect. Uh, that would have just taken people. Would have been a real CS2 moment. It would have been a real CS2 moment, absolutely. And Monacy definitely could have had impact right there. So, opportunity missed, unfortunately. He also, you know, thought he was going to get swung. So there's that, but... Oh, we see wrong. what happens when... Yeah. Nice shot. Nice! Uh, that would have been super cool for him to try. Nice shot. Instead, just stuck in the corner of dark. First Enter timeout. I thought it was going to be G2O. I thought it was going to be after yesterday. But the mood is too good for Navi right now. Mm. I think again that comeback versus Ents just that, that gives you like a good 24, 48 hour buzz. I guess I would be kind of pissed that it got that close versus a team that's not real anymore. But they're still real people. Yeah, but they're like five severed fingers, not on one hand. Ooh. Find five, I'd be seven. going after this win, though. Yes. Yeah. 100%. I think... I think no, it's, 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 Maui said that the Navi are the longest ending team at this event, right? <laughs> that's that, crazy. That's crazy. Yeah. But, uh... It does mean that there are some expectations. Well, they just jump around the corner and take a shot to the leg. This is an easy pickup for Navi. Oh. I mean, they laugh in the face of this attack. Fifth player in's the only one that gets a kill. He'll double down Monacy, but he's already down to a quarter HP. And like, what? This whole playbook is very unlike what, was what that? we saw. Yeah, yeah. That, that's not yesterday's gameplay. No, it's not. And it is a different team they're playing against, but it did just feel like they were playing fundamentally better. A lot more defaults yesterday for G2. A lot less defaults here versus Navi. Or maybe still defaults, but like... I guess a problem when they played against FaZe was also their follow-through in the, some of the early T rounds when they would take mid control and then just die to camera. Crazy peek out of Hooksy. Hooksy's keeping that same energy right now. It's just on a different site. So something to say about that. But there should also be something to say about the fact that they got better and stopped doing that as we got into overtime. Um, but old David 
Old habits die hard, it looks like. That's three. Man. But he only this? has three health left. That should be the end of him. Well, there's only two guys. Yeah. He's going to use the smoke grenade to cut off Alexi. Could they mess this up? 25 seconds and Monacy is seeing red. He wants to make it happen. Oh, oh my god. Oh no, wait, dude. This is a one versus five straight up and he, he has can time read to it. get bomb. He's, he, he should have this red with another smoke. Oh my Monacy. One fake. The nade doesn't come through. Now he's got enough space to commit to this. Monacy, a pure 1v5. And as Emac tries to get out through that smoke, Monacy's just dodging all these bullets. He's terrified. Emac's looking behind him for a push through. Time's ticking away. I mean, how could you not be horrified? Uh, Monacy, the prodigy, has pieced together four frags in this 1v5 ace clutch. And Ema, his oh! head is on a silver platter. A miracle from the magnificent Monacy. Holy hell. Just like that, game on. <gasps> <laughs> a round that's a write-off. A round that G2 blow on a full B exec, and it ends up like this. One last refrag through the smoke from JL, and the 1v3 is on. Three HP, two players, and one this clutch. One, three health jumps into Alexi. Where do those bullets go? Yeah! Underneath him, he jumps over the stream of shots. Yeah! <laughs> uh, we... The MIBR was a 1v4, right? I think so. Yeah, yeah and this backside. is a, a 1v5. Wow. Okay. He's just, he's been a highlight machine, um, obviously, since playing professional play, since he's been on any kind of stage. Wow. Whether it's groups or otherwise online, whatever, no matter what the level of competition is, Monacy keeps the reel going. Add it to the collection of miraculous Counter Strike moments. <laughs> That's the flash and G2 for you. on the board. Perfect utility usage as well. Each step of the way, right? Picking up that extra smoke. That's like, the thing, man. In the red like a book. He doesn't make mistakes. No, sir. Now, what can they make of it? Off the back of that one. Ooh, wonderful, good trade. But Monacy's on the angle before he even gets a chance to go back to the repeak. Man advantage with a deep amount of med control from Hunter. Set the way back into the game. I mean, Navi are the team that should have called a pause after that, okay? That is around your refocus. You don't just jump right back into the game. Everyone is still thinking about that clutch, Every that 1v5 that just took place. <laughs> yeah, you can't ignore that that just happened. Whether you're G2 and you're worried about Monacy still shaking because he knows that highlight is an all-time clutch. Or if you're Navi and you realize that you just got embarrassed, you got posterized by the youngest player on G2. You're just another memory in the collection for him. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's, that's map-long trauma for Navi now. Yeah, it can be, absolutely. Nothing will test your gangster like having to survive a clutch like that. And uh, we're not going to see them smiling for a bit, even if they win a couple of rounds. That is pure embarrassment. On one end, it's embarrassment. On the other, it's inspiration. Watch that 7-5 half come through now. You know what I mean? Total turnaround moment. We've got M4 and a Fomus here for Navi. They try to wipe that from their memory. But can't. Watch the kid. He's going back for another one. Ooh, dangerous. JL is somebody who does play a good amount of mid-control. Keeps Navi on their toes, even though he doesn't have support. More often than not, just the one-man hold, but 
Right now he's got nothing to work with, and G2 just letting Navi continue to stew. They're taking kind of a pause within this round by not speeding it up too much, giving themselves a chance to relax and not dying while they collect some map control again. And maybe this can help get their protocols together because they're looking to play some of these defaults a little bit more carefully. They find the open site successfully. And G2 have two guns they want, or sorry, Navi have two guns they want to hold on to. Count them up. That's three straight now for G2. We'll get the investment again next round from Navi. That's tough. Would have been them saving too, you know. We'd be at 7-0, looking at 8-0. Would have been a complete collapse in contrast to the action pack series versus phase yesterday. <laughs> wow. Take that moment and run with it. Three straight. Five alive at the end of round eight. From Navi Jr. to 1v5ing Navi. They're like, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> Plus 600k. Right. Sell this. How is that? Too little. <laughs> there really is a short list of players that make you feel like anything is possible when it comes to Counter-Strike. And the beauty of that clutch too is it's it's not one of those ones where like there's like a super glaringly obvious mistake made by the Navi members. They're just trying to dance with someone who's two because, steps ahead of them. Because it was more like a 1v3. Mm -hmm. It was two kills in the beginning Yep. to just make it possible to begin with. Full big rotation. They could have they could have played to trade for any one position, but it wasn't uh it wasn't like some other massive mistakes in 1v5s where everybody sort of goes out of their way to try to toss the round away, I think. No, he just had the right tools in the one versus two. And yeah, I mean, jumping through that smoke and then you know not being seated and then getting a first bullet kill, like things have to line up. Well, right now they're pelting him with utility, so he can't see and he's softened up. Ooh, Hooksy's gonna fall victim to this. Nice, nice positioning from Ime. And then he <laughs> hits the dig through the smoke. That's all he needs to know to keep on shooting. But as he falls back, Hunter comes through. It was Monacy to open up the bomb site just wide enough for Hunter to take the push. I gotta think about the money now. Yeah. Navi gotta be very careful here. Another smoke in front of Temple as well. JL's flank is everything. Yeah, if they didn't have that in position, it feels like it's already impossible. But with JL pressuring Monacy again, this bomb site's feeling small for G2. Bit and Wonderful come out with kills apiece. Man advantage, and JL's flank now starting to find a little more room to work within, but. Nico's been able to fall back to dark, and Nexa just tucked in here on the side of Temple. The spray gets away from Ooh. him. Nico's found out, and it's a nice 3v4 retake from Navi hey, to get back to winning ways. Dude, that's majorly impressive. Yeah, JL. But the bomb. Oh, no. They don't have anyone on the but bomb with the a kick. the bomb is close. Oh, my God. And still, Woo. all's good. Woo. I thought they actually missed it. Wow. That was the last tick right there. Whew. Heard the whine of the bomb, and that was uh, that was close. That would have been a little bit too much tragedy to get over, I think, in one half. And uh, Jesus, that one's got you on the edge of your seat. Yeah, someone had a kit. Not JL. Not JL. Oh, not getting back. No, sir. Teammate opens the smoke for Nico. And that's even with Wonderful again, trying to pull back as fast as possible. Yeah, the idea to speed up towards A is very tempting. The opt down, no one holding ca camera, no one uh, posted up besides these riflers inside the site. And Navi are just still split up right now. 
Ooh, JL picks up that op. Eats a flash and fires off, but easy fallback. Confident enough to return ever so slightly to the angle. Yeah. Miss jump, not a problem. All no, good. No, he has to deal with standard protocols as they molly him back, flash him, make sure that he can't re-aggress without taking a major risk. But he can just try it if he wants to. They leave one here to hold. And Nexa was so good versus Rops yesterday. Let's see if Fit can take him out. No. Honestly, he's taken to this position so well. Mm -hmm. Just sitting in. Good anchor. It's going to force Emet to try and get active. He catches Hooksy, confirms Bomb, but then Nico slides out through smoke, slices sight open. JL. Oh, no. Uh -oh. Luckily, the smoke grenade didn't give Nexa the easy frag, and the chase could very well be on, but this is going to be G2 responding right back. Money. Not ideal here for Navi. Luckily, Wonderful's got an extra 5k. You save these guns, you can put something together. Because JL threw down that long smoke, he's been able to yeah, join Alexi in middle. Let's see if they can save. Very important save here for Navi. Alexi at the little off angle. Nico taking his time in a perfect clear. And now he knows the op is going to be nearby. Oh, shots missed. And JL oh. bullied, but stays alive. He's got an... AK and finally Nexa will start to come for, oh, for him. Yeah, he's got him. Dead to rights. Nowhere to run, nowhere to hide for JL. G2 responding, clearing the board. But again, there's still some money to tap into. See what kind of buy Navi decide to piece together. Oh, it's this his is... own nade too. I was like, oh, someone naded that open for him. It's perfect. Oh, my goodness. Unfortunate there for Wonderful. The one bullet that comes through, of course, right on the noggin. Well, we'd seen him fall back faster before. Like he took a look down river and dipped, and this time he did stick around that half second for a shot. It's like, see guys, that's why I'm so careful. Right? You decided to take a shot, and it cost you. Man advantage out the gate. Well, these little tactics they've been setting up him up with have been great overall. He's 14 and 5. They bought him an off this round. He used that extra money for himself. So, trying to go god mode, and at 14 and 5, why not? It's going to come down to a matter of G2, though, walking into it unsuspectingly. Right now, he's over towards B site, two pistols ahead of him. A completely wide open for the taking. And the rumblings of Hooksy's presence could very well keep Navi committed to the bomb site that G2 want nothing to do with. See, these are the defaults we're looking for. It's so much more thorough. And of course, they're only going up against this one op on Wonderful. But um, it's just looking more composed here for, for G2. They basically never miss when it comes to finding the weaker site in a in a default on an NT eco. Like they're very good at avoiding stacks. They've done it twice with no casualties in this half already. Second round of this map where we've got 10 players alive when bomb explodes. Yeah, again, the last time they did it, it was G2 had two guns. Oh, I spoke too soon. <laughs> They're going to find some pistol players and spawn. As long as the op doesn't die, and it won't, so far removed from all this. So, all is good for G2. Some nice small bounties on those players saving. Yeah, that's the modesty effect. I mean, when we talk about X-Factor and Counter-Strike, it's... Stuff like that. You know, you, you need to be able to have that IGLs. Even the greatest IGLs of all time have referenced just needing X Factor. It's something you can't teach somebody. Nobody's helping Monacy win that clutch. No. You just need someone who can do it. Usually you hope for a little bit of it, but honestly, he's drowning in it. Dripper drown. Another slow approach towards mid-bridge. We've slowly seen JL kind of recede back from those early bridge fights, not peeking window any longer. Not if Nico's going to pop smokes open. Nice spam, JL. <laughs> okay. Just enough. Catching Nico through the doorway. And a 5v4 for Navi as they pump in with their buy. Good amount of util still.
They're gonna pull that rifle back. We've already seen Wonderful get easy multi-kills from this spot, but he's gonna miss the first shot, lands the second, Hooksy survives, and has a teammate with him. He wants an angle on that dark Almost position. Hooksy still stays alive. He's, he's being a problem right now. Emma, he could take this down. Easily. Yeah. Nice double kill from E-Man. And Alexi will lose his duel towards Temple, but Dinking oh, Hunter no. in the process. <laughs> Monacy reopens this bomb site, but they're still relying they, on Ema deep in dark. They know he's in dark, but look, they've completely compromised every good spot on the site. It's now a CT retake. They've it's got to reorganize. And then you have Monacy with 100 HP and you op up and plenty of room to work with. And you do not want to have to retake in an atypical position like this. Well, they're going to go for the double long. You've got protocols coming in from all the natural positions. No dark, no temple. And E-Man last seen down towards dark. So if that op goes out and clears these angles first, it's going to keep Monacy on high alert, ready for the long swing. We'll see if they join forces or just kind of let E-Man bait bit at the start of it. Monacy takes a bunch of damage. E-Man does swing for the trade frag. And now it's going to rely on Hunter's 5 HP with the op. But he hits the first shot. And he's going to draw JL forward. No kit again. Glock burst no betrays kit. him. But with no kit, he's going to get on that bomb. Not even. Who oh. knows? This one's gone. Unless, Whoa, yep, oh, he, he found, found a kit. one. On the ground. And again. Oh, oh, not this time. So close. End of the half. G2 bust open the bomb site. Hunter with the op to post G2 sixth. I don't think I had any uh, idols, but I had a lot of things that I wanted to be uh, as a kid. I wanted to be a baker, like pastries, also an actor, because I was really good at acting as a, as a kid. I knew how to cry on command, like uh, I used that a lot. When I was studying, I maybe wanted to be an astronomer one day. I really love space and that stuff, so. No, I didn't have any idols at all. Like My friends were like, oh, I want to be a like, firework or something like that, so a policeman, and I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> I was watching a lot of uh, tennis and my idol was Novak Djokovic, but now I'm an even bigger fan what he's achieving so far. And uh, I think not just inspiring me, but I think everyone around the world who is competing in something. When I was in kindergarten, I wanted to be a basketball player. And I played basketball for like eight months and then I gave up. When I was a kid, uh, what I wanted to be kind of when I grew up, I always loved working with uh, with animals. I always wanted to look into maybe becoming like a veterinarian or something like that, but that's a lot of work. You know, I got to go to university and put a lot of time into that. I've shifted. Now I'm playing video games. <laughs> My favorite Counter-Strike player to watch differs a lot, honestly. But uh, if I had to pick one, I would pick Sai Wu at the moment. He's so capable of doing everything. His little AK M4. He's like an all-round really strong player and also a clutch shot. Back in the days, uh, yeah, I was I was looking for device because he was close to my playstyle. Devi actually, it's pretty biased. He can not touch the game for three weeks and still be good. I'd have to say like someone like Robs. We have the same initials, we look similar, and we have the same roles, and we play the same res. It's someone definitely I look up to as Robs. My favorite Counter Strike player to watch would be Flusher. He's always extremely annoying. I don't really know like who is my favorite Counter-Strike player to watch right now, but like before it was Fallen. When I started becoming an Auber, he was like the Auber to look at. He's like had longevity in his career. He's been doing a lot for Brazil, and I just think he is a really good role model. My favorite Counter-Strike player to watch, especially when I was growing up, uh, I originally was playing Counter-Strike Source. Shocked was a player that his play style really inspired me, uh, and I really wanted to be that player that could play everything, every role. He's always been having like a mixed Playstyle, he could always uh, play with the AWP and the rifle. I would answer simple because he's like an uh, unexpected guy. You like cannot predict him. It's like you never lose hope in him in like a 1v3, 1v4 situation. You're like, oh, he can win. So they say the devil's in the details. This is JL looking for a kit after he gets the last frag. Mm. That one step towards long instead of the immediate pickup costs him a sixth round. Shoof. One Boom. of two rounds. It comes very close because of the defuse. Yes, sir. Last one had to be the 10 seconds. So 
One misstep. You lose another one. One misstep and Monacy 1v5s. Yeah, seriously. Tie game. Yeah, everything rested on a hairpin in that first half. But Navi's map pick. And now Navi's T side. Wonderful. He's been sat on 14 kills for quite some time now. It was a solid CT half out of him. B site defense was stellar. A couple multi frags in there, but obviously highlight of the event in Monacy's back pocket. So far. It'll be hard to top. <laughs> You'd have to be pretty lucky to see something better than that. Yep. That's for sure. What a treat. JL up close. They're going to wide swing on him and his teammate. E -Man, no. ooh, not able to get out of there. <laughs> Nico right tapping away. But Bits got the response back from Dark. Two kills. They've got to go and push for the bomb. And this means Nico's going to have a nice bit of cover here. Good headshot angle. Bit makes it a little awkward now for Nico. Starting to slip from him as he peeks out. Confirms both are indeed here. But his teammates can also just take back control of the site. They're going to push to come help Nico, and that help looks good. Monacy, dual Berettas for the double kill, and it's G2's pistol as they take the lead. We saw G2 very willing to swing out uh, uh, to swing into phase yesterday in very similar fashion, and then we'll do that on full rifle rounds. Again, showing us another very, very classy, a kind of great read setup where the nades are going over top of them, the flashbangs as well. They're running oh, run underneath it. So the timing is perfect here. The happiness continues to flow here for G2. It was looking a little bit despondent in the beginning of the game, but definitely the tides have shifted. And they were defending against FaZe's T side too yesterday. Just watch rain unstoppable on the offense. G2 gonna have to put something better up today. But not giving any string for Navi to pull on here in this one. You think any of them are still thinking about that ace? Yeah, I actually just was, so <laughs> same. <laughs> <laughs> well, you better believe it's Amplified in their own minds. God. I mean, you think about it. When someone does that to you, if someone gets a ninja defuse versus you in a match, you know it's getting clipped. You yeah, know, dude, it's got that lingering effect. People are going to remind you of it. Oh, man, I'm the sucker. It has impact. It has real impact. Glocks will find some open road towards mid. Dual Berettas, huh? The MP9 have it. Ooh, there we go. <laughs> Extra cash for Nexa as he closes with the 3K. And we're going to get that nice early round three buy at a Navi. Okay. Let's go. Yeah. T-side begins now. Yeah. If uh, Navi want to do this, they got to show us a good T-side. Like how they were setting up wonderful all throughout that first half on CT. T-side should be maybe even more cool depending on the way that they use him. But there's lots of openings for the T's to get as an opper. A lot that you can work alone as well. But uh, this round, it's not one where they can afford the op just yet. That will have to be earned, or they'll have to steal it. Try it out of Monacy's cold, dead hands. Well, you gotta put him down first. Has not been an easy feat. Deep Molly to deny any rugs peak. Slows down the potential for bits. nervous every check every corner there's so little map control at the start of this one what's he setting up here a grenade yep oh it's got a splash got it we'll get there I said are you taller than jks i just can't <laughs> get up there the hell 
Luckily for them, there was nothing to be had. No missed opportunity on that one. And then Nexo, once the smoke fade slides in, we talk about how well he's been doing on the T side, anchoring in long A. Well, here we have it, the CT push alongside Nico, but don't let your guard down. Nico also falls to bits. Uh. And at the 30 second mark, that's critical. Monacy's about to get split from mid and long by five. There is nobody to slow down the mid push. He is standing out in the open. No trade potential for this one. It is Bit who opens up A, punishing the G2 expedition and therefore reopening the door for Na'Vi to close this gap. He played in a spot that if he got cleared from above, he would have died instantly, but he had a feeling that they wouldn't, and he was right. Getting the second kill was a bonus, but to be honest, it was almost necessary. Time was running down at that point, so Monesty hit one good shot. If Nico got one good trade, then G2's round is still alive, but Bit does everything they need and a little more. Hey there. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hooks, he's got it bad enough, okay? Don't do it, man. Five kills on Nuke. He's 3-11 and 11 right now. Damn. All right. Okay. Put him out of his misery. End it and move along, Navi. No trade here from Nico. Only tags bit down to 50. And unfortunately, Monacy just like, you know, five steps too far out of the cupboard. That... That's true, yeah. He yep. maybe could have been right in there. But yep. also that spacing was perfect for Navi coming in from camera. I think Monacy just kind of floats on bricks for a second because he's thinking about holding long A instead. Right. That little bit of delay in Monacy's step costs him. Oh no, he couldn't post another, you know, miracle 1v3. Would have taken everything from him in that one, but it's Navi very quickly making progress towards the A site yet again. Alexi down to camera. Ima right behind him. And only pistols. Clean, clean. Nice and easy here. Good call from Navi. And Alexi, I like the pace. Calls out an open gap. We'll see if these USPs can get anything. Certainly nothing more impressive than finding an empty site fast. Yeah. Oh, you just know this pack of CTs would have been moving around the map looking for a kill. And, when, and a roaming pack of USPs is suddenly a little more deadly. But uh, JL and Bit making sure that none of these guns slip away. It's Navi tied this game again, but this time at eight. Juggle it all the way. Take no chances. Yeah. Get it out of there and leave yourself. Four alive for Navi, starting to grow. Nice, comfortable amount of cash in the back pocket. And honestly, a tighter game than I anticipated. I thought G2, after seeing yesterday, going that toe to toe with FaZe Clan. Bro, it feels like Navi have to win this game twice because of that 1v5. So they had a great lead. They go into the second half, they lose the second pistol. They have to come back on T side, but they're they're doing it. So. Here's the turning points, okay? Everyone, almost zero dollars here for G2 as the investment comes in. One last op here for Monacy before our potential save. Navi aren't even interested in getting an op over to Wonderful. They're doing just fine. He's got 6K in his back pocket. Alexi feeling like there's space to be taken in middle, but spam out of Nico. Alexi is fine for the time being. Another fast peek. Bit going to fall to Nexa. Wonderful. Good trade on the first, but Nico's got better cover. And a smoke down in front of the mid split. So, Alexi, do you take this chance? He could pause here for a second. He's looking for his timing, but they got to set up a push for him. Some kind of distraction. JL smoked long, too. Oh, Nico's so weary of this. Yeah, he's Smoke's just it. a little bit too out there. And Ema just a couple paces too far back. Mid players peek out, take his support down, but Alexi, oh, <laughs> thought maybe okay. he could wrap it around. JL has the slimmest of chances here as bombs down and guns up. 1v3 to go. It's a late lurk out of Hooksy, and if they also wait for him, JL could get back across. What, what? a shot into Monacy, holding that angle so deep. 
I like how he's playing this active, ready for the same fight to come out delayed. Looks he's crawling. <gasps> JL, oh. hell of a time to post another clutch in this series. And you know he has some time now. Nate to soften up Hunter. They both chuck a frag back and forth, oh. but not the third. Hunter's had enough. Oh, JL's so pissed. He knows he could have tucked. He didn't hear the bomb getting stuck. But because Hunter threw that HE first, he doesn't know if he missed hearing the bomb defusal. That's partly to get some damage in, partly tactical. And it definitely draws JL forward to be a little bit more aggressive than he'd like to be. Beautiful shot on Monacy, posted on the angle. They were just letting Monacy clip him if he tried to cross back to long. This is so unlucky for Alexi. <laughs> Nico's waiting for him for so Ooh. long, but then he gets distracted and then still hits that shot. And an ah! instant headshot out of Hunter. Nice, nice. Aww. <laughs> Aww. <laughs> and poor yeah, JL, man. That's frustrating. And actually, he's even see a Hunter frustrating rounds. also tap the bomb. Yep. So, for some kind of peak. JL having a rough one. Between missing that kit at the end of the first half. Would have been a beautiful 1v3. He is still having an excellent game, undeniably. But, round wins slipping through his fingers. G2 back up by one. JL here in dark to pressure Hunter out. Bombs in spawn. Hyper passive out of Navi again. Yeah, this has definitely been working for them. They got a checklist, right? And if they see no baskets push and they see no long B push and uh, they have maintained bridge control and they can stay alive long enough, they've done very well to organize a split fast enough. And G2 are not being aggressive uh, a, a long. They need to do that. You need to be quite persistent about that. But it looks like the sort of blind stack is correct. And they push A long finally. So they get info. I'd say this is a pretty good timing for G2. But Navi are coming in. Yeah. And instantly finding Nico. A couple warning shots to Hunter. But he stays tucked in. Still hanging on. Nexa picks up a single frag. Wonderful. <gasps> it's... Covered. Oh, great Just cover from him. Right? Wonderful. Almost killed in the process of the plant, but... But... A big pickup from Ema. Two on the round, right? He is the guy who cracks open the back of the bomb site, Gives the cover for the plant. Easy pickup from Nexa on the flank. He's been the response so far from G2 in this round. Slide out from JL. He'll take the head off. Off shot comes through from Monacy. And as long as he's alive, there's a chance. No kid on these players. They have to push. Flashbang, fantastic. Inside of the smoke, it's going to be desperate. Monacy has to give this up. And JL will post his round finally. Okay. Navi respond with a ninth. Yeah, it has been a real journey here for JL. He's gone through it all. But another clutch for him. One. They could win those emotions back, basically. That's a nice round here for Navi. And this one is run won by Emma, though. That entry pathing was perfect. Nico getting taken out first is a you know a huge chip off your shoulder. And uh and then this cover. As you mentioned, barely saved wonderful as as he was getting the plant down, but didn't didn't get distracted. He focused in on what he needed to cover for that bomb to get planted safely. The only way this goes wrong is if someone peeks from there. And so we held it. I wonder if Nico thought somebody had that long walk out, right? It's three players on site. Nobody saw Ema until he's on jail. No one spotted the cross. But Nobody at all. They, Yeah, they just flashed to let him in and then waited. Normally, people are waiting for this cross smoke on the site to enter into... Uh, to, to pop up into pizza. Oh, man. That one-off round. Round 17 goes the way of G2. Now they've got a force by here. This could be a great chance for Navi to run away with a lead. But monacy has got an op. Because he saved. Because JL tried to chase and clear it. And by not fragging on monacy you know G2 have that much more of a chance. However, sees nothing. Immediately gives up his angle on dark. That last round so well called from Alexi. I mean... They got the information they needed. They executed at 43 seconds, which is an extra 10 seconds from where you would normally do it. And if they had waited till the 30 second mark, that A flank would have came in. So it looked like G2 were onto something. They figured out what side it was going to be and they started moving. But Navi were a little faster. And uh, I love to see that, you know? Not just waiting around for the sake of it, just to see if there's a push. They had enough of the details of the map and then they started going. Thank you. 
Molly for backside. Nobody to get flushed out from behind Cake. Ooh, pressure for Nexa. Nothing. Nothing at all. Only Hunter with the mid hold. And he falls right after, so this one is easy. And Monacy's hoping to just maybe save it again. Cut through like butter. And there we go. Bit clears the board. Every weapon dead. G2 now in for a world of hurt. It's been immaculate, man, on these round wins here for, for Na'Vi. Uh, there have been some kind of crazy late game situations, but the staging, the early round, the mid round have been all pretty solid. They are almost, you know, it's almost a pacifist run in, in, the, in the setups for these rounds. Like they're, they're getting away with map control without losing any HP, minimal grenade usage, and G2 are not pressing them. Nothing to work with. They're all, the odds of their game now tank. This is Navi surviving at all. And it's got flashes of nuke yesterday, right? We got this Nico world class top frag, and you don't even win the map. Now, G2, obviously, you're banking on that Monacy 1v5, and you still don't win the map. It feels like your pieces are in place. Like your stars mentally, are shining. mentally, what more could G2 have done to make right. this a terrible situation for Navi? So, Navi have really survived so much within this game, within this event. Within this event, yeah, true. Yeah. Yeah. You know, pressed by yeah. Ents, down like, after choking that second map to yeah. come back. That was for elimination, It was yeah. huge. So, you know, Navi hanging on for dear life, but the pulse is strong here as the T side, three in a row, guns back for G2. But smooth calls from Alexi. Yeah, and this is another individually, like, just terrible map from Huxley, man. Like, he was... You know, Nuke was a game where he had five kills. Here's four and seventeen, and he does some entry work, man. He when you when they played well the first day, it was off the back of Hooksy's entries. Add it to the pile. You can't do that every every day, but it can't be all or nothing, right? Surely there's a middle ground. Yeah, there has to be like a you know a ten kill average, twelve. Unfortunately, I think we've been saying that for a long time. Yeah. Could it's just the chance. most boring narrative uh, around one of the strongest callers. Hooksy is actually such a fantastic caller, but it's literally his individual level that holds back his team. This time, the Molly does find a target, but Nexus still brings one down with him. And Nico's got the heaven angle. All's good. CT push out. Hooksy's just running straight into the crosshair. Emez patience as a late lurk gets man advantage in the hands of Navi as they're about to get this 12th. Nico pushes forward, does not hide in heaven as smoke fades. And the T's, they don't have a Molotov to get him out of here. This is a huge chance for Nico, but he's going to have to do it on his own. No teammates nearby. And Alexi doesn't turn. He starts to run, and Nico gets what? a double. Woo! What a shot! A trade back from Wonderful, a squeeze onto Monacy. Oh. They do manage to get into this site as Wonderful plants bomb. It falls on the shoulders of Hunter, who is too far away and concerned about mid because of the split that comes through from Ima. Great lurk work from Ima this round, I'm finding Hooksy, finding the mid play. At the beginning of Na'Vi with Ima, they tried to use him like he was on Gamer Legion, an aggressive solo lurk on the map, and that is just not how... That's just not how he can be used. Nico can do that, you know, for years at the top level. Ima could not do that once he got figured out. That was just, no. You got to start from scratch again. You got a guy with great aim, and he's pretty good at lurking. How do we use him within a team system? That's totally different. It's taken some time, but this is looking so much better. Um, and I, I love to see him in front just as much he's, as he is lurking. And here's a good example of where he can be a good lurker. Earlier in this half, he was a good entry. This is insanity, by the way. Yeah, that's... Two bullets out. Emes sliding through. Did what he could. <laughs> uh, no one even saw that. Yes. Yeah. Well, he's got a reason to celebrate. That's Navi on map point. Triple Fomus buy coming out from G2. A miraculous Monacy moment in this map, and it may all be for naught. Oh, JL, how dare you? It gets worse? Sick. Just a little burst on the smoke. You've got man advantage. You've got all of a sudden a B site. 
In a world of hurt, Hooksy does post a kill, and that felt mandatory. He's alone on that B site. Back to the 4v4. Suddenly, no panic needed to rotate and give him support. He did it on his own, and he did it when he had to. On death's doorstep here in Anubis. This game was MR12, but emotionally, it was MR20. Sure. A roller coaster for Navi. They have truly been tested mentally throughout this event in Abu Dhabi. From the depths of defeat versus Ents. To getting stomped on by the Prodigy. But what's crazy is even with Hooksy getting that early kill... <gasps> okay, a second one should be enough. Now, he needs help. There's still no rotate coming at him. And he's not going to get a third kill in this situation. And with a delayed play, Nico... Ooh, God. wonderful. Definitely saw him, oh, right? No. He, right. he goes unspotted. He got away with it. This could be a big timing for Nico. They're going to think he's way farther back than this, but still on this line. But does anybody give him anything to shoot at? Nexa clears the jail position. Wonderful is able to press out along the pillar. And there we go. Nico, Nico strikes one down. Wonderful stuck between three separate players. He's got to get it to cover. And he hits his shot. He hits both his shots and denies Monacy the dark <laughs> push, but just squeezed from too many directions. We criticized Hooksy, his total lack of frags in this map, but he posts them when they have to. Yeah, yeah. And Simple left Navi and, and had Wonderful come in. It was it was just about to get very ugly. There was just too many pieces that needed to learn how to play in this team at this level. Um, and Wonderful's made improvements. He's definitely made strides throughout this event, looking better. Same for Ime. Uh, and G2 are just barely hanging on. Try to keep up here on Anubis. Well contained by Hooksy. And obviously, they don't know how close they were to spotting Nico on that flank. Wonderful, just a pixel off. <laughs> Straightforward. Doesn't say who. Did the it? point. Yeah. Can only imagine, though. You imagine Swanee slips that on Hooksy's desk. Hooksy's desk, yeah. <laughs> Just hey, Hooksy, let's flip that score around. So how can he claw back this game? It's two rounds to get to overtime. All the soldiers have all the weapons and utility they need, and we don't. We haven't had really an up-tempo call here for Navi. It's been rare. This might be the perfect thing to actually suffocate the defense. Man, CT's along the wall. Flashes oh, don't never matter. Mind. Hunter keeps vision up. JL in from dark. Triple kill from Hunter. Wonderful peels him off the site, but you still got Hooksy to deal with and utility for him to just slow them down. Big moments coming out of this B defense. Hooksy in the last, Hunter in the present. With Wonderful alive and kicking. Can they manage? To get back into the round, they got a minute to try and find an opening. But you know at a minute, it's already attempting save. You know, sometimes being close to that pillar, being extended out on B site, it just feels so dangerous. Mm -hmm. But it is great for blocking off flashbangs by getting underneath them. It's tough to flash anybody in that position. Sure, You've got the sure. pillar to use anything that bounces off the entrance. It's... It, it demands mechanical skill, but it does up your chances of dodging all the util, and we see it here with Hunter. Yeah, using environmental cover for dodging flashes is amazing, because, like, even if a flash doesn't blind you, if it forces you to 180, that's enough to win a fight sometimes. Just get someone's mouse off the center of their mouse pad. So if you can use environmental cover to dodge flashes, and uh, you counter the flash effect entirely, and it... It's also something like when people swing with flashbangs, they're a little bit more reckless than if they swing without, right? So if that flash does nothing. They're holding the angle perfectly and they use this cover so well. There's just so much trust for those T's coming in. And no fear for the CT holding on. And JL just a couple steps behind from dark, so not even able to kill them while they're focusing on long. Blade wants in. Third and final timeout of regulation for Navi.
I don't think there's anything bad or wrong about the attack. I think they've actually spent so much of this entire half conditioning G2 to be scared to push the map. And uh, that's actually worked out very well in their favor. Trying to turn the speed up, especially after a moment where G2 would be very probably insecure about how much they've let happen to them. I think could have been a good call. Just didn't go down the way they needed it to. So I think Navi still have the mental edge right now. They're up around. It really felt like G2 were going to score this game after their comeback in the first half and they're surviving into the map and the into the second. But I think OT still somehow feels far away. Let's see if the CTs can bust out some magic. Dark aggro. Oh my god, that's close. And dark aggro. Oh, that's oh. a call. Yes, sir. Saw it out of the gate. Monacy posting the op up. Hooksy taking the risk. They go two players pushing through the dark smoke. And it works out for man advantage. But Hooksy sticks around. I actually don't mind this risk. Now, my only worry for him is just, you know. His, Alone, though, or should Monacy come back? No, no, he's fine with someone in dark who can spot it because they can't approach him, right? Because Monacy can always peek. Okay. But he is at risk a bridge, of course. And Hooksy taking the responsibility into his own hands this round. Oh, they're just using this as a gimmick play now. And Bit almost peeling Nexa off the bomb site. Top mid smoke, so suddenly this cross of Hooksy's angle begins to brew. If they throw nades and don't go bridge, though. Oh, oh. Alexi's right there. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah. Alexi, presence of mind to hard clear, but down to a quarter HP. Little pressure into the dark room. Monacy's gonna hold the angle. Just being toyed with by Alexi. He'll just gonna put him down for man advantage. And Nico, meanwhile, pressing out towards middle, does leave Nexa on his own in A. Nico will have a chance, but he doesn't pick up the frag. Ina finally falters here. Nexa's position is good for one, and he's softened up bit so much so that this feels <laughs> impossible. Overtime from G2. Nexa. Hanging on and Hooksy stepping up. That is a really brave call to make. Last round of the game, I didn't expect it. I thought that they've been conditioned very well to be passive, to be afraid. But what does Hooksy call? A squeeze out through Canal, a push with Monacy behind him to take things into his own hands. And even him dying at the 50 second mark, that's info on top of getting a lot of damage no! off of. His team had a lot going for him, no! for them in this round already. So. Come on. Well, it's been a struggle the entire way through, but they finally have earned their place in overtime. And maybe a moment to reset. The three round OT though, how many more? How many more does Hooksy have in him? He was critical in the last three rounds of regulation. And again, he's gonna put himself in a difficult spot, but right now with so many numbers dedicated towards the other side of the map, Nexa, he gets one, and Nico's here to help him. So they shut down the long push, but there is nothing in mid to hold back Navi, except a little utility, and even that's enough. Alexi doesn't force the issue. I hate the way they path around that pillar. They always come up the left. They never clear it properly. They never molly it, ever. And, and uh, the right, there's riflers that can stand there blind. Three times they've fallen victim to this position from G2. They haven't mollied it. Once by Nico, twice by Nexa. And they're just going to go in with the three-man A hit. You've got no Molotov to burn out the backside position, so Nico's able to take a deeper angle. Nexa still committed to the same spot, and Nico, he's going to pull one off. Concerned about middle, though, because there's zero presence, let him in. Not a problem. Yeah. You can still hold them back with support. They're desperate for the bomb plant, and that kill could make a world of difference. Rare mistake from Hunter. Bomb doesn't get planted, though. It's low ground. Once. They get the nades out. It's a slow crawl from Monacy. Eventually, he'll hit this flank. But Nico also not looking to take a chance by peeking out from heaven. This there. opens a door for e to just blindside another frag and Navi bouncing back in a three versus five. Now Monacy's coming through. This should be the end all and he will catch e up above. Wonderful to the clutch. 22 and 13. Off the AK, he does get off bomb site. He knows that Hooksy's gotta be deep camera and he doesn't oh. get either of the two. Hooksy oh. picks up a kill in OT and G2, the first round's theirs. And that's not small. It's his eighth frag, but he denies the clutch. That's a wonderful would have taken to a very favorable post plan up above if that kill had been let go. So they they secure it. They actually win a the first round of overtime. It's it's definitely not easy, but I think there's some flawed 
padding or gimmicky padding when it comes to Navi. They're trying to get the, you know, this left side, left way around the pillar with that molly. That molly comes in from the CT side, but they don't try to molly next to off this spot. They haven't a few times now dealt with it properly. They haven't respected the fact that it can be played and you can use that as really strong cover. And I'm not exactly sure why. I felt like Nico gave a lot of room over to Emeb by never peeking heaven, not pressuring it whatsoever, no util up, and then getting caught out by it. Like, he just really banked on Na'Vi, not pressuring up into heaven. They slide through the empty space and almost make G2 pay for it. It almost doesn't count in overtime. JL again looking for his impact, but... Consistent utility here out of the defense towards Dark. But Alexi's already almost dead already. This time it's Monacy with I, the off. I love that they spam this this setup. Like, it's been working so well. Um, why Ooh, shouldn't they? Too. It's a very cool boost to set up as well. And they're using this to maintain vision over the smoke. Those default grenades coming out, it's like when you throw them on Mirage and B-apps, you know, you throw them, nade set, turn your brain off, They're gonna leave the site. Me. And th they got the info right now. Full info. They're going to take the risk. They're going to push him out into the face of what is three T's. But Wonderful's got a grenade out. And that flash could be huge. Sure enough. Oh. And they caught FaZe with the same plays yesterday. The aggressive peak outside B works. Timing's extraordinary. 35 to spare. Wonderful will get the answer. Wait. But Hunter's changing guns. Excuse me? What? Why? They, did, they thought that attack was done. All of a sudden, Nexus got slack to pick up. It's man advantage back in the hands of Navi. Hunter caught making a mistake in two rounds back to back. No molly for Nexa. But he's got a nice deep position here. He throws out the frag, so now Wonderful knows exactly where he's at. Sure, you get the kill on the back, but you've got Wonderful ready for the trade. And you've got Monacy ready for the clutch. Baits out the peak. Goes for oh, the that's so Dog smart. And oh, oh, there's oh the trade God. from Wonderful. Dude, that is so smart for Monacy. To, has to drag his opponent, to the, the, the assistance for his opponent, out from dark. Nearly brought him the clutch. Good denial, however, out of Navi. But this play here, I mean, this is this is where it should have been at the end. It's good flash dodge from from Imma, first of all, playing anti in that spot, very aware. But uh, Navi were very lucky to have that attack. Net them two more kills. Hunter again, small mistake. Hey, there's no small mistakes in overtime. Fair enough. Only if you win. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> Open line of sight. Doesn't get a second. Nice rifle work from JL, but oh. Hunter switches over to the AWP. Still switching guns under pressure, but this time it pays <laughs> off. Yeah. And I'm, uh, how many times has Wonderful found himself in clutch situations only to lose them? True. He picks up the last one, keeps us tied at 13 apiece. His 25th kill posts the 13th round win. It's nice that G2 get better as the game goes on, but they started late in both halves. Yes, sir. Navi almost punished them for it. But now in overtime, it feels like they have the steering wheel. Oh my oh. god. Hey there. Hunter doesn't get spotted, but he cannot go out for a re-peak. At the very least, he scrambles them, though. Yeah, it's a full walkout with three players left on the T side. Navi just as startled by Hunter as he was by them. But this regrouping Navi has worked before, so they'll stay close together. Wonderful has a smoke if they want to block off Hunter's line of sight. That would completely counter out the opera. They could block off both CTs with one smoke if they put it in the right spot. But they could also take this unannounced. And that's what they're going to try to do, and it could very well work. Alexi, perfect! Oh, gets that far ahead. And the flash finds Hooksy. Blind as a bat, but no cover. Wait, what? No They're... eyes on dark. Alexi goes further towards Temple. Eight seconds. You can only plant in the cubby. And now CT's all around them. Ema, no bomb plant, no round win. It's G2 to take a second in OT. Two players to cover. They plant four dark, and they don't play the number one post plant spot on the site. Instead, they spread out, cover things that they don't even have to immediately worry about. And who was planting? Wonderful. They totally screwed him over. Yep. Oh my goodness. Yes, it's... Uh, nice. I mean, it's 10 seconds left in the round. A flank can come in, but... Like, this is where you should be trying to 
post plant from. Yeah. Not just worry about a flank coming in. I mean, worried about the flank, but you had a player long. They had one long, one temple. Yeah. No eyes dark. Yeah, that's that's bad bad communication in the uh, in the late rounds. Poor wonderful. Honesty versus Wonderful has given us fireworks tonight. Yeah, both have had great games, and it seems like Wonderfuls could have been even better. Mm. Even better somehow. If not led to the slaughter. Oh, what he would have done to not have hands busy on the dark peak. But there we go. 14-13, two rounds on the CT side of G2 in overtime. It's an opportunity for G2. Again. Again. They're yet to have a map point. I mean, Hooksy's getting exponentially better. More key kills coming. Better late than never. that clutch earlier. Ron is pressured. Oh. Again, the utility is going to soften him up, but oh. he gives it up as Hooksy takes a risk. Uh oh, you're going to die in the most tilting way possible. That's and you know they're control. about to swarm this. Five players, two through dark, three on long. Into the site they go. Alexi, nothing to offer yet. Fire, though, burns him out. Perfect Ooh. spam from Hooksy. Hooksy coming through with the double entry. And JL's long flank gets spotted out. Nice shoulder peek from Monacy. Oh. He'll punish that one. And now there is nothing really here for Navi to do other than just hope Bit can run through it. It's a double as he catches him off guard. And Wonderful, he's got a crossfire here that he has to deal with, and he looks the wrong direction, so Hunter ends it 15 to G2, two map points. God damn, it's that walk through the smoke. Uh, Hooksy catches off Imma. He tried to do that in the past, and Imma had a different angle the last time that interaction happened. That's frustrating for him. He knew that Hooksy was going to try to do this again, for sure. But uh, here, literally, Imma is looking to Molly in front of the smoke. It's a very... It's an early timing. He's trying to molly the corner where everyone goes to stand because he thinks it's going to be a slower default. G2 already thinking two steps ahead into the attack. Oof. That's frustrating. That's frustrating, but a good call. Strong call, and you know what? G2 got to be brave to do this late game. That round 24 called to get them over time into some of these OT calls. I have to say, they're Hooksy, not doing what the textbook says. Hooksy has been very brave, specifically, yep. right? With the half he was having, and then if you think back to regulation, his push outside of dark, his push outside long B, those are round-winning moments that Hooksy decided to take into his own hands. It's kind of like, like a, six kills on the map. It's like a guy in armor that's too big for him with a sword that's too big for him with, you know, just yelling at people. But he took a swing, and the claymore struck. Emet stuck in this corner. He hears him coming. Oh, nothing. Back-to-back oh, oh, oh. -back rounds that Hooksy gets Ema's head. There's a player on Plath that's going to catch him off. Wonderful in the pocket. Could do something excellent, but it's only his one. Alexi manages to survive. Tries to press out, and Hunter's double kill could spell disaster here for Navi. A Molotov onto Temple as Bit has to go the long way round. But you've got two of these three players on the brink of death. A full belt of utility, and every member of G2 goes for the long control post plant. Which means they can get smoked out. But are we talking? And no HEs here to deny the smoke as well. Bit, he actually has a chance. But if they if they get smoked out, then Monacy's got flashbangs to get his teammates back in through that smoke. And they hear the rumblings of the retake. He decides to cover bomb instead. And down he goes. Monacy does not miss his shot. And G2 do not miss their chance. At a road to the semifinals, they pick up map one. At times, it looks desperate. At times, it looks flat. But with that miracle of a clutch from Monacy in their back pocket, Nico giving praise to the prodigy. An incredibly competitive first map in this quarterfinal series, and Connor hit the nail on the head. G2 started off so cold, so quiet into this one, but Jacob, it all came down to that unholy Monacy clutch to change the fate of G2 in this game. Imagine pulling off a 1v5 in a competitive Counter-Strike game at this caliber. Monacy is a highlight reel. I literally just answered a question in an interview saying, what is the highlight of the year? And I said, pick anything from Monacy. While I said that in the interview, he did this. A 1v5 being down 5-0 against Navi, 
on their opponent's map pick. I don't know what it is with this guy, Maui, but he always pulls up in these clutch scenarios. It's so ridiculous how much better his clutch has even gotten. The fact is yeah. that this is so different than sometimes the early clutches we saw from Monacy. Oh. Early on in his career, he was finding these op clutches, these moments where it was just based purely on mechanics, and now he's segmenting fights so well. He's using utility to make his, his life so much easier. It's that we're seeing this guy's growth so quickly because, man, he's just, every single time he loses a game, it feels like he learns 10 lessons. It's a rifle clutch. It's not his AWP that, right? Yeah. yeah. Normally we see him flicking around, we see his opponents being fearful of him when he's, he's having an AWP in his hand. This is a rifle clutch, a 1v5 from the ground and up. Him jumping into the smoke and just that's annihilating. That's so ridiculous. It doesn't <laughs> make any sense at all. But that's Monty for you right here. He's one of the greatest players out there and he's showing in once more. If we can just play that clutch one more time, because it's the way that he manages to, you know, make Ema sweat in the oh final moments gosh. of that. Oh my God, like I, I, I dread being in his shoes in that time because I feel like he gets really confused of where just enough Manasi has gone. Perfect play in that position. I, I actually legitimately don't know what Ema was thinking in that moment. Like You never want to be the last guy pimp when it's a 1v1 after your teammates all die one by one by one. But what's crazy about it is that actually Ema threw a molly behind himself into mm. Canal. And I don't understand how he thought that was even a possibility at any point. And so, I don't know what, what went on there for Ema, but I think you have to look back at kind of the other moments in that. Why was he getting so many isolated duels? I don't think Alexi did anything wrong either, though. No. Like he just, like, uh, Monacy just jumped over a smoke and just shot him in the face. I, I don't know what you can do if you're Alexi in that moment. It's such a ballsy play. And, like, only Monacy did have the balls in that series to be pulling that one off. And then we moved to the latest stages of that game, and overtime specifically. Um, We were rightly criticizing Hooksy during regulation of that game. Totally different story going into overtime, yeah, right? Yeah, we're kind of kind of ready to jump on his back once more, because we saw yesterday on New Kick in his face when Nico had that fantastic game. Hooksy didn't show up at all, and he was a big factor as to why they didn't win that game. Same happened here on Anubis the first many, many rounds, but coming into overtime at 12-9, he stepped up. This multi-kill he got right here was mega massive, getting the entry right here as well. And in overtime, you see all the highlights, all the reels coming yeah. in from Hooksy. It's entry kills, both on the CT side and on the T side. He was the one having the absolute most impact on the server from overtime. If you just looked at the last eight rounds of this game, Hooksy was a monster, but yeah. the first 20 or so really didn't have too much to be excited about. But the thing is that Hooksy, I mean, he's kind of talked about it before. It's it's really about the impact frags for him. It's all about just when the moment calls upon him to do a little bit more. He has actually so frequently done that for G2. There's, there's one thing to be said though, 0 0.62 rating, simply not good enough, yeah. right? If you're Hooksy, you got to put up a little bit more presence on the server. You got to be a, a bit more consistent. Otherwise, you rely too much on your Monacy's 1v5s and your Nico popping off. But, you know, respect for, at the very least in this game, stepping up when it matters the most. Can we just talk about the energy on the side of G2 oh for a goodness. moment as well? Obviously, we weren't up here when the clutch happened because that was quite early on in the game. But when we walked up here, coming into the later stages of regulation, obviously being pushed into overtime, these guys were screaming, rightfully so. It was incredible energy. G2 feel like a brotherhood when they're actually playing at this level when they're winning out clutches like that, when they actually have everybody clicking and they're working off of each other, we were able to hear the comms, the way that they were just ping-ponging off of each other in terms of one guy presents some information, another player is able to play off of it, they get the kill, everybody gets so excited for each other, everybody's so happy for each other, and I will say that's probably the one thing where when you talked about JKS for yeah, Nexa, yeah. in the server, JKS to me is a better ranker. I don't think that's even really like, I'm not going out on a limb saying that either, but in terms of energy, Nexa brings a fire to this team. I think I think that's a valid point. I think that's one of the few ways you can justify JKS no longer being in this lineup. Maybe they needed that energy. Maybe they needed the secondary voice within the team that could keep the mood up. And you know, it, it sounds silly sometimes to say in a professional environment that you need good energy and you need a hype man on your team. But if they came to the realization that Nico is going to perform better or the mood within the team is going to be better, Better, which means everyone else is going to thrive more so playing with Nexa uh, in, in terms of JKS, then maybe it's it's worth taking that, you know, lack of firepower, lack of player capabilities and just bringing Nexa. And honestly, so far, he's been doing all right. This map was a treat for so many reasons, not least because we actually got to see the Orping head-to-head -head going down. Obviously, Wonderful and Manasi respectively pulling in big numbers on both sides of the server, Maui. They were the two most impressive players in the server if we want to start at round number one. Monacy was so incredible at making sure that every time he peaked an angle, he was jiggling it out just the right way. Wonderful himself, unfortunately, wasn't able to get the victory in this one. But again, we saw some serious impact. He had some good rotations in this one, and that's really what I've been talking about. It's that I've been seeing him become more and more mobile as he's been getting more and more comfortable on this Navi roster. And so he is, of course, locking down the positions when he's challenged and he's finding the multi-frags. But I, I saw him find kills from numerous positions throughout this game. I agree. I think Wonderful is off 
to a, a great start in Navi, and without him playing well, this game probably wouldn't have been as, as close as it is. And, and I also would argue that without him playing well in general for Navi, they wouldn't be as competitive as they are. So we got to give a lot of credit to Wonderful. However, I just want to bring you back to the point I said coming into the game that when you look at the scoreboard, Monacy and Wonderful have the same amount of kills and almost the same amount of death. Again, I would argue Monacy found way more impact on the server. Yeah. Easy yeah. to say when you pull off a 1v5, <laughs> I know, but even in the off rounds, Monacy is not getting three kills saving his AWP. He's doing what he's doing right here, either winning rounds by being aggressive in your face on your opponents or just falling back and getting nothing done. So there's a bit of a, a stylistic difference between the two, and I still think Wonderful can do more and achieve more impact with his skills. So let's look at Navi in isolation here, because obviously, you know, wouldn't have blamed them for just getting tilted off the face of the earth after that clutch. Also for that round that was at the end of the first half where uh, there was just no diffuse kit in sight. Obviously, that uh, went the way of G2. What do you think cost Navi in this map? Because it was pretty competitive and it was by kind of quite narrow margins that they let it slip away. I want to say that when it really got down to the wire in the tail end of this game, G2 were the ones that were very willing to throw out the playbook and just start calling their own individual numbers. We saw in round 24 itself, where Hooksy just decided to push through E-Box, down Canal, to try to find a flank kill onto an A main player. I mean, those kinds of moments are, they remind me of people like, on phase, like it sure. reminds me of what Rops does on that team or Kerrigan when round 24, who's gonna make that that play that just throws the entire round out of balance, but throws it into your favor. And it was actually Hooksy, it was actually people on G2 like Monacy as well, who are just stepping up and not and going beyond the game plan. But the thing is, if you're on Navi, you probably are really trying to not mess up the structure. There's the system that everybody's trying to get working in working order. And unfortunately for them, they don't know when they can exceed the limits of it yet. I think that's a super valid point. Cause I agree with you, Navi would be the kind of team that sticks to the plan A, and when they have to invent the plan B on the go, they don't have as much experience as G2 have in that regard. So fair point, and I think G2, you know, the closer we got into overtime, the more we're getting the feeling that, yeah, they're going to win this map. Well, an incredibly exciting first ground of Anubis, and of course, G2's map pick lays waiting on the horizon, but not before we jump things to a quick break. We'll be back in just a couple of minutes where Inferno lies ahead of us.
Inferno up next as the pick of G2 and a chance for them to go 2-0 through to the semi-finals here in Abu Dhabi. We obviously saw them playing up against FaZe just yesterday, Jacob. So what happened in that map? Well, what usually happens when G2 is playing Inferno recently, they win. They've won five in a row. The last time they lost it was back at Pro League in CSGO. So they've never lost in CS2. That's one fact right there for you. Another one is the T-Sides. It's absolutely insane how well they are playing the T-Sides right now. Yesterday, they were up 8-1 to one against FaZe. Then FaZe made a mini comeback. The half ends 8-4. to four. They've played it against Fluxo in the CCT online as well, where they got nine rounds on the T-Side. Another game in CS2 where they got nine rounds on the T-Side. So every single time G2 picks the map, the opponents go like, yeah, we want to start CT side and you're giving the initiative to G2. So there's two things I want to say right here. If you're Navi, start on that goddamn T side. You know, <laughs> don't give this T side to G2 straight off the bat and see if you can dictate the pace. FaZe tries yesterday to play aggressive on the CT side to take banana control away from G2 and they had nothing of it. G2 right now, to my understanding, is probably the best Inferno team in CS2. I would have to concur, Pimp. But if I were Navi and I looked at my own T side on this map, I would probably have to try stay to away? stay away from <laughs> it. Yeah, <laughs> they've got a sub 40% win rate on T side rounds. So Ooh. you definitely don't want to start on that side. It's just not going to do you any favors. But when we talk about what Navi can try to do to try to mitigate uh, G2 and their decimating T side, I think it has to come from a couple people who have actually been doing pretty well for them. JL being one, he's going to have to contest Nico, especially towards Banana, and what? not many people can hold a candle to Nico when he's coming up banana against you. Mm. But JL actually in this in this series already, he's looked impressive at this event. He's looked solid. And I would say overall, he's probably been the player for Navi that has shined the most in terms of just exceeding expectations. Yeah, going up against Nico in that position, uh, traditionally been nightmare fuel. Is that something that you're looking at that makes uh, G2's T side so dangerous? Is there any other aspects as well? Yeah, I mean, if Nico continues, of course, he, he had a great game against FaZe yesterday. We already established that. But up to that point, G2 was still winning when Nico were not showing up individually. So it's just another layer to what they do. The way Hooksy and in particular Hunter is able to control the T side and control the pace on that T side, they're, they're so good at it, you know, because they can play fast. They can go up banana fast and do a fast execution towards that bomb side. They can also just wait around for a minute, a minute and 10 and do absolutely nothing. So I think whenever you're playing D2 on Inferno right now and you're on that CT side, your only response is to try to take charge of the CT side. FaZe tried yesterday. They tried to take banana control. They tried to play aggressive Counter-Strike, but G2 would just shut it down and methodically, slowly but surely take over the map and then win out the rounds with almost ease. So I, I, I do feel Navi's in for a rough run. If FaZe can't answer to, to G2's T side, there's nothing that makes me believe that Navi have the abilities. Playing against G2's T side on Inferno feels like you're falling into quicksand. That the more you struggle, mm. the more you try to do anything, probably the faster you're just gonna die. If you contest right, if you three contest, people, you towards, three banana, people you're towards banana, you're gonna fall apart. They're, you're, you're, Nico's just gonna run right at you. He's gonna destroy everybody. If you play back in the bomb side, if you just wait, it's like that quicksand's just eventually gonna eat you up either way. Yeah, uh, things not looking great for Navi. It sounds like you're saying this is a 2-0 to G2 then. Right? There's a lot that suggests that, yeah. You yes. know, I, I don't see a world where G2 is, is gonna lose their first Inferno game in, in CS2 to the iteration of, of Navi we're looking at right now. It, it would have been different if FaZe got another shot at it or Vitality, who's also a, a predominant uh, Inferno team. But right now, I don't consider Navi to be good enough in order to beat T2. I, I don't think that's going to happen. And yeah, I'd be willing to bet on a 2-0. Yeah. Well, the desk is saying this one smells like a 2-0, but Connor, Mo, what are you guys thinking over there? I don't know what Mohan's thinking about, but I can tell you I'm, I'm siding with the man. I think the Inferno T side is just a beast for G2. I think that Navi unfortunately their chance was on Anubis and it just feels like that X factor that X factor is all G2 at the moment if we get this uptick in Nico's performance like we did on Nuke yesterday okay that's what I kind of came in for today that's what I wanted I saw a glimpse of the Nico greatness and I think there is a chance we get a little bit of that here on Inferno and if we do I think tip for tap pound for pound Navi just don't have what it takes to hold back this G2 squad. They did the hard part. They won Anubis. They could have probably afforded Anubis in this veto. So the fact that they won it, getting revenge from yesterday and surviving everything, every peak and valley of last map, mentally, I think G2 are going to be in a much better place. Plus, Inferno is just the idyllic land of all G2 fans. They, they know that G2 deliver on T side and MR12 only heightens the experience, I think. It just comes down if they start fast, because sometimes they just don't let off. We got a smoke over the top. We get wonderful with a chance, but a jumping hooks, he's got him pressured back, so he peels away. Smoke grenade there, just in the open ground. 
to deal with anybody who could have been in pit, but it's this apartment's position that could actually end up being problematic for G2. Imez able to go all the way back around Boiler. And Nico's just going to commit to the deep sight plant. Now, this doesn't set up Hooksy very nicely as he's playing inside of pit. But they go double lane. That's and they're just, they're just gotta, they just gotta stop the CT swing. Simple as that. Three CTs coming at this short side. They draw him into Monacy. Hunter gets two, and Monacy finds his. It is excellent on the hold. Yep. And G2's pistol round seems like a shoe in They squeezed all the map control they needed to right there, put them into two sort of awkward fights, but G2 set up perfectly composed and hit all their shots. And, and uh, nothing. Yeah, and nothing. And Hooksy, man, Hooksy, he was... <laughs> he was on a on a deflating life raft, okay, in that first that first game. He just kept getting more chances to play. And by the end of it, he called really good rounds that he also got his entries in and he finally got it together. And I think the thing we can give him most credit for is that he didn't decide to like he, he kept the same he kept the same aggressive playstyle and energy that he did all game. He just made it work at the end. And I don't know, maybe you just need a little extra time to get warmed up today. But um I think that's that's essentially what G2 really it would have been a it would have been the conversation. Hooksy with five kills again, mm -hmm. the end of Inferno, and they lose. Even with the Monacy 1v5, even with a second pistol, even with all these things that went right. But win the map and uh, suddenly Well, win the map and you know, double your kills by overtime. Okay. Yeah, three the rounds of regulation to close for G2's CT side. And of those three in a row, from nine to twelve. Hooksy kicks off each of them. So, here in the conversion, he'll do the same. Get the kills when they're easy, <laughs> and then you don't need as many of them as the game goes on. Sad but real. <laughs> Sad but real. You know? Fill up on appetizers, and you don't have to order a main course. Mac-10 will get another one. Monacy there for the smoke push. Bomb can go be planted today. It is guaranteed. But Bits, USP, brings down another one. Not supposed to happen like that. Two deaths for G2 to stomach. I don't think they give a damn. So what do you think that is... What do you think that is going to happen? What do you do that I want that I think I am? <laughs> what do I think is going to happen? I think this T-side is going to post nine rounds. Oh, I love that. I will say it will post nine rounds. Okay, cool. They've done it before. They can do it again. Coming off of a map one win. I'm sure the G2 camp feels strong. G2's Inferno is, you know, G2's Inferno with Hooksy is the best in, best map that G2 as an organization have ever had in their entire lifetime. Really? 27. The history of this org yeah. Counter-Strike. Really? Their, their, their T-side Inferno is the most dominant, strongest thing that they've ever had in their back pocket as an organization. It's a bold claim, but <clears throat> some of the scores... Oh, man. Stream of bullets and JL plops his pumpkin right in the middle of them all. Now, Bit's going to be pinched here from Monacy and from Nexa up in Apps. The utility coming over has got him hard fixated on the first fight. Well done by Bit. Almost. Nex is able to get through. Bomb is inbound despite being somewhat delayed. It's just too problematic for Alexi to press out. So the bomb's still running. Come on now. Hunter's sprinting as fast as he can. Yes, Alexi has an angle, but no, G2 don't have a problem. CT's allowing for this plant to come through. Now for the retake, of course, Ima incendiary. Alexi be a smoke. But that's assuming the retake even tries, which it won't. 3-0 kickoff for G2's T-side. One way in which G2's T-side could be better or worse post-JKS is that they have next as the Halls Lurker. That is notoriously one of the hardest positions to be effective in. You have to figure out the perfect time to exit the door. That door is exposed to the most amount of CT dominant angles of any part of any map, honestly. It's the hardest position to try to entry out of unless you pick your right timing. When you want to go fast, when you want to go slow. When there's a 2-2 split, or when there's an arch split, and you're the one guy in halls, if you die, it's all over. So that's something that JKS obviously was really great at uh, working with. Terrorists win. And uh, and some some positions for Nexa. Honestly, there hasn't been anything that's looked extremely uncomfortable, except for Vertigo B-Site CT side. That's it so far. It's... 
think Nexa has clearly put in a lot of work, knew exactly what he was signing up for, and has uh, really impressed in this debut in a way that I didn't think was honestly going to be possible. I think exceeding a lot of expectations. Expectations that were, of course, spoiled by the online games they played coming into Abu Dhabi. See ya! Down goes Emet. There's an R8. JL has an R8. I saw it. I swear to God, I saw it. <laughs> Loses Alexi. Nico ain't playing your game. I swear I'm not crazy. JL has an R8. Why? I do not know. Oh, he just switched. This would be a good place to use it. There is no good place to use it. <laughs> <laughs> there is... <laughs> yeah, it's on his hip. Oh my god. I don't know why. Well, it's a fade. It probably looks amazing in CS2. Who gives a damn? <laughs> <laughs> Who's not using a deagle Ooh, right now? Wow, nice. Gold-plated pile of shit. <laughs> Just put lipstick on a pig. I know production like that one. Nico's going to find the B-site. Clear for the taking. All of a sudden, watch him creep back from A. Don't go in there. There's a gun. There's a gun in the mix. There's an M4 in the pit. There's pistols on the short lane. You don't want to hit this A site. You don't want to do it. You don't want to do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. Oh, my God. B is clear and the bomb is going. Two deaths on the G2 camp. Oh, poor Hooksy, man. That Thank was... goodness they've got a protocol in place to get away from all this. Nexa's lurking apartments. We'll catch the M4. So, still looking to clear out the CTs here. Deny the gun save. Take a fourth round consecutive. Gets a little squirrely. Woof. Nico gets turned on. Nice shot by Bit. And he's the last man standing Actually, now. go back to the other site because, you know, Bomb's like... Still up. That's very costly round coming out of G2. Four deaths. Yeah. Yikes. I told them yeah, not the, to do it. The thing that makes a good Hall's Lurker is someone who's very, sh you know, very shrewd. You can't have somebody that can be tricked easily. Shrewd? They know exactly. <laughs> yeah. Shroud. He actually, shrewd? it's funny that, because Shroud did go squeaky a lot on Cloud9, if I remember, on, on cash. Sure. Terrorists win. So, so I don't remember there. Shroud anymore, man. Come on now. Shrewd Shroud, baby. Shrewd. Sorry, Alexi. This shot, dude. Bah. Later. One headshot. Oh my headshot. <laughs> yeah, one headshot, all it takes. It's a nice shot. Clean frag from Wonderful. Just a reminder as to what he can get up to. The terrifying things about G2 on this map. Nico on banana. Mm -hmm. East side. Yes, sir. Then their arch splits. They always think like they have nine things going on basically all the time. Okay. Lots of irons in the, in the fire. And uh, being the best team that can take A means they've basically oh. got the most terrifying attacks on both sides of the map. Yes. Violence. Nico off the flashbang. Perfect double entry on the B site. Jesus. Now the bomb's a little delayed here, but they'll so pick it up. They'll run it over. All's good. They weren't ready for this. I'd like to add something to your list of dangerous G2 elements. What's crazy about G2 T side on Inferno? Well, you know what? I wanted to say CT side for a second. Oh, okay. Go Monacy mid peaks. Scouts, yeah, ops. His presence in mid he was looking, always felt. He was looking through smokes before CS2. Yep. Okay. He was finding ways to, to get openings on CT side as an opper. Yes, sir. And yes, he couldn't sir. blow open the smokes. Now it's even worse. Oh, you saw how Monacy won that round yesterday. With the scout, scout. on the ramp. Yeah, on the Brokey. Through the wall. Mm, into the head of Brokey. This Golston. This Golston lot. This one is just a succulent flashbang from one Hooksy. And a superb headshot collection out of Nico. Two of them smashed. And a fifth round in a row for G2's T side. Blind as a bat. And Alexi not swift enough for the trade frag. I was so scared my flesh would fail. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you want to hear after you swung <laughs> yeah, on a right, rifle round. Confidence, yeah. trust it. <laughs> and Nico, I have no idea if that's going to work. <laughs> uh, no, well done. Oh, good.
his concerns. No problem. Excellent flashbang. I think there, unfortunately, Alexi's going to be beating himself up that he doesn't get the trade, but Nico didn't give him much time to do it. Alexi, former G2 IGL. Mexa, former G2 IGL. Hooksy, current G2 IGL. None of their infernos ever had it like Hooksy's. Now we got their work cut out for them. Inferno's what got them the last world final. Yep. At the end of 2022 into Katowice at the beginning of 2023. I think we're 13 and 0 land streak on the map. Right around this time last year. That's where it all began. A couple nades pop and swifter amount of brackets control here. Sight's gonna feel the squeeze. Good nade to soften up Monacy. Wonderful doesn't miss a chance. Oh! Beautiful second kill from Wonderful. Hunter the only one with an answer, but Wonderful drops bomb in the open. And he doesn't see anybody just yet, but down he goes to the balcony peak. Now that is an easily recoverable bomb, and Hunter is in a committed position. And they're coming library. This is actually good for Hunter. Nate, they know he's around here. Yeah, they're pressing him, but the flash oh. blinded. Emes still able to catch the frag. Speaking of which, one goes out, half of Alexi down, fire, he sees the whole pack, all three players in full display, <laughs> Navi pull it off, with a pack on the push, they get Emma, that retake in quick. Emma ate the flash, luckily he just started shooting, I mean, he had two, another teammate there in library, that was a good attempt, and that was good timing out of Nexa as well to go for that lurk, I guess the other thing that's great about their t sides is Hunter when he's wrapping art, he, he's that other, he's like that thing that makes it feel like they have nine things going on. Because you've got a lane split happening, but you've got Hunter working on an arch lurk. But it's not really a lurk, because it's just as fast, even faster sometimes, than the actual lane part of the attack. And, and he's also solo. But that's a very nice round out of Wonderful. Out of all the ways that he played that, I mean, if he got a kill and fell back, he probably dies to that arch trap. So, had to come forward in a Monacy's frag. And I think Monacy maybe bit on a shoulder peak and missed. Hard to say exactly. Again, Nico looking for this banana fight, but there's more this time around, and Hooksy almost just found that timing. Oh! Okay, man! Oh! What? Nico no. sees another. Alexi cuts him down. But this was all while Hooksy continued with that pressure into the A site. It's Modesty who picks up the kill in this direction. Bits got too much pressure, you'd think. Nothing. Modesty, his second frag. Him and Nico, two apiece, and G2 right back on the doorstep of success. That snapshot. I mean, the, the first victim of Nico obviously thinks there's no way he's going to slide in between the two. They, they start because they peak lane and then immediately went with, with that uh, window flash swing from Nico. And, um... Uh, They're working on B, so I just wanted to leave this open for a second because... I mean, if he kills the guy on sight, it's his. <laughs> yeah, he's got it. They still haven't come back. Oh. Nexa misses his shot. If Alexi gets this frag, that defuse cannot be stopped if he gets the kill. Are you he serious? He cannot be stopped. Alexi B slides in. They had plenty of time to come back, but they thought Nexa had it. Plenty of time. <laughs> when he throws his utility, they still didn't come back. Honestly... I, d I don't even want to put this on Nexa, but like, if he didn't shoot, of course, this is the basically the only way to guarantee that he could delay longer. But how can you blame him when his two teammates are on the other side of the world? Why didn't they come back when they knew he was up in in, in library? I have no idea. He was throwing out grenades. That's got to be the dumbest way to lose a round. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, Lexi figures that one out. All right. Get it while you can. After that, 2K entry spray transfer from Nico. Really? That's an interesting strategy. Three on one. That wasn't Hooksy's fault, okay? Unless he was alive. Why didn't they come um, back? I don't know.
It's like watching what somebody just get washed out to oh, sea. Oh, everything's different from G2 on Inferno. Yeah. <laughs> That's the, and then the most G2 round ever happens. <laughs> oh, man. You can't write this stuff. Just... Moments like that. The G2 social media is actually better than the main team. <laughs> Man, and if that gives just a little runway to Nail and Avi. Remember that round now. And maybe we have to talk about it in the 24th. Lexi B back sight. It's got a smoke to play behind. Good spam damage here from Emap. Pulls Hunter out. Suddenly the trade less likely, but no trade needed. Booksy just hits the headshot. And Nexa in between everyone's been spotted. Oof. Finishes off the little left of JL. Boost on CT. Bomb down at 10 seconds. Player back sight gets traded. And now all that's left is Nexa. He doesn't have the time. And they have fumbled it. As nobody was watching for the boost. A player on back sight. Boosted. And the CT peak pays off. <laughs> well, at least they made it two in a row. What's the player... Is he blind? Watch when he gets boosted. Is the player back sight on boxes blind? No, we didn't get to see the kill on the boost, but... If we have it, I'd love to see it. When he boosts CT... Where's the backside player at? We don't have it. The technology's not there. Thanks anyways, production. Like where was Hooksy? Uh top of Yeah, like when the when the player jumps in the CT smoke, you know, on the, on the I didn't CT see, boost. I didn't see anyone up there. I guess he wasn't up, but then Bit comes right through the smoke after yeah. and he is up there, so maybe he was in the process of climbing. He was looking for like a treasure chest or something. I don't know, Secret. man. Me yeah. who. All that matters <laughs> is a third for Navi. G2. Can only blame yourself. Oh, now JL starting to get uh, this head-to-head -head between him and Nico. Starting to skew back mm -hmm. to more even scale. But there's more where Nico came from. Monacy now takes to the tip of the spear. And JL, right there for the duel, hangs on for dear life, 19 health, and he puts down his smoke. Hunter stuck between them. Do they just try to continue this press into sight? Alexi has no grenades, JL has no grenades, they've got Wonderful on the rotate, also no grenades. It's an abundance of guns in the B site. They can't. Yeah, like you said, no grenades. So Molly backside, smoke the cross, a, and yeah. it's a good chance for G2 to still follow through with this B clear. It's 2v2 right now. JL needs to keep fragging, but he's low on HP. Will they read the double quad? I think they could still. They cross over without the CT smoke. Molly That's now. And uh -oh. This is going to unravel no smoke. it. And they have the headshot position. He tried to take time. Oh, that's a mistake. Yeah. Then the smoke comes in, denies wonderful his angle. G2 figured it out. I think JL needed to fight the cross. Obviously, he wants to stay alive. Find a good time. Yeah, but, you know, the point of him was to try to get a kill and die at the same time. Because then they molly it just for JL, and then they find Alexi, right? They don't molly it if JL dies. You know what I mean? I know what you mean. I get what you're putting down. That's a great round of the G2. And yeah, that's... Uh, I don't want to say nice things about them, though. Why not? After that, I let the bomb get defused. Forgive and forget, Mohan. Mm -hmm. Don't hold grudges. Grown men don't hold grudges. Never move on. That's what I always like to say. Whoa! Settle yeah. down, bucko. I think JL missed. Played that for Alexi. G2 take their sixth. The nine round T half, still a possibility, but we have gotten a better banana hold coming out of Navi in the last three rounds. 
Nico's been turned down ever so slightly, but he's not going to shy away from it. Hooksy leading the charge. Great grenade damage here. Oh, ho, ho, Alexi. <laughs> he just pops Nico and the peek out. Oh, JL's prod off banana. Just like that. G2 down to two members. You got to appreciate this start to the round because, man, G2 are beginning the half wall within 10 seconds every single time. So now they actually have to pay for it. The iron price. Both their lives. And a two on five. They did a three on five. You know what I mean? Yes. But this one looks bleak. Still another smoke as well for the B defenders. So unlike last round when G2 can just skate right by, they're going to have to do it blind. Flash for Alexi. Finds him. Ooh, Modesty knows where he's at. That's an interesting spot. Hey. Good spam through the smoke, softening him up. Modesty traded, though. JL's position now known to Hunter. And, of course, reinforcements inbound. JL just dedicated to the backside. Hunter puts the molly down in the wrong spot. Utility pressure at a spawn. And Ooh. a couple headshots through the box. Solid stuff from JL there coming through with two. So at least this is the best, uh, the best start to the round for Navi from the perspective of utility. These two nades land perfectly. They literally follow them up B, okay? Leave it to Alexi to find something like that. And they've taken out Nico three rounds in a row. They've lost one of those rounds. And the round before, they won, despite Nico getting that 2K entry. That's when they really just stole all the power from G2, that Alexi 1v3. And now, Tech Nines. Punishment time. Ooh, again, the nades, though. Early damage, a little bit. A third of Nico shaved off. Light peppering from the top of Banana. Off included. Yes, sir. Off makes a difference. First time that AWP has been positioned in Banana and Wonderful makes it sing. Now, you could just as quickly try to slice through this A site. Bit hasn't been tested in a while, but every test he's played, he's passed. 10 and 5 on the map. Sits comfortably in pit. He met on the bomb site. And if they see the smoke come over, there's a real chance Emet just drops that incendiary. Gets Alexi a little closer here to support. Monacy throws his at the same time, and so it is Tech Nines in hand for the desperate G2 push. Sure enough, there's the response back. And they don't have a flashbang to come through arch side, but they do just use sheer numbers. Monacy now hands on an M4. 35 seconds, but remember, wonderful. It's that B site op that suddenly to CT spawn is so dangerous. Yeah, Modesty steps into the angle. Hunter presses out, finds the AK 47, and Navi continue to close that gap. Yeah, they make it a real game, and there's only one round now that uh, G2 can win. And seven to five, their T side, that's actually not bad, I think, but now they're going to feel lucky that they won the pistol. Uh, G2 definitely score very high on T sides normally and have already made a massive blunder in this half to allow this comeback to take place. So Navi need to grab that opportunity by the horns. Try and win this round too. JL has, has gotten some revenge on Nico. The nades have been better. This early round, they've actually been getting the kill instead of just letting Banana get taken. And this will be the most passive start out of G2 as they finally respect the fact that Navi can win on Banana. You know, Nico was ferocious on Banana at the start of this map, but uh, he's cooled off at eight frags. Simultaneously as JL steps up. I like an Alexi JL Banana setup. You know, these two players in a bomb site, I think Alexi's grenades forever world class. And JL's got that swagger in his step when he feels like he's being properly set up but they do allow for the T's to get this close to the A site with no contact. Oh, they look, let Arch go completely. Eesh. Oh my God, they're gonna get crushed. You'd Surely. think, you'd think. Emet dead, missed shot from Wonderful. It's all on bit and they know exactly where he is. Crushed indeed. Yeah, I mean, you can't, they can't give up Arch like that. They had to be reorganizing to like retake lane. Maybe they didn't think it was A at all. So, okay. 
Good luck. At least we're going to see them try it. <laughs> yeah, good luck. Someone's going to Bernie if they win this 2v4. Yeah. Good luck indeed. Alexi, no vision just yet. JL tagged up by the AWP, so things go from bad to worse. Despair and desperation. Alexi finds another nade kill, as he always seems to. And unfortunately, that's the end of them. G2 do indeed take that seventh round. It's not the most lopsided T half that they've ever had, but it's still enough to work with. Hey guys, this is Team Heroic. Okay. This is Nico and Hunter from G2. Yeah. This is Phaser. Hey guys, this is Pink Zezahu. This is Miles. I'm Dupree, this is Shoes. And we are doing Headshots to Heartache. My friends and I can't seem to agree on which map to play in Counter-Strike. It's causing arguments before we even start a match. How do we find a compromise so everyone can enjoy the game without feeling like their preferences are being ignored? I think we've all tried to play a face-it match and then we, we go AFK for like 30 seconds, we come back and we see we play Anubis or something. And like, who the hell just decided to play Anubis yeah. or Mirage? Mirage and Ancient every day, all day. He will talk. Just, just pick Mirage. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, because everyone have, everyone because, like Mirage. Because we have to send problem with this guy. Yeah. This guy know how to play one map in phase. Mirage, 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 Mirage. So mirage. when we play in the team, it's usually Mirage. Uh, I have one rule about that. Yeah. You ban every time the map you play. So for example, you play Mirage, you ban it for the next game. So you, you, you always change the map pool. The more you play the map that you don't like, the more you will like it. Yeah, my boyfriend is stuck in the silver <laughs> rank. <laughs> and I've made it to Global Elite in Kurosak. He says it's just a game, but I'm starting to question our compatibility. How do I break the news gently that we might be better as opponents than teammates? Oof. Damn, what? that's rough. Oof, where's the one from silver to Global Elite? It's a big, a big gap. A Global Elite can't be together with a silver rank, obviously. Like, of course too bad. you can. They're too bad. Ah, oh, it's okay. First of all, Silver is a, is, a, is a great rank, you know? It's all about the personality, first of all. It's just a game. You have to have fun. Exactly. You need to have fun. You need to make sure you're there for each other, but uh, it's good to push each other to the limits. So I think you, you should boost him a little bit. If they're breaking up over Counter-Strike, then something is off. <laughs> if your uh, life is not depending on it, I think it's pretty pointless. Yeah, just get good. For that. My significant other wants us to have a Counter-Strike themed wedding. <laughs> Complete with bomb defusing ceremonies. I'm all for quirky, but this seems a bit extreme. How do I defuse this explosive idea without causing a relationship? I think, I think it's past that. The bomb is already exploded, I think, at this point. If he wants this for uh, his wedding, then this guy loves CS. Yes. Yeah. I'm a player and I wouldn't like this type of wedding. <laughs> I think you should just go with it. I think it's a great idea. <laughs> it's a it's nice counter strike. No. I mean, it would be kind of weird if you had the grooms <laughs> join up as counter terrorists and the bride going as terrorists. It would be kind of, <laughs> would be kind of funny. Think, and you are dressed in, like, you know, a CT. Ooh, and T. But. <laughs> yeah, and you can do that in your wedding, bro. <laughs> Pop a moment in your life. You don't feel like, yeah, don't do anything you're not happy with. But I think the best thing is just to be honest. Oh, it, 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 it's good, it's good. If I have a problem with you, I come to you. G2 up a couple rounds at the end of this one, but they left the door open for the recovery here from Navi. It was the 5-0 start from G2. Go kill. That's so modesty. Stop. Stop moving. Stay clutch. Stay clutch. Well, be easy, cl easy clutch. clutch. Okay. Easy clutch. Uh, yeah. Well, easy clutch. The sticker. Graffiti. It's only easy if you're Monacy, it seems, huh? Monacy easy. So Nico out of the gate, fantastic banana dominance, cooled off, and we get this resurgence from Navi. It's enough of a CT half, I think, to put forth a challenge because G2 notorious at times for going absent on the CT side of this map. Yesterday we saw the note in Monacy's hand that said, "Just get five rounds CT side Inferno." Mm -hmm. Well, five would only guarantee OT. We got utility here for Hooksy and Nico. It's the heroic setup. It's like the most popular. The G2, do, I've called the G2 mid setup when it's them on rifles, but what they do is just retake down mid versus B when the B attack eventually comes in. Something a little different here for Navi is they have the Hall's Lurk, or, who is just waiting in alt at the moment. So to try to cut this off. Imma shoots, mm. and they're working on this protocol already to come down mid. It's understood now what the setup is going to be. So 
let's see if they can still get away with the they're wrapping win. him yeah he knows that oh no. maybe he doesn't no, what he the hell down. i thought for sure he would have seen this first person run by yeah hell i thought bit made sound when he pushed ct he definitely did yeah all right well too many variables for nico to process can't manage the pressure and all of a sudden the rest of his team have been surrounded here on banana Ema is actually very far off, so they could have pushed oh. through, but Wonderful's Glock, a thing of beauty. Yo! Ooh, baby, four kills from Wonderful, just like that. No chance in the pistol. Damn. XQC. Dead, 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 dead. Four guys, banana, dead. <laughs> dead, 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 dead. Dude, chat, they're taking my, checking my views. You used to have a better XQC impression. It's the classic line of... Uh, Six consoles! Yeah, yeah. I could do excited. He's back. Sorry, I He actually was there on the first map, by the way. He was great. He got robbed because he was forced to- oh, I told you! I told you to look out for it. That's literally how Monacy won Inferno last time. Just like that, huh? Yo, pistol doesn't mean much. In the face of the Monacy scout, it is a 5v4, and there's so much utility here for G2. <laughs> a yep. dangerous sign of things to come. It's a big kill. The odds of this round being one, in my opinion, from the T perspective, on Inferno, it's like 45%. Now it's not a winning position. CTs can really press an advantage here. Some utility as well to uh, stick with. Oh, Nico's hanging on. Yeah, they have the smoke for the molly. Now they're trying to delay. Any HEs? No, nothing. They can't dislodge him. They can't kill him. They can't chase him. They can keep him at bay. The follow-up Molotov. Two players pushing Ooh. around Arch, and they catch Monacy. That's the scout down. And Nexa in a tough spot. Oh, they don't continue forward. Oh, we are going to keep the rotations off. That'll allow for Wonderful and the bomb to work its way up short instead. Now, Nexa is in the bomb site. It has yet to be cleared. The support on Arch is distracted. But they're not going to come in here and let their guard down. He'll bring down Alexi B, but there's still enough time. Okay. Beautiful recovery here from Navi. Yeah. I mean, G2 are really good at ecoing in that specific situation. And with that modesty kill, I thought, okay, maybe it's maybe it's going to end tragically for Navi, but they avoid it. That was very nice from Bit and Emma. Hit some sharp shots, baited out some good fights. All they took Arch very quickly. That's not that wouldn't even be a knock on Navi, you know, it's just to say on CT Ecos. You have lots of ways to win. It's very hard to figure out which site is empty on this map without actually committing players or doing a full exec or sending a player in to scout and die. Ooh. One more for the road. Nah, they'll let him go. So two up from Navi. They get past what was a very dangerous looking 4v5. Here's the scout shot. Ooh. See ya. Nice boys. <laughs> nice boys. Indeed. Yeah, avoiding that yep. tragedy is not small, and it gets them this round, which is Nico and half armor and a deagle with a Mac 10. No one else with armor. Couple flashbangs for Hooksy. Sending Nico to a potentially early grave. It's a good flash, but JL's able to spam him down. Pistol comes out from the Hooksy peak. And Hunter's gonna scramble. You know, Navi don't want to skip protocols, but. Oof. Oh my P2000. god. P2000. <laughs> there it is. That's enough to just deter them from following through. They're like, do we really run from this P2000 or? <laughs> You're afraid of a hooksy P2000. Oh, that, that second peak. Oh, Honestly, gets the eagle frag towards B. That's guns to pick up for the counter terrorists. In fact, is what is over there? An AK. Hmm, yes, nice. And a Mac 10 by the looks of things. Okay. Nothing more from the SMG. And Monacy. It's 
fight is no longer fun. Low health for the entire Navi camp, but I'm honestly going to let this one slide. So there we go. Navi in a lead early on in this T side. And we know that G2's defense isn't perfect. Yes. So a 3-0 start looks real good on Navi to extend this series. Yeah, if they want to put in the pieces, the pieces in place to perform the upset, well, they're on the right track. They survived the first half. Got five rounds, won a pistol. And uh, Navi's T side on Anubis, I think, was awesome. Fundamentally speaking, I think it, it showed that I feel like Alexi is using his pieces better than he was earlier in the year. That also they've gotten better, um, probably individually, at making better decisions since then as well. Was it JL that got pieced up by the P2000? Yeah, I think so. Okay, so his his is his experience on this T side is a Monacy scout shot down mid, followed by a Hooksy P two thousand. He thinks they're losing right yeah. now. Yeah, from his POV, this is a terrible half so far. Luckily, JL has a real enjoyment for life. Counter Strike included. Hooksy at the front of this. JL walks into logs. Ooh, we made noise. Molly on him. JL? Okay, that Molotov is just a warning, I, I guess. It literally hit JL as well. <laughs> yeah, but it can't pop. Smoke all over. Instant shutdown and a fallback with it. It's interesting how Hooksy didn't start shooting right away. It's like this almost this fear that if you start shooting and someone sees where it's coming from, you're dead, not them. Wonderful didn't shoot when he was blinded. Nico just toying with him. Remember when Monacy used to shoot too often as soon as he got flashed? Yeah, it was... He's not that guy anymore. Nope. It was a real criticism early on in his career. It's kind of the same way Art Frost flicks after he shoots. He's improved in that as well, you know? But if you don't have a little pizzazz in your play, then you're nothing special. Uh-oh. Yeah. Obviously, Nico hears all of this. That's going to force the rotate out from Hunter and Hooksy. CT smoke, of course. You could go for an immediate boost if you're the rotators. The fact that Nico gets even more damage in before the commitment comes out, it bodes very well for the defense. Jesus. Sure enough, drawn into the meat grinder. And that one looked real desperate for a second. The way he looks makes that look so calm. And the disengage, instead of over committing to trying to kill somebody in the cubby, jumping back to second oranges. How are you supposed to follow him on that fight? You always fall down to first oranges, then throw your flash, then swing. But uh, Nico makes all of those repositions look so comfortable because he does them early. Even when he does it on his own. But that, yeah, that fumbled jump. I mean, you saw how emphatic Nico got. You saw how quickly G2 started to rotate when they gave him those audio cues. He was blind. That's why he jumped back. Can't be jumping around like that, man. Can't be a bull in a china shop. You're talking about the guy in the cubby? Yeah. When jumping away because he got blinded. Right? Oh, no, they failed the boost. Oh. The T's, they failed the boost. There was two there? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They failed the boost, so when he fell oh, off... Oh, are you talking about a run boost or something? Or No, they were just trying to boost behind the smoke to get vision on coffins. Oh, okay, okay. They messed it up, and they just kept jumping. Okay. Been seeing that lately. People struggling to get on top of each other's heads. I think so. Can we can we run the replay? I don't want to be wrong about this. Yeah, it's okay. I mean, I don't know. I just saw one person there, so I don't. Even, I didn't see the boost, but yeah. there was a tech pause. Can't be making mistakes. The story I made up in my head was they just threw a CT CT flash, and everyone just got freaked out. Um. But at that point, G2 had all the info. They knew it was going to be the B side. And even if Nico didn't do all that, they still had two rotators coming in to help him. Yep. It's not the lights out performance from Nico that we were privileged to on Nuke yesterday. Mm. But it's just nice to know that it could happen. 
you know, if it had to happen once. You just want to see the ceiling. As long as it happened once. We couldn't see the ceiling before for Nico. There was no, not even a single game where he played that well in CS2. So there was no ceiling. But now we can it. point to that forever. Yeah. Because it happened at least once. And I have a hunch. He's slotting into his groove. But that's the first CT round posted from G2. Mid smoke out of CT spawn. And Navi. Couple limitations here. Alexi V, notably just the Tech 9. It was only a matter of time before this became the san standard CT smoke. Halfway down mid instead of up top at their choke point. Like, why not? Why not throw it here? You deny the same players the same vision. And the smoke is wide enough now. And straight out of CT spawn. And straight out of CT spawn as well. Love that. That's uh, huge for Inferno nades, for sure. I mean, they opened the skybox, but damn, man, they made these buildings really tall as well. That's true. Not being able to flash over apartments for the alt balk peak. Yeah, that's true. Should be bylaws. <laughs> the damn zoning in this place. Right? They're building too high. You only get sunlight until 2 p.m. Bit scouring the A site, man. It's it's weak balcony defense from G2 right now. I suppose there's a second player short, but you can see Nexa just banking on Nico holding it back. If Bit just falls into the pit, they've got problems on short. But Bit doesn't take that gamble yet. 35 this, seconds. This is Hunter's key position, and it's even stronger in this game. He plays here off of flashes to reclear mid and tries to stop full on execs into the site. Navi here not. Oh, wait, are they going to pick the right side? Hunter's actually running the rotation out of here. But the boost pays off for the first frag. Still bit a looming threat back in apartments. Hunter does come back in time. Bomb is there in mid. And the player in the bomb site's just dedicated to stopping play. <laughs> 10 seconds. And Nico is in the pocket. He could be a real pain. He's going to try to swing this. Pit player oh. covers. Pit's headshots are superb. And with damage through the smoke towards Moto, Suddenly, Navi breakthrough, down to the wire. And Bit. JL gives the cover, finishes off what Bit started. Bit is the hero of this round. This, the, this, the, the flash of fire that landed in front of Hunter completely obfuscated his vision. No exit, no save, no lead. It's nine to Navi. Wow, they could have died when he swung as they threw that molly at him, but it was just such a big explosion right in front of him. The setup actually looks pretty good because they had a high-low setup on mid, plus Hunter close by. But they dealt with both of those really important threats, only letting them get two kills. That's true. I'm not too worried about this from G2 in terms of what went wrong that round because they had the people in the right place for, for that attack. It wasn't a Hulse pop, which, like you pointed out, would have been very strong versus that setup. Instead, it was a lane take, which what, or a, yeah, a lane take, which is what they were looking for, and they still couldn't stop it. So, well, Navi have a lead. They've still got work to do. Two damage off a of nade. Nothing on the fallback. And JL anticipating something. He wasn't too far off, but doesn't get what he was looking for. They're waiting for the boost behind the wall. Keeping Monacy here on his own. They just completely left the kid. Going for the four-player A stack. Hooksy has confidence in this call. Yeah, I mean, he has uh, an off to play with. And I think too often, Navi pretends to take things. Yeah, they, they just pretended to hit the B site. Monacy did not fall all the way back. And they make believe... But Hooksy believe, believes in his own call. And Nico leading back. Starting to get frisky towards mid. It's down to the 25 second mark again. Short peak from Hunter. This time dedicated player watching Balk. So Bit's job will be infinitely more difficult. They do not have time to leave. They have to hit the A play. Hooksy has allowed them no out. Swing. He waits and he waits and he strikes down the offer just as Nico catches Bit. This time the adaptation, Woo. perfect. Yeah. Hooksy's call in response only one round later. Yeah, it was actually perfect and they were ready for the same hit again. It comes through. It doesn't look better this time around and 
Monacy playing on the B site is fine. Again, if you pretend to try to push someone back, then you better hope that they leave. Because if you don't, then it's full information for the other team. They did have one opper back on the B site. They never actually turned the corner. They didn't actually smoke front site to obfuscate his vision or force a rotation through CT. They went for the minimal amount of utility on B. It wasn't enough of a fake. A perfect chance now for G2 to take to the double digits. We're going to have a little powwow here for Navi. As they have to look in the mirror for a second and realize tough road ahead. Down a map. Down to just a single deagle for Wonderful. You know, two rounds where they really play the clock, but just the fact that Hooksy rotated over that quick, it's like, I mean, he saw it multiple steps ahead. That Hooksy intuition. No. No, what a waste. God. There goes all the wine in Italy. Or California, or wherever this actually is. It's decent wine either way. Yeah. Okay. We've got a stalemate here. Three rounds down to 30 seconds. So, can only imagine... To be in team speak with them as they talk that through. What is it that they need to change in the follow-up? I think they need to think about B-side more. Okay. Oh, this one's just going to get crunched. It was always coming. Comfortable hooksy 3k. As we said, pad those stats, boss man. 16 kills. Uh, I think this is a moment where you, you maybe try to look for an arch timing. I think the first thing that you call if you're Alexi... If you don't do something out of spawn, as in take B control, then exec B, no mid anything, yeah. then you've got to go push them out of brackets. That should be easier to do than taking the actual A site, but they have to push them out of brackets. If they feel like they can do that because they had G2 flash retake mid, then, they, then they're taking a lot of time to talk about this. So they can try to push them out of brackets and then use that to go back to B to get a rotation off the B site, get Nico alone or have Monacy alone again and try to hit it. Or they try something they haven't tried yet. And that is a CT split through Arch. To the B site. That's right. also a call that takes a bit more time to talk through. It requires a bit more time to do. You don't do that 30 seconds. Do that, you know, 45 plus. Um, but it is something new they haven't tried. Well, they've been allowed. But if you ask me, it's not going to be lane. It can be halls. It could be Arch. It could be a B split. Which page of the playbook does Alexi flip to? Which member of G2 shuts it down? They're going to throw a spanner in the works here. Oh, this could be big. Just on the edge, Hunter. Don't step on that fire or Bit gets the warning he needs. Well, he can go up now. I mean, he doesn't take any damage here. Bit's concerned about it. Just took a glance behind him. But he gonna, I mean, maybe Hunter he just falls just back, actually, in. if he's not going to go peek over this. Timing missed, but he gets alt. Oh, did he get spotted? No, he didn't. Yes. Bits, Wait. Yeah, Bit's talking. Bit sees it. He's found him out. Oh, Hunter. He didn't make the play for as long as he did. And then gets caught trying to slip the net. So man advantage, Navi, to tie the game at 10. We go for the splits hold from Monacy. And Nico has all the pressure on his shoulders. At least the smoke to slow things down. It's at 50. Smoke's bad. And there's no rotation for Nico. It's going to have to be a heroic hold. They pop open the smoke. They figure him out. He takes one down, but Wonderful's got the trade immediately. And they should be concerned about another defender, but there's just nobody here. Desperation here from Hooksy. Oh, pretty significant damage on one, but it's such an easy invitation to go into the save. Hunter could have won the round could have just corralled them into Nico in a potentially stacked site. Had no idea where. But he just missed the timing on Bit. Just missed the timing, yeah. There was some kind of read, right? That Bit was going to walk up by him and he had the perfect angle then he could escape through that same smoke. He cleared me. Yeah. He doesn't know. He doesn't know that Bit saw him at that last second before he went into the hall, so... 
That's timing. It happens. A lifeline for Navi. And I think they just go into something new because they get that kill early and they go right to B. They had Nico solo on the B site. Maybe they were going to try that anyway. You know, Hunter didn't want to take too much of a risk, but the timing was there to kill Bit. It was, yeah. Yeah, and you think, um, I don't know, the he way really he played it, obviously, the issue. really scared that it was being yep. held for some reason. Yep. You know, uh, the smoke looks very suspicious, right? Because it's not that deeper smoke. It's just a little bit deeper than normal. And you can see Bit checking it on interval, but alas, three to banana is the answer here for G2. Comfortable amount of money for the last few rounds. Another tight map between these two teams. Back on Anubis, it was Hooksy who came into his own individually to win three rounds straight. We're really looking for Hunter or Nexa to kick it up a notch. And Monacy solo again. It looks like it's the protocol as they fall back to the A site. Lots of utility has been used to establish this little piece of control. He's got his line. Ooh, gives it up. Peeking into this is so nuts. Not worried about that T side op and that nade is okay. A little chip. Yep. But you know what it look at this. Late smoke down to 30 seconds now before that comes up, and Monacy still has full vision. And oh. they want to just disrespect it. The no flash fair. isn't good. Nope. Monacy. They aren't even committing behind this. They wanted to just get that kill, hopefully. Well, they have been able to flush him back at 40 seconds. Four players on A still. Ready to go. Ready to press this. Nexa in the pit. Last time picks up the kill towards Bit out of apartments. No nades now, only Hooksy, one flash. Hiding in the corner with another teammate on site. They could very well hold this. There's the response back from Hunter. It gets a little squirrely. Peek out from Pit only. A little damage, nothing more. Massive moment from Hunter with three kills on the play. Monacy and Nico versus Bit. The talent is stacked in this 2v1. And with that smoke towards Moto, he gives himself room to work, getting off of the site and buying a little time. Now that bomb plant in the heart of the bomb site. Monacy and Nico shoulder to shoulder starting to press up. Nico's head almost there for the taking. Bit does catch one in the back site. That's Monacy out of it. He doesn't know where Nico's at. Now he does. Dives away. Nico's got the kick. Oh, the Glock. What? The Glock from Bit in the 1v2 versus the stars of G2. Did he have to hit that? Yeah, I think he had to get that kill. With no ammo left in his primary weapon and didn't spot Nico, even though he what? saw both of them push just through that smoke. Oh my god, they even get the 5 before they have 4 on A. And when you said squirrel, it was looking at players spray transferring to people that didn't exist. Nexa getting one kill from the pit, Hunter getting three. That one's gonna sting. Huh? Ooh, yeah, that, that one's gonna sting. That was huh? just, that was really that was really messy for the CTs there. They had everything in place. A five v four and four players on A. Yeah, I like that smoke bit gave himself to work with as well. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah he could jump up on the on the truck. Like you could see both CTs on the approach, but you know they they really get caught by that. That was huge. Nineteen frags for bit. Navi take a lead with an open door to 12. They had that 12th round in regulation back on Anubis, weren't able to close the map, lose it in OT. Will they be facing a similar situation? Couple grenades, all G2 have to work with. It would take something insane. So Bit steps up in map two of this series in a very important clutch. And I don't want to remind everybody, but I have to. G2 let Alexi get that defuse. Yep. Yes, they did. 
tough pill to swallow. It's said they might. We might have to talk about this at round 24. Mm -hmm. We're almost there. But I think this is Anabi's first lead. They also had a lead on Anubis. They had 12. This was a 5-0 start for G2. Hunter's 5-7. Looking to slip into Moto. Emes turned his back to this. He actually has the timing now. He's got a, he's got a kill or two in hand. Yes! Oh, he didn't see Alexi. Oh, oh my Dude, that god. That could have been a double. Yeah, that was very scary. And then he could have grabbed the gun, and then who knows what. But yes, site secured by Alexi. Very important trade frag right there. He could slip away with an AK. Helps the economy in the final two rounds of the map. But this is indeed two map points for Navi. Solid. Navi surviving another anti-eco. That can obviously get scary no matter how good you are. This map is just where things go wrong versus pistols, shotguns, SMGs. Hey there. <laughs> what you doing, bud? <laughs> Bit's going to get another couple kills. So up to 21 and 10. Lights out performance here on map two out of Bit. Somebody that uh, obviously we have high expectations for. But you sort of forget about in this Navi team just because we are still, you know, looking at Ema to touch back the Paris performance. We want Wonderful to fill Simple's shoes. Yeah, he became Simple's right hand after Electronic left, but uh, <laughs> Bit has definitely been the one who everyone's been the most worried about communication wise coming into an international lineup. So he's been given some time to get used to things. And I mean, I saw him pass a test on the Navi YouTube channel, an English test. Oh, that was so impressive. There you go. And since then, it's probably gotten a lot better. So, and I mean, listen, he speaks the international language of headshots. Yes, and face it, which so everybody does have some sort of lexicon for this game. Right. Here we go. Guns back in the table for G2. But it's been a nice slow burn out of Navi. A couple of stressful rounds down to 20 seconds or so. See what the pace is out of this time. Next up, he's going to get the flash and apps. Oof, dives back away from the fight versus Bit. Yeah, that Bit is such a nuisance in the apartments. And if you let him get into Pit, you are doomed. Nex is looking for a good round here. Again, big shoes to fill in this position, CT side. Gun out. Honestly, careful. Oh, peeks into it. Ooh. Takes Bit out of apartments. And I mean, that opens a door for Nexa to slide in. So Alexi has to take the responsibility that Bit had. And he's not going to do it alone. They're going to go two into the apartments. Three, actually, with JL. An yeah. emphasis out of the apartments. I don't know if we've had this. So many numbers. It hasn't fallen off to said He could smoke oh right god. now. Oh my god, they run out. Oh my god. Nexa, how does he survive but that? his team kills him. Hunter. Oh no. But now it's 2v4. Hunter slides by. And again, Hunter in the pocket of this A site has saved them more than once now. Been a monster. Even if he makes that a little sketchy. The fact that Nexa doesn't die to the first player. Wonderful's got a little positioning still to work with. He's got the time to pull this off. But does he have the skills? A shot towards short as he pieces together the positioning. And another smoke to deny line of sight. But he peeks before it pops. He gets dropped. And G2 won away from overtime again. Hunter, look, kill your teammate if you kill everyone else too, right? Yeah, all shoot, good. Shoot them so, all. Yeah, and <laughs> Nexa gets a little lucky there with the timing. That was a tricky call from Alexi because nice after shots. Bit dies, like you said... He's the most obvious person to be alone up in halls. But so you sliding think, off, man. Yeah, it was it was unfortunate that he goes past. Unlucky or bad, it's hard to say. You know, that made him a, a huge mistake nice. that they couldn't afford to make. Nice but um, one thing is for Nexa, he doesn't move from top belt when he could have dropped into pit. They probably thought he went big pit or that he was playing in mini, and they're going to have to trade him down there. All right, so here we are, round 24. Want to find out if this game is still on. There's really no calling it. Careful. JL not afraid to tango on Banana right now. I know what G2 are telling themselves. If we don't get timing, we're going to win, you know? But if. Navi have been doing a great job of finding them. Big if. JL's had a solid map. Lots of impactful kills despite being negative. That's a big pack of Navi's players. They hear all this presence. Flashbang from Nico. Hooksy takes the peek. Nothing there for now. 
Last time they worked back from banana like this, we had that excellent call out of Hooksy to go stack four players a site preemptively. You have to rearrange. There this was, time he waits. There was some power behind that punch. I think they were ready to exec on an in-between timing. They have given up map control, conceded it. Hunter is ready to leave the a site. Starting to peel away. Yeah, they're starting to think this is for sure going to be B. Hooksy down to a frag grenade. Nico just leaning back in the site, waiting to hit his headshots as he tends to. A well-timed nade here could make his job so much easier. It could open up the smoke. No rotation here yet. Hunter scrambles, but Hooksy, he gets a kill through the smoke. Waiting for a flash. It'll certainly help. Bit actually changing positions, and Hooksy slides through the site. Again, late game regulation. Hooksy steps up, but JL goes so deep around that he is inside the church. Smoke fades. Bomb plant to the left side. That player is stuck. That's a lock Nowhere off. Nowhere for Bit to go. And Monacy knows he has him pinned in. Oh, JL coming in from the opposite side. Starts the fire. That's both players confirmed. JL could line them up. He gets the first, nails oh. the second. And Navi not going to let G2 get away with that fumble. A clutch from Alexi that sets this up as a possibility. Late round decision making. JL steps up in the final round of regulation. No overtime here for map two. Semi-finals on the line and Nuke up next. Another absolute nail biter of a map, but this time Na'Vi keep their heads. They put G2's Inferno CS2 streak to bed, but boy, oh boy, did that one get close. Pure resilience coming out of Na'Vi, right? I, I, I thought this one was going to OT after that penultimate round. Me too, and, and honestly, I think Hooksy did as well. I think he said, what a miracle. You know, I, I think he referred to how bad G2 were playing in, in some of these instances, in some of these clutches. Bit again, massive performance coming in here on Inferno. We're going to see the last round coming in here as well. They're actually playing it pretty well, G2. Nico in a Great position, finding the first kill. Hooksy with a Naden CT spawn. They find the first two. Unfortunately for Nico, he didn't get the second kill right here. Then something happens where Bit and Hooksy trades position. Hooksy finds another one, and then Bit comes into play. Already had a monstrous performance, and then maybe Honda get caught off guard a little bit right here. Into the 2v2 Maui, a player stuck, and then Jail Well, the spray down. It's good, but it's not pretty for G2. Yeah, this spray down is a death sentence for G2. Otherwise, I do agree. I think they played it pretty well. I mean, the crossfire between Hooksy and Nico was solid. It felt like they actually had a good amount of information, too, that that B hit was coming their way. They didn't have anybody rotate early enough on it, though, but I will say you have to just think about that Alexi round. That I think that's really where this game got so confusing for them, where, where G2 felt like they were on fire. Mm -hmm. They kind of have a little mental lapse in this one, and I feel like that probably lingered in some ways. Yeah, let's flip it on back over to that first half and hear exactly what was going on in the team speak in that mic'd up moment. What? Fight! Leave next up! Defusing it! Yeah. Yeah. Nice! nice. Whoa! Sure. Nice! Nice! nice. 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 I mean, yeah, you can just hear the confusion on the side of G2 with how Alexi was able to get away with that. Luckily, he obviously had a kit, but that really halted the momentum from G2. We could have found two or three of these rounds, you know, the bit 1v2, 1v3 clutch, the last round here for JL as well, where he shouldn't have gotten both kills. I think Nexa was mm. the one failing to spray. I think that's why Hooksy said it's a goddamn miracle. It's a goddamn miracle that we can play so poorly and lose a map like Inferno where we're supposed to win. Now, take nothing away from Navi. I think they over exceeded our expectations. They won against G2. They played a good CT side after that round right here, but uh, to be completely honest, you know, without Bit and without his clutching ability, which we're going to see right here, I don't think Navi would have won. I this was this was just crazy. I, I want to say that the the vibes were obviously great for G2 on that first map, and we heard it. But there's some things that are just left to be desired with this roster. I mean, okay, but this is this is still a great round from Bit that I do want to talk about. Yeah. Mm. The fact that the the truck angle he makes for himself here with the smoke, like one ways don't exist in CS2 anymore. Yet Bit was still able to find a really nice angle on Amonesi and. I kind of can't believe Pimpy just pulls out the Glock no. and just hangs out like this. This is crazy. 
It, it is crazy. It, it's a well-played clutch by a bit. And I think that, you know, that sums up the game for me at the very least. I felt G2 as a team were better than Navi. They had a better idea of how they wanted to execute, how to get into these favorable positions. But when it came down to close out the rounds, yeah. the Navi player stepped up. Should, should, should we go into another one? Round 17? One uh, uh, yeah, that's going. where Nico has, you know, perfect opportunity to get the kills, obviously defending the A-bomb site. And then, uh, yeah, just falls in Navi's favor. Yet yeah, again, it is a story of kind of the mistakes coming out of G2 and Navi capitalizing on those. I mean, it's another 5v3 briefly in this one. It's uh, And it just falls all apart. Like, this one's going also in my cringe compilation for G2 fans. <laughs> is, like, Nico's right here. He's so close to winning this one. He tunnel visions onto the bomb planner. And made, like, such a necessary kill from Bit to find that right there. But all in all, this was a, another round where it's just, like, G2's been getting, I'll say this. Navi actually, to their credit, are trading very well. Mm. They, these are very brief 5v3s, even though we can call them as such. And yet, Navi consistently are finding a couple kills in succession back. And so playing off of each other, the way that they played as a unit, that really played in their favor. Whereas G2 sometimes just kind of, they, they would get some kills, but it, there wasn't always like that fallback B, plan B. Yeah, and I mean, if you're a Navi fan, great to see Bit popping off because we had, you know, some questions, particularly coming in with this new roster, how exactly he'd be, uh, you know, fitting in with this. But this map, he was looking really, really solid. Yeah, by far the most impactful player on, on the server. Not only the clutches, but also his abilities in the rounds to, to do damage. I think he finished with above 180 on this game overall as well. This round here against oh, Hunter yeah. as well, oh, the, timing, the timing, if you remember, that could have been another round going the way of G2. And I think that's what they're left with right now. The Navi were really pressured to the full extent right here, yet they were still able to step up to the occasion. Bit played fantastically well. And as you said, it's nice to see because he's been fairly inconsistent in CS2. We saw him in Sydney play fantastically well when when Blade was standing in, then we saw him fall off a little bit. The fall finals were shaky, and now finally again, he has a great map. So it's hard to play Spit right now, but when he's playing well, that's good. I do have some questions, though, flipping back over to the G2 side of things. And I think it's apt that we focus upon that because we know that this is, you know, has been historically a really dominant map for them. Um, obviously, with Nexa coming into things, how much of an effect do you think that's actually had uh, with JKS not being kind of that solid anchor player that we know he could be? They win this game with JKS. It's simple as that. Uh, there was moments where Nexa was in pit. Some of his players on site were in crossfires. He was supposed to be the benefactor of the crossfire. He misses the entire spray, doesn't get a kill from that position. That's what enabled bit to actually find that 1v3. Game would have probably ended there. His apps lurk didn't do anything for, for G2, actually. Um, yeah, there was just, I mean, Nexa had zero impact in this game. In fact, it was obviously negative impact because he had a really bad KD and was playing such a pivotal position. I think it's it's one of those reasons and one of those scenarios where we're going to point it back and say JKS is going to be missed on the CT side. Yes, His anchor definitely. roles on the different maps, that's when he made the most impact. I don't think G2's T side would have been any different with JKS compared to Nexa. It's more so the CT sides. When Nexa is being put in a in a static position where he had to get the multi-kill, I would bank my money on JKS getting more kills in those positions than, than Nexa any he, given day. He would have got the trade on the last round. This would be OT at least. That's it, yeah. yeah. Well, Navi do manage to push, push us to a third and final decider. That will come down to the grounds of Nuke to decide who will be going through to the semi-finals. We're going to head things to a quick break, but when we're back, don't miss out on any of the action. Nuke coming up shortly.
One more place in the semi-finals and one more map to decide. It all falls down to nuke in the battle between Na'Vi and G2. And it's a map where we've seen both teams play at this very tournament with these very lineups. So starting on the Na'Vi side of things, we obviously saw them go up against Ents. Um, it was surprisingly close, Maui, and it, uh, it, it required a comeback from Na'Vi to seal it. They had a really strong T side that actually elevated them because their CT side only netted them four rounds against Ents. I thought that game was over. I thought that map was over. I thought Ents were going to pull off the upset. But um, when it comes to the CT side, I'm, I'm really actually pretty concerned about Navi in this one. I don't think that they necessarily know how they need to be rotating all the time. Uh, if I really want to just pin that on one person, I think this is a map where Simple is so sorely missed because when looking back at that game against Enz, Wonderful had the most opening kills. He had five opening kills, but he only had 13 kills in the game. He didn't always know what to do mm -hmm. after he got that kill. And that's kind of what I've been talking about with Wonderful and his progression as a player. Yeah, sure, he can find the opener if you put him in the right spot. He's going to hit the shot, but it's just about well, what's he going to do next? And I think Hooksy can call circle around this guy. Yeah, I, I agree with your point that I'm worried for, for Navi's CT side and I'll amplify it by Nico. You know, Nico's performance against FaZe on this very map on the T side was absolutely amazing. So those of you who watched it, he dropped the 30 bomb. The highlight package you're going to see right here is him playing well both on the CT side but even more so on the T side. So if you're telling me that Navi is struggling on their CT side, if Wonderful can find the openings and find the solutions, then when this guy is fired up as you're going to see in this highlight package, then what is the answer to him? Who's going to shut down Nico feeling comfortable on you? The, the thing is that if if Nico's doing that on the T side, you know who plays outside for for the side of Navi? It's it's Alexi. Yeah. It's not it's Ouch. not a fair matchup. That is not gonna end well for Navi. So Alexi did very well versus Ends playing outside, but man, Nico entirely different beast. Yeah, he's been looking. I mean, absolutely insane on this map throughout all of CS history. Um, obviously we're gonna be knifing for sides, so we'll find out very shortly where we will be starting. Um, but if we do see G2 starting on the T side of things, if Navi are gonna have to bolster a defense, um, what are you hoping for them to? Have I mean, they're going to have to improve something, right? Because Ents and G2, that's two very different calibers of teams already that we're talking <laughs> so. about. I would want for Navi to just probably play a little bit more actively because I, I find that this one duo that's generally speaking so active for Navi and JL and Ema, they're usually so good at finding little proactive plays to make something happen for themselves, but they're just stuck on that A bomb side. I want to see them get a little bit more active, maybe take a couple more risks on the CT side in general, send maybe a couple rifle players, leave one anchor on the site at best, but you don't need to just play the same two man A setup every single round, that's for sure. I hope Alex B is. is honest enough to call for help in Yacht, because I agree, yes. if he's alone out there, he's fighting against Nico, he's going to have a tough time, but you could counter it. You could counter it by placing Wonderful out there to help him. You could counter it by a couple of CT side defaults or setups, so to speak, that can, you know, throw G2 out of it a little bit. I am also worried because I do know G2 likes to switch up the pace on that C side. They are not afraid of rushing inside. They're not afraid of sending Nico Yacht, getting the entry and then rush ramp, as an example. So in terms of the pacing for G2, I think there's a lot of stuff now we have to handle, and it starts with Alexi B and Yacht if they can shut that down, that's a step in the right direction. Where's the Orping head head looking coming into this? Because obviously Anubis, that was quite the tail. Inferno, not so much. Obviously, traditionally not a super Orp heavy map. Um, but where does Monacy then stack up to Wonderful in this? Monacy has just been incredible on this map ever since Hooksy joined it. He was so... It felt like he was shackled when he was playing with Alexi B, that there were a couple set starters that they wanted to use for Monacy. But after Hooksy's joined this lineup, I think Monacy has called his own number more times than not and to such great effect. And especially after he gets that first kill, he's always finding the next fight too. His multi-frag potential, once he gets on the sniper, is unparalleled in this I'm matchup. I'm gonna take a wild guess and say G2 won that knife. At least they're pretty heavy <laughs> okay, in, yeah. in this moment, starting on the CT side, so we can flip the coin a bit and say, mm. okay, Navi T side, what do they have to do? I think inside have been a, a bit of a question mark for G2 for quite some time. Hooksy is not always feeling comfortable in that position, can sometimes be zoned out. Next side on ramp, we had the discussion yesterday, mm -hmm. he's no JKS. Maybe you wanna apply a bit of pressure yes. and see if you wanna be aggressive, because I made the point yesterday that I believe Nexa can be smart smart enough to play ramp, he's not going to fight as much as he is. He's going to rotate lower, he's going to give up ramp more often than not. So if you're Navi and you want map control, go out there, take ramp and then work on from there. So where are we ending up in terms of our predictions, gentlemen? Does it make sense that G2 would close this one out? Can they bounce back? Or do you think the momentum that Navi have gained from that Inferno win is just going to be too much to handle? That felt like an aberration for Inferno to go the way of Navi. If I have to give you a scoreline for it, I'm going to go 13-8 G2 in this. I will be mega disappointed if G2 is not winning this game, so please don't disappoint me. <laughs> well, I think we are ready to be getting this game underway. JL looks like he's got his headset getting on. And we can throw over to our casters. Connor, Mo, where do you think this one is going to be landing? Mm, I think I'm in tune with Maui Snake at the moment. I do like what he 
criticized Inferno for. You know, maybe just being a little bit of a one-off. The fact they pull that off seems like seems like all they're going to get in this series, in my opinion. But I'm not the expert. You are, Launders. Well, Tell me what you think. Yeah, I just don't know what Inferno has to do with Nuke in that regard. So, well, it's like a brand new game here for a G2 on the map. I think what Nico did versus FaZe, I would bet it doesn't happen again. It's just That's just something that you wake up one day, everything's lined it up clicks. perfectly in your body. You're physiologically sure. perfect. All the molecules. Yeah, I mean, that's just something that he can do, but it's just not going to happen all the time. Um, that aside, I think Nexa did a pretty good job when it came to playing on yes. the ramp. Yes, he did. Definitely good enough where it didn't feel like he was making a problem for the rotations. Wasn't super extra like the way that Rops was playing on phase. So... So there will be pressure on Navi. I don't know. I wouldn't be surprised if this goes 10 rounds plus for Navi. I will still take G2, though. No further ado, map three, quarterfinals, returning champions in Abu Dhabi in G2, a map away. And with that performance from Nico yesterday in his back pocket, the odds of it happening twice may not be high, but I think there's a lot of fingers crossed that we get to see some lights out CS out of him yet again. For sure. Him said it most best play, not best player to watch when he's on form, like most beautiful or something. He called, he called Nico the most Ooh. beautiful player, I think he said. It's happening, just a beautiful man. It's starting strong. Two kills as Nico emerges from the stairs, and the window's already open for Emet to try and press around. Double kill, triple kill back. Oh, it's happening in the worst way. Oh, Emet JL, three frags right there on the stairs. Hunter trying to bring it back. And Hooksy mm. gets popped by JL. Wait. The dual Berettas find the trade frag bit. Oh, oh, you heard oh. him? Hunter, dude, smile. Just I don't know, man. I'd be pretty tilted. <laughs> what happened on Inferno was not his fault. And I would... I'm. I, we saw that game end with Navi winning. I didn't see anybody happy on either team. Sure. And this is post-simple, where, you know, that was like the source of the frustration or the... That was where it was most visible, but uh, I can understand why. I don't know. Thing is that Nobby, you know, they won Inferno and they literally could have won the first map too. Yeah, Nico, like he made that three v five. Yeah, he knew they were going down lower. Yeah, he's got a point. But uh, yeah, what happened versus Phase was that Nico played like that and they lost. Mm -hmm. Surely they can't waste a performance like that twice. Two master classes wasted? Oof. Damn, he's already down to 27 health. Good pressure out from Squeaky. Big pack of players out of Navi crossing behind red silently. JL switching places through the smoke. Hooksy's gone deep into Squeaky. They seem aware of the possibility. Hunter's here to also make sure that they just keep spamming all this. Really JL dies, right? Meanwhile, yeah. Nexa's downstairs. And so they deal with the A problem. But they've got issues on B. Yikes. Not to mention, Alexi B, still alive, upstairs, will eventually make a move here that could cost G2 the conversion from the pistol. 4v3, Galil in the hands of Ime. And you've got Nico, not only low, but just stranded. Oh, God. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. Yeah. No. Yeah. They had head armor, okay? The investment comes in. The split comes out. G2 go down. With one single kill, Hooksy's still got the best gun in the round right now, so they might want his head. <laughs> what makes that possible? Four player secret cross? What makes that possible, first of all, is. I mean, they even got the. <laughs> <laughs> they even hurt Nico, and then Nico, they still got the kill on JL, but they didn't damage the secret cross. They didn't molly the secret cross. They let the cross smoke come out, didn't nade it open either. The only thing they had that was good was this 5v4. And then this happened. Somehow Alexi got into... Actually, I don't even know where he came from outside. He would have been JL, pausing with them. So were, he, he left the three players to go down secret. <laughs> yeah. Honestly, JL is just... He was such a presence hiding in that smoke grenade that you had Hunter, Hooksy, and Nico all preoccupied with the squeaky position. That's, that's why secret falls for free. Yeah, yeah. Now the thing is... That's weird, right? Like, they they don't know he's there. And yet, three people are staring at one position. So, yeah. That's redundancy. I guess there's a slight chance that Hooksy bumped into him while crossing and, and felt him that he wasn't pushing through. I don't know. Jail, is that you? <laughs> <laughs> the 
Ramp looking clear for the taking. Next up. Not able to hold that back whatsoever. He's down here on control with the P250. So Nico's M4 is going to have to be the end all of round three. Oof. <laughs> Alexi instant headshot. Nicely done. But Nexa at least grabs the M4. And Alexi from the top. That's bomb dropped on the shelf of B site. What? Plus, he gets up into control. No trade. Plus Hooksy's 5-7 frag elsewhere. Things are going to get weird. He still has a sight. And he's in control. They're planning... Ex Exposed to decon, not a problem. Okay, Ooh, okay. Wonderful okay. comes back. Peels one off the play. Now the bomb is planted back site, but the post plant's up here in control. It's not for them at all. And Hooksy's coming down from the vents, so he's going to get some vision on site. Now there's no kit, which means retake has to get going. Wonderful one kill deep. He who planted bomb made his, made his job hard for himself, and with a CT right this close to his left side with pistol, he'll get the one off of the ramp, but he has to press out. He has to go all the way, and the pistol's gonna end him. G2, forced by back. Yeah, perfectly cut off there from Hooks. He really didn't, you know, could have swung out and ended that round, but knew he won it playing that position. Hunter's definitely pissed off right now. Got some refrags in there. Got the retake, and no rounds in succession. Yeah, I mean... Nico, Nico definitely made a mistake by like trying to swing out while he was crouched after he took that, those first shots. Or it's like betting your opponent's back, right? You could do it, but you did just show him where you were. Listen, I really enjoy playing. It's fun, but let's fucking close this round out, okay? <laughs> it's a bit too fun. Come on. That's good. I like that. That's well, fun. nice to know Nico's having fun in CS2. Yeah. Nice smoke there to block main. Pops on the roof at the edge. What do we call those? Cascade smokes? What's that? When a smoke grenade's off the ground high enough that Valve made them extra long. Waterfall smokes. Waterfall smokes. Molly ahead of the pack. Ooh, Nexa runs. But that's okay. We like we like a we like a ramp player that doesn't die. We do. You, you know. Okay, so here's where that like flow chart starts to branch off in the other direction. He could not die, but they are down a player. So not dying is the most important thing you can do. But if it's the only thing that you do and you don't know how to retake ramp, well, you've stunted the rotations a lot. Look at the pressure on Hooksy upstairs by himself. Just trying to stay back sight. Molly to the left. Wonderful burning in it. Oh, bit comes in from heaven. <laughs> you didn't see that one coming. Yeah, but that's the thing, right? Yeah. The left ramp open. Yeah. Just stuck there with nowhere to run, nowhere to hide, and no support from the rest of the team. So back and forth we go, four rounds deep. To be honest, that's my game plan. Like, get next to rotate down every single time. And just abuse hell? He needs to level up, right? He needs to level up. If if Navi are worth anything at, as a tier one team, then they, can, they know that no one's even going to fight me when I come ramp. Then I'm taking it for free every round. So that's why when you see FaZe, you see Roth, excuse me, like one of maybe the best ramp player in the world, when he plays very committed spots and tries to frag out, they need to do that because they cannot let a team think they can get away with it for free every time. So in the debut, it was fine, but uh, Nexa needs to show some range. And uh, otherwise, hey, Na'Vi, why shouldn't they just keep going for it? Doesn't change the fact that staying alive is the most important part, but look at this. Hooksy dies because heaven gets taken. There's no one watching ramp. Why They're is he so outside surprised? Well, maybe the outside rotation of Monacy was supposed to be there in hell to cover it. We don't know. Yeah. Uh, but that's Hut Squeaky and Heaven are all basically his responsibility after that happened. I don't know where the second player was, A. They're just both outside. Up until that Tech-9 blasted him from heaven, Hooksy thought he had a chance at that A-hold with the Molly on the left. You thought wrong. Economy on the line here. Fomus. Ugh, CZ. I've seen worse buys, but it's an important one here. And Alexi calling the right targets for the time being. Pressure through 
the smoke. Oh no. Whoa. Dude, Ema is piecing up Nico at the moment. Yeah, he ripped him up. That's good. Round after round, it is Nico dead in the opening fight. Two and five is his start. Monacy and Nexa could try to come reclaim this, but a second kill for Ema. He plays the electronic role on new Navi, taking secret control. Bit jumped off main, so Hooksy heard him drop, but Bit's not going to let his guard down. Third free frag coming out to Navi's favor. Ema can just guarantee secret control. The only thing that could stop this bomb is Hunter's hut push. Sweep away wonderful swiftly. And Hunter has been playing CS. Hey, if he pushes forward instead of falling back, now he's between the pack. Wow. He's now he's got the bomb cut off if he keeps watching T-spawn. Yeah, he's just multiplied his presence and he gets the free clear ramp and maybe even come back. We'll see. They're going up to heaven now. His only other teammates in secret. Sell me on this one. This will be tough. He has avoided the secret player. Oh, so Is it possible? Is it possible? Oh, Hunter can use this. Yep. Now three players on the bomb site, though. Bomb itself, front sight, and yeah, he's just caught out in the open. So, Navi, slow squeeze, but they get there. Two consecutive, 3-2 lead, and an open door on this T side. This gets chaotic, and Navi win rounds. I, I think they have so much to be proud of. This is, an, you know, not an easy nuke to win, but they've gone through hell and back between Anubis and Inferno. Nice Miha, bro. You're fucking controlling. Nice. <laughs> that was uh, Emma, I guess he was saying. That's yes, sir. You. Really great job outside. Um, yeah, beating Nico outside, obviously. That's the name of the game. Call him Immatronic if he can beat out Nico across this half. time far less to work with so right now it's just banking on hunter only player putting forward frags for g2 we've got monacy on zero still so get this off online nade pushes the berettas back just simple a burst and it's a fast flank from the pistols into lobby they will catch one hooksy not going to go down alone but this round far too easy for navi Halfway through their T side, four round of wins already. Mm, done. Four up, solid start, and Navi, I'm sure they feel in full control. Dude, T side. It's getting rolling this well, this well, this early. You honestly love to see it. You do love to see it. They've actually. Provided a lot of variance in this half, too. They've attacked outside. They've attacked ramp. They've hit upper straight on. So there's a number of things that Navi could do in this round, which makes it a bit foggy for G2. What do they think is coming up next? Honestly, can he get on the board with no kills so far? An open hand and no utility in the pouch. Yeah, versus FaZe, they were so much more liberal with their HEs outside early on. Oh, yes. Oh, another Lurk slipped by, and Ima again versus Nico. This head-to-head okay. -head is one-sided. Eight and two. Dodging the op shot from Monacy, who dives into bombsite. I mean, outside belongs to Navi. Man. Time and time again, they've already set themselves up nicely for the A split. They'll leave Bit and Ima outer. Yeah, this rotation's actually not bad for the CTs, because they still have ramp control, and they drop Monacy upstairs. But it takes a frag. Monacy fired that op from heaven, and now he has to strike something down in lobby. Oh, oh man, wonderful. Dominance. Jesus. Leave Just it. slams him against the putt push, and now Emad looking for his next victim. It's Hooksy, who just missed it because of the air conditioner. And so Ema creeping in, finds him on the ladder. Uh-uh, he's Just, not dying now. No, sir. Easy reload as he takes to heaven. Yet again, it's going to be a miracle from Hunter. Or another round to Navi, and he can't get Lobby back. They're not in it right now. Wow. And the layers on the play here for Navi. I mean, it banks on everybody hitting clean shots, right? Ima, two awesome frags. Wonderful headshots inside of Lobby. But you're dead on. That, that lack of nade aggression, the lack of any kind of red presence... Like, Navi have been playing outside a ton, so how come G2 haven't been responding as much? The, the lurks, though, I, I like that the they're using these two-pronged lurks with 
even other players coming outside, whether the smoke screen is them crossing or the smoke screen is the lurks, they're getting away with one or the other. And the fact of the matter is, this is a point and click adventure. It comes down to Emma beating out Nico when he's alone and when Nico's alone outside in the early round. They wanted a bit more energy on the team, is what G2 were looking for with this roster move. Well, that seems to be what everyone's implying on the team. But it's it's easy to it's easy to get loud when everybody's winning. Okay, so what happens when you're losing? <laughs> He's right. See, when you talk about JL, uh, that's somebody who. I see is, you know, he's the jack of our time. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah, he's got He's got it through yep. thick and thin. Win like, or lose. Yeah. That's why I said it earlier, you know, JL loves life, loves Counter-Strike just as much. The, Can't help. He, people like that are extremely show rare. It. Worth their weight in gold. Nico's Desert Eagle looking for something. Monacy still hunting his first kill. But with pistols only, they've already crossed bomb. Three players in secret stairs. You've got Hooksy down, ready to hold back, but it is Hooksy and Hooksy alone. And the closest rotate is that Nexa just at the top of the vent, and that's, of course, the M4, right? That solo rifle that G2 are working with here in round eight. Not in a position to hold back Navi. Warning shot over the bow. Hooksy trying to pump his chest. Nexa does have a chance to slide in here. Definitely could put the barrel to the back of the pack. Three of them, and Nexa only manages the one. Wonderful again, turning on a dime. Yeah, he's so good at but that. But eh? comes out with the Desert Eagle, catching Wonderful as well as Hunter, so pistols could still work. Nexa set this up with his kill and his dink. Controlling the weapon, JL catches a glimpse of a CT upstairs, but oh. it's working. Hunter with the P250, double on the round, and G2 work a little bit of magic to rob away the eighth. Hunter's been keeping his head down throughout this game, and he has been really trying to rack up the frags, solve all the problems, pick up all the pieces, clean up all the messes. And I think at this point, at least on an eco, it brings him something. And it's a round where you gain a little bit of extra steam because you were saving, so... For G2, this is the lifeline. It feels like there's been a defining moment in each game that has come back to haunt either team as the game has gone on. The Alexi 1v3, the Monacy 1v5. Maybe for Hunter, it's a bit of a smaller deal here, but on the eco, when things are really going south, sort of mood-wise and round-wise, he picks up an important round. His kills matter. Monacy also gets on the board at the exact same time. Oh, but time to get his first. Here we go. There we go. Little presence outside. A fight, some punch out of G2. And look how quickly it deters Navi's opening moves. Gets him off top silo. Has bit wounded to 43. The option coverage there is fantastic, right? They cross thread with the op. They put nades to silo. They have two people swinging outside. So it's been multi-pronged lurks from Navi outside. And they finally respond to it. Better late than never, but still trailing by two. Gotta love the rotation as well for, Mon for Monacy. Like, the most vulnerable next spot would be ramp. Exactly what they got a lot out of. I could, I'm could. i positive it ends up... If Monacy is holding here, he should have a great time. But where is Nexa in all of this now? Looks like Hutter Heaven. Oh, yeah, he's playing Furge, watching Hut. Just drop back sight now. And the trophy push. Another great call out, actually. Oh, you saw the leg. Saw a little leg. Yep. Now the three players inside A on high alert. Yeah, unless this is a vent drop, they know it's an upper hit. And the time is ticking. Are they coming back? Looks likely. Monacy on the angle. Three players about to peek oh. him. And he lines up two. Oh! Third kills his. Two shots, three frags, and a fourth round for G2. Posted. Monacy goes above and beyond four frags on the round. Mm -hmm. We saw the aggressive stance behind red, and you nailed it. Beautiful rotation. Moves as quick as can be. Now, JL doesn't have the bomb, so no sweat here on the brow of G2. Better late than never. That wasn't one 
one could call out of G2. It was two and three reactions. And again, right after the round where they win with pistols, they go, okay, I guess we can win. For some reason, not believing it before that point. But to get that X Factor round, they turn it into a back to back. And maybe they could start being friends again. Just like that. The wind out of the sails of the ramp hit. Didn't even need Nico, who was standing in the corner. Hate to break it to you, Navi. You were never getting into that ramp room. So Blade takes his first time out. Yeah. Now it's a game of now it's a game of chess. And this is where Blade has to try to read the reaction. Because I think they found so many vulnerabilities, but they were a little bit too obvious. They got away with that already. Now they know that G2 are going to step up their game. They need to also go to the next level. It'll be interesting to see what Navi do after this call. Because they do have options. They did an upper hit. They have done lots of outside stuff and ramp. I couldn't tell you what they want to try now. Not the best economy ever, though. Thin margin between Navi and a few saves at the end of this half. Ooh, early pressure though, Hunter trying to stay sharp. In the face of the utility, we get the Tech-9 inside of Hut to lead this charge. Bit's right behind him, great flash, but Hooksy still hits the first shot. Bit comes through, Alexi gets his. Vent player though is critical. Oh, he got another. Hunter nails it in the backdrop, but Monacy misses a shot on the floor of the A site, and now Wonderful's Deagle is down beneath with a bomb plant front site. It's secured. They can't stop it. The retake. They're walking out. They're over top. The Desert Eagle. Oh, he gets some damage in, but he's concerned with the right side. Nexa's already out from heaven, but he's lost track. He jumps spots. He peeks him through the oh, silos. Oh, oh, oh. Just a couple shots on the burst, and Emek gets the six. God damn. That was a well-played clutch out of Emek. He denies that clutch from Nexa, who was clutch, versus phase on Nuke. Honestly, a lot of maps Nexa has put up the 1v1s and 1v2s, but how many days in a row could he do that for Last G2? Emek coming in big. Trade frag to Hunter, who's lucky to get that second kill. All right. In the millisecond before his death. Man, I don't think Navi were fully expecting to win a round like this. They come in with three guns. One of their only options, actually, with the money that they had was something fast, like an upper hit. But it works. It's there when they need it. Bit top main. Nico looking for a fight. But leaning back as the smokes goes up. And again, it's going to be that, that aura of unknowingness. How many behind the wall have crossed? That was a blade call off the tack. But the 1v1 means true, that eh? uh, Navi have no utility. They can't go lower on a round like this, surely. They literally have to frag so hard to get this bomb planted. Ooh. Mm. Nicely done. Monacy again, That's same angle, same two. success. Ah, there's, uh, I would say there, there should be no way that this works for G2, even though they don't have the lower rotations yet, because they don't have control side. And... Um, they don't have any smokes. Oh. Got Monacy's op down there. Nexa's in front of... What? Oh, no reaction. Ema. Oh, okay. Okay, he gets one, and Nexa traded immediately. Uh, we've got Nico on this angle the whole entire time. Man advantage for G2's retake to come out. Wonderful on a Galil. <gasps> Catches what? Hunter. Head turned. And Hunter's down here before anybody else is in position to retake. Hooksy and Nico have to come in together. It's got to be synergized. And Hooksy's got the utility to make Wonderful's job that much more difficult. Alexi flushed out from his position, and it's confirmed. Wonderful looking for the impact. Where is Nico? He's late out from decon, but that's exactly what they need. Alexi forced out, and G2 take a fifth. That oh, was good utility out of Hooksy, but man, what a situation. I think Monacy must have been looking at his radar, right? Had to have been. Yeah, like, I mean, he didn't even shoot. Yeah, he, he didn't even shoot. So... They barely survived that situation. Thought it was going to be much worse. They even deny the two lurks. One ramp, one um, outside. From whoever was playing inside of a liege. Might have been Nico. Yeah, Navi nearly fragged their way out of this. Yeah, you can see him eyes flicking. Trying to process everything, but... A well-timed peek. 
But a chance for G2 to tie up this half. It's gonna call on their T side. Oof, almost. Monacy has recovered. I begin, what, zero and five, zero and six to start out this half. Oh, uh, Nico but, again. I mean, Ima is the guy. <laughs> Just him over Nico outer. We were talking about outer and Nico, and we didn't know if Ima could handle. Nexus double kill on the ramp is enough. But it's also weapons and grenades falling into the hands of the opposition. And Emek comes through with a second. He's got a third of his health. The Tech 9 from Bit rips Monacy's head off. And Hunter is called on again. Trying to keep up to Emek, who has 15 frags on the map. Bit doubles back. And Hunter's gun is now empty. He's going to try to chase this out. But support up from heaven. He's doomed and he knows it. He's lost the bomb site. Has no teammates to play with. And Alexi is planting downstairs. <laughs> he doesn't even know it. Our analyst said if Alexi had his troubles on the T side outer, then he needed to call on somebody else to help. Well, it's Ime who steps up big for this offense and gets Navi majority rounds. Hey guys, it's Alexi B and wonderful. Sensei here. G2 team. Goldman. Faze here. It's Maus. Team Vitality is here. Team Hero here. And today we're looking at some CS money, e cosplay entries. Actually, really bad with skins. Yeah, like same. really bad. It's black? I mean, it's an obvious red line, right? Yeah, it's AK red line with four yeah. and hollows. That's perfect. Creative. I love this. What is that? What? Uh, Ooh, I know this one. The Emperor. Whoa! That, that's a really good one. That was good. Yeah, the red line was bad. That's right. Yeah. I mean, the left guy, he but looks... What does he have on the back? Like a banana? Does the skin have a face? I think we are the worst team to do this. Only Kai is something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 He's... <laughs> yeah. He got it. Uh, how can someone just do You have something in your mind? I have nothing. Mate? Oh, what? <laughs> brother. Ah, brother. Brother. <laughs> it's a good costume. We are just noobs with skin. Uh, good, good, good BB, so. It's a 5,000 monkey. No, no, it's the gloves, the caution. Bro! I, oh, I don't know. I like the cosplay at least. <laughs> huh? Is that an iguana? It's five it's, serpent. No, 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 no. It's oak chameleon. Ah, oak chameleon, yeah, yeah. Is that a real chameleon? Is it eating something? Wow, so there weird. is a skin like this. <laughs> what, is this? what is this? What is this? Ice? Nightmare. This oh my god. This is, this is, this is the best guys. cosplay we've seen. <laughs> I love it. Oh, uh, the Aki, Aki, yeah. Aki, 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 uh, I don't know. Like, I cannot even picture the skin. Oh, it's so hard to look at a skin like this. Safety net. Really? Oh, is this one? <laughs> oh, this is easy. Prince stream. Prince stream. Prince, Prince, Prince stream. Prince stream. Prince stream. I know this one. Prince stream it is. Yo, really good. <laughs> good you decide which eco is gonna win the Dragon Lord, so make sure to click the banner below and vote. It was all talk about Nico, <laughs> but uh, yeah, uh, opening duels, six of them, only one one. So nice to show, not show the deaths. Of then. course, in contrast to that, oh! Ime, four and one in his opening duels, Dude. and all of them felt to be like they were on Nico they outside. Were all, so they were all Nico, basically. That, yeah. my friends, is a 16 kill, 140 ADR T side from Yo. Ime versus Nico on Nuke. Ime is Hime.
we, we go day by day here, folks. That's what I was saying. Like, you can't, you know, everyone's crossing their toes, hoping Nico does what he did. But, like, it just doesn't, it doesn't happen His like that. The chakras are in line. Uh -uh. And G2, they're going to try to send it straight into the dual Berettas. Ime, there's two more. You want some? Come get some. He's ready to hold back whatever else is left in the tank, but G2 realize it's desperate to recover a 3v5. They're going to be down 5-8. And Ima straight to it. Yeah. 19 frags could secured be already. He could be acing right now. Dude. A 140 ADR half into a pistol ace? Dude, you, you just there's no coming back from that. It's cooked. They thought they were going to rush out Hut. They thought they were G2. They thought they could just puncture through that defense like it's nothing. Molotov will make Ime uncomfortable. JL picks up the fourth frag of the pistol round, and Nico nowhere to be found. <sighs> Navi in eighth. A three round lead and a CT side ahead. Oh, man. Yep. Oh, yeah. Can't help but feel like this is where Wonderful turns up as well. Yeah, put an op in his hands. Yeah. Watch him shine. CT op on Nuke. His favorite opera is simple. I mean, you get to put bit on ramp as well. Let him do his thing. Hasn't had to do much on this map, despite him being the showstopper back on Inferno. This will not be easy for G2. That's for sure. And if only they had, you know, stopped Alexi from defusing that bomb. Honestly, there's so many things from both teams at this point that have gone wrong. I would just tell myself there, there's no reason to, there's no reason to think about the past. Our opponents are gonna mess something up. All right. That, look, they're all smiling now. Navi are going to screw something up, all right? So? Yeah, and G2, he'll have a chance to get back into the game. And then they're going to screw something up. And then Navi are going to screw something up. And, and then, then G2 are going to screw something up. And then we're going to screw something up. We're going to screw something up. And then up. production's going to screw something up. But somebody has to win. That's the point. There will be a conclusion. There is a semifinals on the line. La 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 la. La 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 la. <laughs> la, 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 la. All right. Vitality waiting in the wings. That is the semi-finals opposition for whoever wins this map. Here and now. Wonderful. Easy pickings. See ya. Nico's Glock gets one. Nexa's P250 a second. Blink and you miss it. The conversion is free. Navi, keep the ball rolling. Mm -hmm. My god, Ime's having fun. He's having fun. And that's a dangerous man. Yeah. We haven't always seen... Flashes of brilliance from him since, of course, the Blast Paris Major, where he put forth the second highest rated. The sole reason it was in overperformance, like you oh talked about in the interview. I mean, yeah. it sucks for him because he just did an amazing thing and then everyone has to, <laughs> yeah, you know, sure. shit on him. You're just shitting on him. Anyways, it's because the thing is that it's an overperformance because he had so much space back then, you know what I mean, as sure. a star player, and he wasn't that guy going on to yeah. Navi. So, of course, you weren't going to be able to replicate that level. A performance. Well, he's doing it um, now. But he also had a lot to learn. He definitely wasn't perfect. He wasn't that versatile. He was very good at something that Shuhei, you know, was good at calling around. Yes. And he had Weaponized. to learn more. Yeah. But right now, this this main put perfect. Nico comes through. They also find the frag as Bit was trying to get aggressive up out of the ramp push. Nico gets his and falls back. It kind of leaves Navi scrambling to go and fight this outer. They want to find the frag back, but they've just shown their backs instead. And Nico, well, very well done, just peeling them into his domain. And burning a little more time off of the clock as well. Oh. <laughs> Beautiful. Oh, okay. That's got to feel real good if you're Nico. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Versus Ema, and it's a one tap. And you couldn't get that going on your CT side. Yes. But if and you, you know, if you want to dominate a T side in contrast, if you struggled out there, it's not, it's not probable, but it's possible they can... Or if they want to work hard enough, you know, that's what it comes down to. Do you want to work hard enough today? What else you got to do? Last event of the year. Exactly. Returning Abu Dhabi champions. You already went through these two maps to get here. These two arduous, frightening, miserable, long, horrifying maps. You know what I mean? Hell, you went through to get here. You can do this. You are Nico. You are Nico. You are G2. You are Knuff. Ooh. Costly. 
bit getting traded out towards ramp. Nico, blop. See ya. Nice shot. But he's not satisfied. And if they don't win this map, he won't be satisfied. And even if they do win this map, he might still be pissed the off. The World Finals champions mm -hmm. coming back into this. Returning champs? I mean, Abu they Dhabi? Didn't, they, didn't, they didn't lose JKS to another team. They benched JKS. Their choice. Okay. They made this bed. So there is expectation that they make this work. No, Abu Dhabi's trophy lift for G2 set the stage for a spectacular 2023. One that has fizzled out since. High highs, low Good lows. Low. They only won those trophies with JKS. Uh oh, uh oh, pissed. he's he's pissed. Oh, bit just softening him up, and the he fire starts to get him. Oh man, and he gets back to ramp. Yep, just like that. Oh. Suddenly, wonderful's Desert Eagle in this spot. Not all that bad. You know, Bit on T-side, didn't have to talk about him too much because Ime was doing all the heavy lifting, but Bit on ramp could be a real problem. It's a good dink, but there's no follow-up out of Wonderful. Oh, that's a nice one, Nexa. That could have been way worse. Yikes. Oh my god. Not ideal, but not the end of the world. And also, not the round one. They only take ramp control at 50 seconds, but the problem with taking ramp control on these anti-ecos, really scary to think that the CTs were all willing to rotate instantly. Looks he comes back. They're going to hear this. But the, the CTs are oh, still nice up here. Oh, fire Reads Ema in the corner. JL comes back with a recovery. And Nexa was so close to death that JL doubles down with ease. Bomb on Hooksy starts to get planted. They're concerned about heaven, but there's no threat up there. It's double lobby, one vent. And no plants yet. The CTs could swarm if they want to. Hunter's in the pocket. Takes one down, but there's the oh. frags for Navi. And there's not even a bomb no, plant either. Bomb. Was it a mistake to take ramp in the way in that timing? I wonder. On this anti-eco. Because they tricked them, They tripped themselves up. There was three players upper ready to push lobby. They could have gone down stairs, but I know what they were worried about. They were worried about four CTs instantly being lower because they have nothing to lose. And so they came back to lobby. They found that they had to tear through all the CTs and then there was just another one and another one. And finally three more. And uh, Nico had no way to even fight back. He had no control in this round whatsoever. Got hit by like four bullets, one taps in a row from Bit. And to be fair to him, it was right in front of his Molotov. Sure. He, yep. He, he mollied yep. the cross and caught him right behind the smoke. No, you're right. Zoned. And boned. And suddenly this defense looks rock solid. G2 pick up the third of the T side, but... All of a sudden, money on the line and 11th looking easy for Navi. We got to see something, man. We've got to see an uptick from Nico, from Monacy, from Hooksy. We, we can't criticize Hooksy as hard if Monacy and Nico have the same amount of frags. For sure. Your impact players are not online. To be fair to Nico. That was a good establishing round this half. Yes. He just needs to get more. He got a little unlucky last round. He'll have one more chance next round. But he just can't miss from there on out because he had a whole CT side to take the edge off and couldn't do it. Bit slips down to the B site. Tech Nine's coming at him quick. Oh. Nice split and a good headshot out of Hooksy. But the star of the show is in position and he's got a teammate of Alexi on the other end. There's a squeeze within this bomb site. Dueling off the AK, JL just jumps into his death, but at least Eman will catch Monacy. And Wonderful looks to throw himself in. Nico through Vince as a late play here. There's no rush. They're not ready for it at all. 50 seconds. No problem, but but the CTs take the initiative. Alexi and oh. Emac get all the players off the site, and then they're on high <laughs> alert, so two apiece, and Navi shred them. Oh, they could have planted for decon. They didn't know it was open, however. <laughs> JL is very happy about that. That's a massive steal. I call it a steal just because they lost the sight and the man advantage bit not getting a single kill when Hooksy chased him down. They try waiting for Nico for a second, but then the players on the site also just end up in duels whether they want it or not. Yeah. I mean, they signed up for it. Nexa could have been tucked in dark. The two other players could have hit behind the silo. They could have, yeah. They exposed themselves to doors and it costs them. They just didn't. The thing is... 
Downstairs is not one without control or decon. You have to have one or the other. And they didn't have either. That's why they were fighting control side. So Navi got lucky that uh, they didn't check it. They checked decon to fight through it. That might have been a lost round. But now... Oh, wait. I thought G2 were buying this round. They invested last round. They invested last round. Oh, my God. That's it. You're telling me Nico gets one good rifle round, one unlucky rifle round in this half, and then he's out? That's it. That's looking like all they get. Oh, well. And they're just going to get shredded outside as well. No coverage from any kind of a smoke. No miraculous Desert Eagle headshot from across the map. They've got nothing to work with here. And if Monacy wants a fight, he's going to have to jump into the net. Serving up a distraction as the other players try to creep forward. This is Navi securing 12, no doubt. Hunter, Nico, a headshot apiece. Something. But a real chance now. You've got another frag as you press into main. They're starting to throw this. CTs can just lean back and bit make sure that the A site doesn't fall. That's the bomb in the open floor. It is Nico with a spectacular attempt on the Deeg. Oh, just no. like that. Not again. He's in the open and he knows it. Bits along the wall. No, oh Nico goes down. Oh. Too much to ask. What? A 2v5 queued up, but at the final frag, he falls. You could feel it, but it's too late. No way you hit that. It is too late in this map. <laughs> what the hell? God damn. There's no doubting the potential is there. But he was cancelled by Ima in the first half. And the runway is short in the second. You lose the pistol, the conversion, and you get economically reset with a force buy. The economy is against G2 on this third map. Navi a single round from semifinals. And well earned. They fought so hard. Oh, and Nico goes down again. Just like that. 10 and 16 could be his final score. From the brink of elimination versus Ents to an eight round comeback on map three just to get the chance to keep on playing to now four frags from eliminating the returning Abu Dhabi world champions. Utility here for G2, trying to get some kind of a guise outside. But Bit has support in Wonderful. And he is not going to drop this opportunity. Double kill out of Wonderful. He's got three on the oh. round. And he's got Bit right there to work with him. So Navi, sure enough, just have to push Hunter over the line. And he doesn't even have the bomb. This is a Navi that we considered such an ambitious project and still late results. And it was ambitious when Simple was on the team. But to fill his over. shoes, steps up wonderful. And nobody steps up bigger than Ime tonight. Map three, by the skin of their teeth, they push this series to a third. And this is where it ends. The yellow and black strike gold in Abu Dhabi. Ime take a bow absolutely dismantled Nico outside. And after yesterday, when we see this greatness coming out of Nico, we said he was back, that CS2 could be his. Meet your maker. Navi through to the semifinals here in Abu Dhabi, but comes at the expense of G2, the end of the line and the end of 2023 for them. But my word, what a masterclass coming out of Ime on that map three. Did not expect him to be picking up those sort of numbers, but my oh my, what a result for Navi. Yeah, what a beautiful way of, of doing it, if you're Ime, right? We spoke about Nico coming into it, Nico being the world card player he is. He was always doing so well in Yard, and Ima just shut him down from the very first moment he could. He dominated Nico and Yard, he dominated G2, and they could never really find their footing and honestly speaking Maui I was a little bit disappointed that there was no pushback sure you can get off to a wrong start or a bad start for that matter as well and not really feel comfortable on the server to begin with but I always had that feeling that G2 would fight back at some point it just there was just never no response coming in from them they just didn't have the runway we saw the almost pop off between Hunter and Nico bringing back a 2v5 down to a 1v1 mm. even just with the deagles but it just wasn't quite enough Ima was so fantastic in this game the way he was taking that outside yard space it was like I was watching him all again on Gamer Legion, yeah. getting, getting hyped up for what he was capable of then, how he was able to be the reason that that team had such a great offense towards outside, and it's been such a far cry from him 
until now, until the World Finals. It feels like Ima has finally showed up once again. He's finally finding some comfort with this roster. And I want to say something. I like that this Navi roster, throughout all of these other changes that other teams are going to, they could have looked and gotten a little bit of FOMO too on the whole trade window where everybody is seemingly trying to find some upgrade here or there. But Navi has just stuck with this project. They're the longest standing roster still at this event. And it seems like it, they are finally bearing some fruit for their labor. And it's a point that you were bringing up aptly so before the game yesterday, the fact that you, you know, you look at the puzzle pieces that Na'Vi have, sure, it's not exactly ideal with Simple not being in the roster for now, but the mentality, the attitude that they've shown towards the pieces that they have at their hands right now. It's the, the coaching from Blade, I am sure that is helping them immensely. The fact that Alexi B himself has such a strong, stoic nature where he's always just going to look at what's ahead of, ahead of him and he's going to just say to himself and his team, we're working with what we've got. You're, you're, you guys are my teammates and he's going to do the most to elevate them. And I was talking about before, some of those other rosters we looked at before Pimp, how he's just brought teams like OG to relevancy. Ones where they're just so underpowered, and yet he's doing that again. I, I still stand by the fact that I think that this lineup, in terms of firepower, well behind a team like G2. There's there's no way, if the calling were one for one in this game, there's def definitely G2 should have been, yeah, you should have been the winners. You should have been. If you if you have that much firepower, you should be taking it. But the Alexi B, the calling, Ima himself had a great pop off here, but the calling on top of it was great. Yeah, I agree with that, and, and I think that's the difference, right? We, we came into this game and we said, when you look towards the Navi lineup, there's no clear star, there's no Nico, there's no money, see what in that camp, but when Ima is playing like the superstar he's supposed to be, then that narrative changes a little bit as well, because I think, you know, when you look down the, the Navi roster, there's a lot of there's a lot of firepower, there's a lot of, um, I would say, there's a lot of structure in it within the LXCB system, and it's not a team that is going to fall apart from one moment to another. No. We've seen plenty of games where they're facing teams that on paper are better, but they always put up a fight, so if they can, I guess, transition into having Immer being the star player, being the guy that more times than not shows up like he did here on Nuke, then all of a sudden you have a new narrative that is surrounding Na'Vi, a well-structured team, well-coached with Blade, and they have that one guy, maybe two guys in bit sometimes, that can pop off and win games they're not supposed to win. And that strong, stoic nature coming out from Alexi B nets him a spot in the semifinals here in the final tournament of 2023. So let's get a few celebratory words courtesy of Banks. Na'Vi find themselves into the semi-finals. And Alexi, I'm going to come on to this. You're a Nubis pick, been looking so good as well. It started off so strong. You get the Monacy 1v5, and I wouldn't say that's what made it crumble, Wait, but... Was it was a 1 on 5? Yeah, <laughs> you didn't know it was a 1 on 5? He didn't know it was a 1 on 5, that's a bit tough. But it was a Monacy 1 on 5 that um, started to build them back into it. But did it affect you guys that much? Because we didn't even expect it to go to overtime. It definitely affected us okay. in the CT side because we were leading 5-0 and yeah. we knew it was a free round. We even uh, expected them to pop B and we fully owned them. Then I just remember the situation where I think it was one on three. Like I thought it was a one on four, right? But on one on three, he kills uh, Valera and comes Tempo. Yeah. And it's like only two alive now. Then I, I tell Miha like, on my contact you peek. And of course, like Mones is just piecing it together and he smokes me off. Yeah. And I'm expecting him to obviously go around. He jumps. I don't know if he saw me or not, but he just insta kills me. And uh, already at that point, it should never go to one on one. So, yeah. But you then hold off, right? And we see you go into Inferno. Now, Inferno for you guys has not been looking so pretty recently. What did it take from you guys here to be able to bounce back in that? Because for me, you didn't crumble like the mentality we saw in previous games, right? In previous tournaments. Here, you look like a stronger unit. I honestly think that uh, a lot went into it uh, when we went outside. I think that the expressions on people's faces look like uh, we lost the uh, we lost the series. Mm. I tried to pump everyone up and tried to have some individual talks to to say a couple nice words or just to like I was believing in the comeback. We we last time as well I think we won the first map 1614. Maybe it was Inferno or not, but uh, we won them on Fir Inferno last time on CSGO. Both games. Yes, and I just knew that it's not rocket science. Then we, we, were, we were trailing back 0-5. Mm. Then I have this uh, lucky one on four where I go defuse the bomb. I think that sparked something, mm. but it was still super tough on T side. But I'm just so glad we made the comeback and going into Nuke after yesterday's showing against Enz, I just knew that we have it in us to make it. I wanted to touch on this nuke though. Was it important you started on the T side? Because they got happy. I think they won the knife. They chose CT. But I, we looked at that and we spoke as the, the talent team and thought, actually, maybe Alexi will be happy with T side. Yes, I think it's so dangerous on CS2. Uh, 
uh, you, saw, you saw Cloud9 today pick T side on Mirage mm. on Mouse Sports first map and they got completely dominated like I think it was 13-1. Yeah. Maybe they re regretted it, but I think about it differently. I think sometimes like once you're in the like once you're in, in the decider, you both won a map, right? So you're kind of like in the game already. Okay. And now if you have T side on the decider, it can really bounce back and forth. Like you saw us play, I think four or five rounds back and forth against G2 here at the start, both with scrappy buys, just yeah, taking awesome. rounds that we, we should not take. So it's 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 a brawl. Mm. And I do think that no matter the side, we just uh, finally took over the momentum. Now I've got to ask you quickly, just how do you feel your chances are now and how important was this win for you against G2 going into the Magic Ends Vitality? I'm just, I'm just so happy that uh, we finally get to play on the stage. We failed many times. We also beat two teams now in, in a series where I think uh, they were better than us, at least ranked, okay. ranking-wise. And we were still a team without too much experience together and we managed to win these two teams. Obviously, Vitality for us is a really tough team. We had uh, very tough times against them, but it's a good thing that we also played against them so we kind of know the style. Mm. But I'm just so happy to be on stage and to make it to semis. I'll see you in the arena tomorrow. Very insightful words coming out from Alexi B as always, but you just made a very apt point, Jacob. Think about the fashion that they had to win this one. And obviously full three maps, but the maps they did take, not what we expected, right? No, we came in saying that if Navi want to stand a chance of winning this game, they have to win Anubis. Then Monacy's 1v5 happens and they end up losing in overtime. And you think to yourself, that's it, game over, done, dusted. Inferno and Map T2 have never lost as a unit, not with Nexa, not in CS2. They still managed to turn it around. And then the fashion, they win Anubis where they dominate their opponent. It wasn't a game. It wasn't a back and forth. Only the first four five rounds remained competitive. From that point on, it was just Navi all over. So yeah, to me, it's the fashion they win and that is a testament to their character and how well they actually played tonight. Yeah, whilst it's a win for Navi, unfortunately it is a loss and elimination for the side of G2. So let's get from words from Nico to round out his 2023. G2's road ends here for the World Finals and they were our previous World Final Champions, but it's a different look, G2. And I'm going to start with some of the positives here, mate, because Anubis, it looks like it could have been down and out for you very early on there. You get a little thing like a 1v5 from Manasi. How much of that was a, a like motivating positive factor to bring you guys back into a game like that? Uh, yeah, I mean, obviously his round uh, helped us uh, to get going. I think uh, even though we were down 0-5, we are still confident into uh, Anubis. Uh, we feel pretty good on that map. Uh, practice has been going very well, and I think against FaZe yesterday should have been very... Uh, I think we just won the, the game yesterday on Anubis as well. So overall, we feel really good on the map, and uh, obviously Elias Clutch just helped us to get rolling. And uh, yeah, and the Clutch itself was uh, like one of the insane Clutch I've seen as well of him. So uh, yeah. Now for Inferno, this is a great map for you guys and for Na'Vi it's been looking rough recently. Normally though when you see on your T side like eight, nine rounds is consistent that you get on it. Did it come into your heads at all about our oh, seven wasn't enough or anything like that? I don't know, like honestly we just threw the game away. Like there's so many rounds that we just, uh, just literally threw it away and uh, I don't know why it happened. Maybe we were like a bit more relaxed or something but uh, I think this was a uh, 2-0 for us uh, any like it should be any time of the on the, of the week so uh yeah it uh, it sucks but uh we played some good CS but we just crumbled in some situations that uh, lost us the, the inferno for the Alexi clutch where he got the ninja defuse right well not ninja defuse but defusing like when you were running away from the site he got the one kill right was that a bit where you were still happy still a good mood or was it a bit where you start to say okay this isn't acceptable yeah, after that round, like that, like we were still fine. Like it was like, okay, fuck it, we can still break them. But the problem is that the next round we left the the freeze time. Uh, we left the spawn without a proper plan. Uh, we were forgetting to drop some uh, guns, and uh, we just weren't ready for their aggression. And that's the round that got them rolling. That's that, that's when they connected three rounds, and uh, that's when uh, they started dictating the pace. So uh, I think it's not that Alexi's round. Uh, has lost us the the game. Mm. But I would just rather, rather say that the rounds after that uh, we just didn't adapt properly. And for Nuke, you guys, you won the knife. You were very happy getting that CT start, right? I, I saw that at least on the cameras, you guys were smiling with it. But I was talking to Alexi, and, and we thought this as well. Their T side had looked pretty good. Do you feel like it's a it's a gamble on which side you start? There, are you still confident with going for a CT side start in that? 
No, we are confident in our CD side for sure. I just think they caught us a bit off guard, and uh, honestly, like I don't know what team uh, like was doing outside, but he was just killing me pretty much every round, and uh, he has won in the game straight up. Like okay. uh, he has been getting entries outside on me. I wasn't ready for like so many crazy plays by him, and uh, he definitely helped them just get so many T rounds. But uh, overall, I felt like we find our groove back into the half, but then again on T-side we never managed to get rolling and uh, yeah, I mean, like, they played better on Yuki than us, but they should have been 2-0 and we should have won against FaZe yesterday and uh, we would be in a different situation, so uh, there's a lot of positives to take from this event, I think we played some good event, uh, good Counter-Strike and uh, yeah, focus on the, the next year. Roll on 2024, thank you very much Nico. Yeah, props to Nico for giving us a few departing words, but man, Jacob, this has to be such a bitter way to be ending out 2023 for you. Yeah, because I don't think Nico is wrong saying that it probably should have been a 2-0. They probably should have won Inferno had they not threw all those clutches. Uh, it probably should have been, a, I don't know if they should have won against FaZe yesterday, but they could have at the very least. The problem is the narrative changes, right? Coming into this tournament, this guy right here, Nexa, we were not sure where to put him. And I'm still not sure where to put him. This move, you know, getting rid of JKS, putting in Nexa, yes, there's certain positives that we've seen already in terms of the moods, the vibes, but I'm not sure. I'm I'm sold on it, Maui. I, <laughs> I, this is this is a downgrade. It's a downgrade. It's a downgrade. Simply, simply put, it's been a downgrade. Nexa obviously didn't have the best time here on Inferno. He was not positively contributing at that ramp defense. And I want to say, I think. Like, playing on G2 does something to people, man. Like, Hooksy, when he came into this space, he had this bright smile on his face all the time. He was willing to do every podcast that asked him to jump on it. And now he's suddenly just, like, scoffing at the fact that his team lost. He said, when they lost Inferno, he literally said, oh, it's a miracle they won that. It's like, come on, dude. Like, have some respect for your opponents because yeah. if you're going to play like that and you're going to lose like that, well, you deserve to lose. And so it, with map number three as well, that wasn't even a competitive affair. They didn't change their CT side setups when Nico was getting dominated again and again by, by Ema. Honestly, finally goes out there, maybe round seven. That's finally the time you de decide to make an adjustment. It's too late, man. Too late. I think the issue for me is that it leaves more question marks, right? I would have loved for G2 to come into this tournament and reassure me that, yes, them coming into the major, that's going to be all right. They're going to figure it out. But I am left with more question marks than, you know, than, than answers, I'd say. I think they did show good Counter-Strike. I think they did play fantastically well against FaZe yesterday. Mm. I think up until the point where they lost the 1v3 against Alexi B, they were also playing good Counter-Strike. But it's just disappointing. And it makes me wonder, you know, coming into the major and coping Hagen coming into the armor, is that going to be that five-man roster or are they still looking to potentially change? Yeah. I'm not certain. And that, to me, is an issue with a, a team that is supposed to win trophies, a team that is supposed to contest for the major. Yeah, this time last year, G2 obviously lifting the trophy right here in Abu Dhabi. This year, not having the opportunity to do so. As we do move on to look at our playoff bracket as we do move in to the stage and, more importantly, the crowd tomorrow. Vitality versus Na'Vi. Again, that will be a rematch of what we saw in the group stage. FaZe versus Maus. I love this one, Maui, because there's a little someone called Frozen <laughs> and I I'm excited to see how he fares against his old teammate. Uh, Frozen, I don't know. I don't really want to call him a traitor, but it kind of <laughs> makes it a little spicier, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. I mean, the fact that it's kind of the fight for Frozen, right? If Maus are able to take down FaZe, oh, that's just going to be just desserts. They're going to feel so great about themselves. Shuhei's probably like, oh, my star player gone. Well, they're in the same place tomorrow, and so he has a chance to show that Frozen made a mistake. Well, let's move on to round out our CS Money play of the day for day number three here at Abu Dhabi for the Blast Premier World Finals. Now, we're going to be seeing a little bit of a double in this one, so what do we starting off with it, Nico. Well, an absolutely fantastic 1v5 coming out from Monacy. I'm sure you've seen it already, but you should watch it one more time. This jump through the smoke, killing Alexi B, as he said, he didn't expect it. He couldn't really see it coming. It was an absolutely amazing clutch from Monacy that saved G2 on Anubis and got them going. Play number two, we've got Alexi B also from that last one. And uh, this is just so goofy. This is the worst way to lose. It's the most G2 way to lose either. <laughs> also, you, you get the this, these couple kills, this 1v4, and what is this? He just defuses? He just gets on the bomb? Where, where is the rest of the team? Where is Hooksy? Where's Hunter? Oh wait, they were trying to hunt him in B. They're on their way home. Monacy is now coming <laughs> into the last of the last one. The AWP, the Colat, of course, we love to see Monacy play aggressive Counter-Strike, pushing into radio, getting the collab. Manisi did what he could today in order to make it happen. Unfortunately for him, not enough to stay off the plate. Yeah, some great highlights, but unfortunately the end of the road here for Manisi. But James, I'm curious, with some kind of crazy results today, how is that shaking up our mask MVP? 
Freya, I'm looking very forward to seeing how this has been shaken up because things are sometimes not making sense. At least in the Vitality camp and Phase camp, it seems to be going so well. And look at that, Mezzi is still right on top. Zyru's already had his moment. So who should we look at? Well, it's Torzi in there. We've been talking about Yimfat, but Mr. Torzi right now has been showing a solid form. This guy is genuinely very happy throughout playing all of these games. And my oh my, in the last two series, he had one hell of a fight on his hands and was still able to put up these numbers. Sometimes he comes under a lot of criticism, but I would say for right now and how he's feeling, even with a stand-in, he knows he needs to step up and deliver, and that's exactly what he's doing. But can they take on phase tomorrow? We'll have to wait and see. That is indeed the question, James. We'll be finding out that answer tomorrow. I'm very excited to be diving into the semi-finals of the final tournament of the year, the final chance for a team to be lifting the trophy in 2023. So let's take a look at what's on the cards because we've got some banging games coming up for you tomorrow. Chance for Vitality. I know I have a little bit of a UK bias, particularly as Messi. Oh, oh, is, is he oh, top of the Merck MVP God. race at the moment? <laughs> and maybe can't. a second trophy for I, him, Maui? I the was, UK could never. <laughs> I can't with this. If, if, okay, I'm okay if Messi does well. Well, Freya, I'm okay if Vitality do well, but I can't I can't stand for Mezzi winning MVP because I know we're never going to hear the end of it from you. Yeah, the UK guys have got to be proud when somebody finally shows up. Don't worry, up he won't Mezzi's win. Been doing <laughs> it in don't space. worry about it for a second. Um, okay, I, I need to shut up because I need to tell you guys about Thanks. the uh, vote over on Blast TV for the show match. Of course, you guys have been voting. I'm curious to see what maps you've got left in the I'm pool. I'm going to be mad as Vertigo's dead. Oh, Anubis they listened. Anubis is still they there. Did they did listen. Anubis is still there. And okay. you know what? You have plenty of hours to be voting. We're going to keep this bad boy Quick, up at night. So and I'm going to run and go and do that. Make sure that Anubis is still in the pool. Okay. Um, and we'll see you guys tomorrow, I guess, because we've got some yeah, final semi-finals to get into. We'll see you bright and early for all the action and to see who could potentially getting a step closer to the trophy.